Takashi Natsume was born with the uncommon ability to perceive odd beings known as yukai, hence, he has never fit in. Moving from foster home to foster home, he found himself alone most of the time. With time, he gradually comes to terms with the fact that no one would ever believe him and has cut himself off from his present caregivers and fellow students. Upon unintentionally breaching an intangible barrier, Natsume sets Madara, a powerful spirit embodied in a lucky cat, free. Madara discovers Natsume looks remarkably similar to his late grandmother, the outcast Reiko Natsume, who gained notoriety throughout the yukai community for inventing the Book of Friends. Natsume now possesses it and its ability to summon the written names of the yukai that Reiko had vanquished. Rather than use the book for selfish means, Natsume chooses to preserve the book for the memories of his grandmother, and to shield it from cunning yukai, so he strikes a bargain with Madara. In exchange for Madara serving as Natsume's unofficial bodyguard, aka Nyanko sensei he will give him the book when his time is up. Natsume's bond with humans and yukai gradually gets better as he works toward his new objective of releasing those that Reiko had sealed. In the opening scene, Natsume, who's on his way to school, is attacked by a yukai. Luckily, he spots it and runs away from the yukai before it gets too close to him. Along the line, he bumps into two of his colleagues who were also going to school that instant. They each give Natsume puzzled looks as he pants for air. Natsume, upon seeing them, keeps himself calm so as not to draw suspicion to himself. He then asks them where the nearest shrine is, and they point in a direction. Natsume thanks them and continues running. Before they could say much, a powerful wind blew past them. Natsume, on the other hand, continues running towards the shrine. He looks back and finds the yukai closing the gap quickly. Natsume prays for more time so he can get to the shrine. Apparently, yukais hate getting close to shrines because such a place makes them uncomfortable. If Natsume can get there on time, then he's safe from the yukai chasing after him. Sadly for him, the yukai, who turned out to be the pet of another yukai, catches up to him and pins him to a tree. Upon close inspection, the yukai mistakes him for his dead grandmother, Reiko. Before Natsume can correct him, the pet's owner, who is another yukai, shows up and advises his pet to pull out Natsume's tongue. This is so Natsume doesn't speak out the pet's name and cause it to disappear. The pet inches closer and closer to Natsume's mouth. Natsume, however, kicks the pet in the eye and escapes its clutches. He runs as fast as his legs can carry him to get to the shrine nearby. On his way there, a little insight is given into Natsume's childhood. As a young child who could see spirits, aka Yukai, Natsume has always been frowned upon by all the foster families he stayed with. Life, for him, only got worse as time passed by. As he snaps back to reality, Natsume bumps into a barrier rope seal. Upon breaking it, he accidentally releases the notorious lucky cat, Madara. Madara breaks himself out of his cage and makes a rather dramatic entrance. He commends Natsume for not getting afraid of him. Natsume, who is seriously holding the urge to laugh at the cute cat, keeps mute and waits for the cat to say something. The cat gets tired of his silence and demands he say something. Natsume tells him he's pretty used to the silence, so it's not that big of a deal to him. Moving on, the lucky cat calls Natsume Reiko and gets a little shocked when Natsume tells him Reiko is his grandmother. Madara realizes the striking resemblance and tells Natsume a little about his beautiful grandmother. Since she had the same clairvoyant powers as Natsume, Reiko was always shunned by her family and peers for being too weird. Furthermore, Madara tells him about the Book of Friends, which is a book that had the names of all the Yukai Reiko vanquished while she was alive. Upon hearing this, Natsume stops and wonders if his grandmother was truly lonely during those days. He got so deep in thought and failed to see Madara disappear. Natsume gets up and sneaks back to his foster home, hoping that he doesn't run into any yukais on the way. Thankfully, he gets home safely and finds his guardian, Tuko, doing the laundry. Tuko walks near him and finds his uniform dirty. She also complains about his pale face as she checks every inch of his body. Natsume tells her not to worry too much about him, that he's perfectly fine. Tuko lets him off the hook and returns to continue her laundry. Natsume gets to his room upstairs and drops his bag. He gives his life so far a quick rethink and recalls the wonderful moments he had with his grandma. If only he'd known they were very much alike, then maybe he would finally be able to understand what he's currently going through. Now that he's all alone, Natsumi decides to go through his grandmother's things. Upon rummaging through, he finds the Book of Friends and opens it. Before he can read the contents well, the fortune cat Madara shows up and demands Natsume hand him the book before he does him harm. Madara gets a little rogue and attacks Natsumi to get the book by force. Tuko, who is about to head out for shopping, stops and asks Natsumi if things are okay with him. Natsumi opens his door and assures her that things are fine. Tuko leaves the house in his hands and leaves for her shopping spree. After she's gone, Natsumi goes back to his room and finds Madara shouting for help as his head is pinned to the wall. Later on, he takes him out and serves them both a slice of watermelon. While eating, Madara tries to explain his true form to Natsume. He tells the skeptical Natsume that he's a big fox with multiple tails. Natsume refuses to believe and shifts the topic to talk about the Book of Friends. Madara tells him what the characters in the book translate to. Apparently, when she was alive, Reiko would go around finding yukai hiding in dark spots and challenge them to a fight. If she wins, they have to pen down their names into the magical book of friends. Once a yukai surrenders his name to the book, 
Reiko, or any other person holding the book will have the ability to control such yukai. Natsume realizes that the book is quite powerful and understands why Madara will want the book. He taunts Madara and asks him if his name is also there. Madara, however, tells him his name isn't in the book, but those searching for Reiko already had their names written there. Natsume looks at Madara and then hears someone calling for him. He leaves his room and gets downstairs to see the two yukai pursuing him earlier. Upon seeing him, the two attack Natsume and chase him out of the house. Madara sees what's happening and carefully attaches himself to Natsume's back. Both of them race their yukai pursuers to the bushes nearby and hide in one of them. Luckily, the two yukai pass them by and go the wrong way. With them gone, Madara still tries to get the book for himself. However, when Natsume refuses to give him, he transforms into his real form which is a kitsuno fox with multiple tails. Natsumi couldn't believe his eyes as he realized Madara wasn't lying about his true form. Without wasting any time, Madara pins Natsumi down and threatens to harm him if he doesn't hand over the book. Natsumi knocks Madara out with a single punch and gets back on his feet. He tells Madara that he wishes to free the names of the yokai trapped in the book so they can finally be at peace. Madara senses his resolve from his words and warns him about the evil yokai. Natsume, however, tells him not to worry about that, that as long as the two of them are together, no evil shall escape their sight. Besides, he assures Madara that he can have the Book of Friends once he dies. Seeing this, Madara decides to help him out. In the next scene, Madara and Natsume finally catch up to the yukai pet owner and keep him busy while Natsume deals with the pet itself. To set the yukai free, Natsume would have to open the page having the name of the yukai, rip it out and put it in between his lips. After that, he puts his hand together with force and concentrates before blowing a whiff that'll finally set the name free. Natsume lures the pet to a safe spot and follows Madara's instructions. As the pet's name gets freed from the book, the pet remembers the first time it met Reiko. That day was just like any other day. The pet worshippers just dropped a steamed bun cake at the stone. Just as the pet was about to eat it, Reiko showed up and ate the bun. Then she challenged the pet to a fight and won it in an instant. The pet was so confused that it penned down its name without even knowing the repercussions. After writing its name, the pet asks after the injury on Reiko's cheek. Reiko introduces herself properly and promises to come back to play with the pet once she has time. The pet seemed very interested in knowing Reiko the most, so every day, she'd stay at that same spot and wait for Reiko to one day appear and play with her. Days turned into months, and then into years, but Reiko never returned to play with the pet. Now that her name's finally being returned to her, Hishigaki, which is the pet's name, finally gains its freedom and rests in peace. After she's gone, Natsume falls to his knees, tired of the heavy work he just did. Madara returns to him shortly and tags along with Natsume. On their way back home, they stop over at a shop to get some steamed buns. The following day in school, Natsume's friends approach and ask him to pen his name down on a piece of paper. Before doing that, he asks what the occasion is. Sasad, who's the nerdy girl who has a crush on him, tells him they're trying to organize a courage test for their class. They need a couple of participants before they get permission to conduct the test from their principal. Hearing this, Natsume pens down his name and steals a glance at Sasada, who is blushing at him. After writing his name down, Sasada collects the book and thanks Natsume for helping her cause. Just as he's about to respond, Natsume sees a yukai hiding at the back of his friends and reacts a little to it. He tries his best not to draw suspicion, but then the yukai comes closer and closer to him. Natsume bails and runs outside his school. His friends are puzzled as Natsume is acting weird again. After getting out of the school premises, Natsume stops to take a breather. However, he gets the shock of his life when the yukai shows up behind him and squeezes his head while asking for the book. Apparently, the yukai thought Natsume was Reiko and had been demanding he hand over the Book of Friends. Madara shows up seconds later and forbids the yukai from touching his person. The yukai condemns Madara and attacks him for the insult. Madara changes his form and gets more serious with the yukai. The yukai shrieks in fear and runs back to his hideout. After he's gone, Natsume and Madara get back home. Over the next few few scenes, yukai from different regions come to Natsumi's house to have their names peacefully removed from the book and return it to them so they can be freed. One day, after releasing a yukai's name, Natsumi passes out. Madara returns home from playing out and finds his student sleeping on the floor. He considers teasing him, but then Natsume wakes up and chases him away. That night, Natsumi's guardians try to feed the cat some regular cat food. However, Madara refused to teach such gunk as he wanted some of the good stuff. Toko bends down and gives him some tuna, which he eats voraciously. Natsume ignores his cat and continues drinking his soup. Just then, he looks across the table and finds a miniature yukai standing near a cup. Natsume spits out his soup in surprise and arouses the suspicion of his people. Thankfully, he sells a lie to them and they buy it. After dinner, Natsume, Madara, and the Dew Creator 
aka the miniature yukai from earlier, all meet up upstairs to do the transaction. The spirit asks Natsume to remove his name from the Book of Friends and Natsume gets on with it. This time, however, Natsume runs into some complications and finds out that the page with the Dew Creator's name on it was stuck with another yukai's name. He tries his very best to separate the pages, but then Madara warns him to stop it. It turns out that ripping the pages apart may cause both yukai whose names are written on them to get torn to pieces. With nothing left to do, Natsume advises the Dew Creator to give up. The Dew Creator, however, begs Natsume to do something about it so he can be free again. Natsume, while taking his bath that night, thinks of a way to release both yukai names so they can be free from their afflictions. The very next day, Natsume and Madara both head out towards the Seven Forests to visit the Dew Creator. On their way there, they run into an elderly woman carrying a bag of peaches. As they pass near her, one of her peaches falls and Natsume bends down to pick it up for her. The woman thanks him for being so polite and offers him the bun to eat. Then she gets back up and says a few more random things to Natsume before leaving. As she leaves, Natsume watches her steps and regrets being a poor speaker. Madara cuts his thoughts and tells Natsume that the old lady doesn't have that much time left. Natsume sighs and continues his journey to the Dew Creator's shrine. Eventually, they get there and find the Dew Creator sitting there. Before getting to the main point, the Dew Creator tells them his history. Apparently, he used to be way bigger than he is now. Back in his earlier days, that town used to suffer from a terrible drought. One night, there was a heavy downpour that rejuvenated the land. This single event reignites the people's faith in him. As such, they would come by and worship him after giving their offerings. The Dew Creator explains that the offerings and the faith that the people had in him made him overflow with power. Now that he's been long forgotten, he's grown so small that he's barely noticeable by the people around him. Natsume then presents the peach the old woman gave him on the road to the Dew Creator. The Dew Creator then shows him the peach Hana dropped by his shrine earlier that day and tells Natsumi that she's the only person left who still worships him. If she disappears or dies, then he would vanish into thin air and cease to exist. Hearing this, Natsume bends down and checks out the name of the other yukai. He came up with the solution to the problem he had with the Dew Creator's name. If he can get the other yukai and release both of them from the Book of Friends, then nothing will happen to them and they'd be freed together. The only issue they face now is that they don't know the location of the other friend. Dew Creator mentions that he's familiar with the other person and follows Natsume home to draw a picture of the person. Upon drawing him, Natsume and Madara burst into laughter over how funny the picture was, but the Dew Creator tells them he made no mistake drawing the person. Over the next few days, Natsume, Madara, and Dew Creator searched all around for the Yukai, but they didn't find him. One day, as they return from their search, they find the Dew Creator sitting at his shrine, watching Hana, the old woman, praying to him. Natsume waits for Hana to be done with her prayers before following her back to her house. On their way, the old woman narrates a bizarre experience she had in her younger days. During one of her prayer sessions, she saw Dew Creator's legs and said hi. The Dew Creator spoke a few things to her, but Hana didn't have enough time to talk to him well. Natsumi goes back home thinking about how lonely life must have been for the Dew Creator back. He gets into a nightmare and wakes up only to find Madara drooling over him. Natsume shouts out and punches Madara in the head. The next day, Madara warns him to be very wary of the evil spirits lurking around the place. Natsume argues some facts with him until they're interrupted by the Dew Creator who comes to tell them that he's found the location of the second Yukai. Almost immediately, Natsume Sumi and Madara follow the little man to find his friend. They run through the forest to chase after the Yukai until they come across a monster who chases them through the thick forest. The monster manages to catch up to Natsume and hold him up to his face. Natsume sees into the monster's memories and finds out he used to be a beggar until he met Reiko. Upon meeting with the beggar spirit, Reiko challenged it to a fight and won. Natsume suddenly remembers the spirit's name. At that time, Madara came in hot and saved Natsume from the monster's clutches. While up in the air, Natsume frees Dew Creator and the monster together. Dew Creator then recalls one of his moments with Reiko and loves it. Natsume, after freeing the two of them, falls and faints for a while. When he's back up, he and Madara go for a brief grocery run before heading back home. A few days later, Natsume and Madara both go over to the Dew Creator's shrine to check up on him. They find out that he's gotten smaller than before and ask him why he's like that. The Dew Creator tells them that Hana, his only worshipper, passed away a few days earlier. With nobody to worship him anymore, he's going to vanish. At that point, his body begins to glow and Dew Creator realizes that he has very limited time on Earth. Natsume tries to get the Dew Creator to come back to Earth with them. Sadly, it was already too late. As he fades into nothingness, Dew Creator thanks Natsume one more time and calls Hana, hoping she will hear him. Thankfully, she does and he dies happily ever after. Following the unfortunate event, Natsumi gives the Dew Creator's shrine some steamed buns. Madara steals one of them and Natsumi chases him to get 
it back. A few years ago, Natsume used to sleep at a children's park. A weird woman approached him one evening after finding him scared and hiding under a swing. She knows what he's seen, so she refuses to judge him. Eventually, she ends up apologizing on behalf of the monsters chasing after him and urges him to be strong. Fast forward to the present, Natsume is seen sleeping on his desk during break. Someone approaches one of Natsume's colleagues and asks after him. The colleague rushes over to wake him up. Upon waking Natsumi up, he points at the spot where the person looking for him is and finds out he's gone. The colleague searched the entire class for him but couldn't find him. He apologizes for waking him up and asks Natsumi why he's always sleeping around in class. Maybe he was facing problems at home that he didn't want to talk about. Natsume refused to divulge any information as the bell was already ringing. They all get up and walk to their next class. That night, one yukai wakes Natsumi up to reclaim its name. Natsumi wakes up and tiredly returns the name of the yukai. As he lays back to sleep, Madara arrives completely drunk to say hi to his buddy. Natsumi tried to ignore him, but Madara spat out a frog which ran all through the room. Natsume spent most of the night catching the frog and letting it go. The next day, his guardian left the house for her usual shopping spree and urged her foster child to go have some fun with his friends on his day off. Just as she's about to close the door, two yukai speed up past her and get into the house. After she's gone, the two yukai pay their respects to Natsumi and ask for his help. Madara shows up by that time and complains about the Book of Friends becoming thinner than usual. He fears that the book might be way too thin by the time he inherits it from Natsume. The two yukai assure Madara that they're not there to reclaim their names. Rather, they're there to ask Natsume to help them exterminate a human. When asked what the human's offense is, the yukai tells Natsume that he's invading their private space in the Eight Fields and testing his powers. He's become a pest to them, and they'd like to rid their living space of him. Natsume clearly can't kill humans, so he rejects their request and chases them out of the house. After they're gone, Madara asks why he rejected their offer. Natsume tells him not to talk too much as things will only get complicated if they try to exterminate humans. As he walks back to his room, he wonders whether the humans exterminating these yukai could also see them. The following day, Natsume heads out to get something. Just as he opens his front door, he finds the two yukai from the previous day waiting for him and runs back inside. Over the next few scenes, the two yukai follow Natsume and Madara everywhere. The shop, his school, and even almost the toilet. At one point, Natsume escapes them and finds a weird dude staring and smiling at him. He thinks nothing of it and continues his day. Still, the two yukai continue pestering him until he finally agrees to help them. He follows them to their spot in the eight fields and contemplates talking to the humans instead of just attacking them. Natsume spaces out for a few minutes and fails to realize the ambush he's walked into. In a split second, several other yukai come out of hiding and attack Natsume. As they pounce on him, Natsume begs Madara to come bail him out. However, Madara refuses to do a thing and instead gloats about Natsume's weakness. Eventually, Natsume frees himself from the spirits and deals with Madara himself. Then they all hear something in the distance, almost as if something was coming for them. Before they know it, an unknown person shoots a purifying wave at Natsume and the other spirits. Luckily for them, Madara came just in time to rescue Natsume from the path. He locates the shooter and takes Natsume there. Thankfully, nobody was hurt as they all ran from fright. Once things settle, the two yukai from earlier come out of their hiding place to disturb Natsume. The following day in school, Natsume is seen spacing out as usual as he wonders what to do about the yukai situation at hand. Two of his buddies come over to tease him, but Natsume is too busy focusing on the weird guy that just passed by. He gets a weird vibe from him and asks his buddies for his name. After finding out his name's Tanumi from Class 1, Natsume runs towards Class 1 to find him wishing that Tanumi was like him. As he rushes to the class, he remembers one of the eerie moments he had with the weird woman from several years ago. It was a normal evening at the children's park, and the woman had come to visit Natsume again. This time, Natsume seemed to warm up to her as he began to like her. Things, however, took a turn for the worse when his current neighbor found Natsume all alone and talking to himself. Natsume loses it and chases the woman away after finding out she is just a yukai like the other monsters. After searching around for the guy, Natsume gives up and returns to his class to observe his classes. After class, he gets back to the eight fields only to find the two yukai knocked out from another purifying wave. Natsume becomes very disappointed by the humans bullying the poor guys and wishes they would have some compassion. Just then, one of the big good yukai dudes shows up and asks to reclaim his name. Natsume tells him to calm down as they have more pressing matters to tend to. The big guy introduces himself as Misuzu and asks what the problem is. After hearing the horrible things the humans did to the yukai there, he gets enraged and offers to help Natsume's cause. Natsume gets a little suspicious and asks him for the catch. Misuzu shows him the frog he saved the night Madara was drunk and thanks him for saving his servant from an untimely death. The two loser yukai from before ask Misuzu to help Natsume rid the forest of the humans plaguing them. Without thinking twice, Misuzu jumps high into the air and chases after the humans. Natsume runs after him to stop him from taking out the human. Thankfully, 
He gets to the human before Misuzu can and saves him after ordering him to sleep. Then he faces the human and is surprised to find out he's not Tanuma. Even worse, the human couldn't even see Yukai at all. When asked why he kept shooting purifying waves into the forest, the man, who appears to be a Buddhist, tells Natsumi that he's heard of monsters lurking around this mountainous region and felt the need to come to purify the mountains of them. Natsumi tells him not to do that anymore as some of the monsters may be better than the rumors make them be. At this point, the Buddhist gets a little suspicious and asks Natsume if he can see them. Natsume stays mute and the Buddhist understands. He gets up and introduces himself as Tanuma before leaving the forest. Natsume returns home with Madara and talks about the yukai they met and made friends with. He remembers how harsh he was to the lady who talked back then at the children's park and regrets it. The following day in school, Tanuma talks to Natsumi for the first time, asking whether he can see the shadowy figures he was already used to seeing. Natsumi tells him no initially but then figures out the guy isn't a fraud. He comes clean and lets the guy know that he's not alone in this at all. They both see and feel the weird, otherworldly things. Natsumi becomes friends with Tanuma that day. By nightfall, Misuzu asks to have his name reclaimed. Natsumi wakes up and begs him to come another time as he's too tired. Misuzu obliges and the next day, Natsume wakes up to see the two loser yukai intruding on his life again. This time, however, Natsume smiles and enjoys their company. On his way to school the next day, Natsume finds a kappa yukai sleeping in the terrible summer sun. He pours some water on its head and continues his journey to school. Little did he know that Sasada was looking at him the entire time. When she gets to school, Sasada reminds Natsume about the test of courage and urges him not to miss the test that is coming up that night. Since the building is going to be demolished in a few weeks, Natsume and Sasada have to be there. Natsume tries his best to avoid getting to the test, but then again Sasada says he has no choice. So that night, Natsume joins his friends in front of the dilapidated building, only to find out that Madara followed him there. He scolds Madara a little bit and eventually lets him tag along on the courage test. As the event begins, the students gather to hear the rules. To win the test of courage, they're to go to the end of the hall on the second floor in pairs, and write their names on the wall. Following the explanation, the students begin splitting themselves into pairs to start the test. While at it, Sasada explains the sad story behind the building to Natsume. Apparently, there used to be a deity of fortune who loved humans so much that he'd sometimes appear as a child and play with them. One day, a greedy merchant locked him up to have his powers all to himself. The deity of fortune mourned out to the people to help him, but then again, nobody was there to help him out. He slowly grew to hate and resent humans. Over time, the structure was built to commemorate the bad luck that befell fell the deity of fortune. Natsume stops her there and asks why she's telling him. Sasada says nothing and just continues. A few minutes after selecting the numbers, the students notice that someone is missing. There's a little commotion in the group as some students start blaming the committee for intentionally doing this. Meanwhile, Natsume and Madara get a little suspicious about the missing person and wonder if they're the ones who stole the missing number tag. Madara acts funny and runs off into the darkness as he's unable to detect the person. A few minutes after the test of courage begins, Natsume and his other friend walk upstairs to search for the end of the hall on the second floor. Upon reaching the second floor, both of them find a yukai standing in the middle of the hallway and call up to her. Natsume's friend tries asking for the password, but then the girl turns to them and makes the friend fall down the stairs. After his friend passes out, Natsumi comes face to face with the yukai plaguing them. The yukai, who appears to be a guy in a bathrobe with a pail on his head, condemns Natsumi, who he thinks is Reiko, and asks why he came to defile him the most. Natsumi keeps mute, and the yukai extends his hand towards Natsumi's face. Just as he's about to touch Natsume, Sasada shows up and calls Natsumi's name. The yukai, upon seeing Sasada, immediately disappears, and Natsume gets back on his feet. She asks if he's seen her partner, but Natsume tells her he hasn't seen him. Sasada gets a little curious and asks Natsume who he was calling out to earlier. Out of fear of being taken as a freak, Natsume keeps mute. Sasada begins to ask questions about Natsume's ability, as if hoping for him to say something. She even promises to keep his powers a secret if he can tell her about it. Natsume turns his back on her and contemplates telling her about his powers. Just then, Madara arrives and knocks Sasada out as it turns out that she wasn't a yukai after all. Later on, Natsume places Sasada on the floor and covers her eyes with a towel. Natsume tries to open a particular door in front of them, but he finds it hard to do so. Madara transforms himself into a girl and tries to open the door in front. Just then, Sasada wakes up from her slumber and remembers that she was hit by a dodgeball or something. She checks near Natsume and finds the lady near him. Upon asking him, Natsume tells her Madara is from the dodgeball team. Madara introduces himself and heads out to the corridor. There, he finds some low-level yukai staring at him and sends them back to their corners. In the meantime, Natsume and Sasada continue moving through the corridor to search for her partner. On the way, Sasada narrates the experience that made her know about the building's spirit. That night, Sasada returned to the building to search for the artifact she lost earlier that day. The Deity of Fortune finds her searching the rooms for her lost artifact 
and hurries her to finish her search and get going. Sasada thanks him for the help and continues searching for her stuff. A while later, the yukai returned with her stuff and gave it to her. Sasada thanks the spirit for helping her and asks him why he gave her her artifact on a stick. The yukai tells her he feels he's too impure to touch her. Sasada failed to understand his words and left the building that night. Ever since then, she's been going back every night to see him, but unfortunately, he never came to see her. Natsumi listens to everything she has to say and pauses when she's done. Sasada asks him one more time if he could really see the ghosts, and he tells her no. Upon walking a few more meters, Natsumi and Sasada arrive in a particular room. Suddenly, Madara pulls Natsumi out of the room to a secret place and tells him about the monster protecting the place. He quickly transforms to his true form and advises Natsumi to leave with him while he still can. Natsume asks about what he can do to the others. Madara tells him to forget them and save himself first. However, Natsumi Natsumi tells him it's practically impossible to abandon them. Just then, Sasada comes looking for Natsumi, and Madara changes back to the girl he was before. The underling spirits start gathering around the school, and Madara reminds him of the yukai. Sasada hears this and quickly rushes to the roof to meet her hero in shining robes. She wants to let him know how happy she was when he found and gave her the artifact. She climbs up the stairs but fails to notice the breaking ceiling. Natsume holds her back and keeps her with Madara while he rushes to check out the roof. On getting to the roof, he finds most of the students under a sleeping spell and sees the yukai standing at the edge. He asks the yukai to stop this madness, but then again, the yukai couldn't care less about humans since he was deceived by one of them. He recognizes Natsume as a kind person for not using the Book of Friends against him. Natsume considers releasing his name from the Book of Friends. However, the yukai didn't want that at all. As he inches closer to attack Natsume, Madara shows up and blinds the yukai. This gave Natsume enough time to find the yukai's name, rip it out of the book, and free him. When the yukai notices this, it's already too late. Seconds before he disappears into thin air, he recalls the days when Sasada came looking for him. Apparently, the spirit had always wanted to say hi to her. Sadly, he was too worried about defiling her. Before he disappears, Natsumi lets him know just how much Sasada appreciated what he did for her back then. Sasada arrives just in time to watch her Prince Charming disappear into thin air. The following day, Sasada catches up to Natsumi to talk about the previous night. Natsuma acts like he knows nothing and urges her to do the same. Sasada understands his point and continues moving on to school. Before joining her, Natsume finds the Kappa sleeping in the middle of the road and pours water on its head again. That afternoon, Natsume returns from school to go through Reiko's things again. After munching on some watermelon snacks, Madara teases him for acting like an old woman. Natsume ignores him and keeps checking the luggage until he finds a very old book that Reiko borrowed from the library and forgot to return. He finds a ticket in the book leading to an abandoned train station and takes it to school the next day. While staring at it in class, his two dummy friends come by to ask Natsume's opinion on an argument they were having at the time. Natsume stops what he's doing and listens to what the two of them have to say. In the end, he supports both parties and hopes for them to leave him alone. Both friends eventually go their separate ways and stop talking to each other. Just then, Sasada shows up and picks up the ticket Natsume dropped earlier. She shows it to him and asks him where he'll be going after school. Apparently, she thought Natsume was going out to some secret party after school, so she wanted to tag along. Natsume, however, tells her not to think highly of the ticket as it's probably old and useless. Sasada chuckles and gets back to doing her thing. That afternoon, Natsume sneaks out of school and heads to the bus stop nearby to get to the address on the ticket. Sasada catches up to him and tries to tag along with him. Natsume tries his best to politely chase her away, but Sasada isn't budging. Eventually, the bus comes and Natsume doesn't know what to do. Just then, Tanuma, the guy from earlier, shows up and distracts Sasada long enough for Natsume to enter the bus without her knowing. This works as Sasada falls for the trick and goes back to school, sad. A few minutes later, Natsume arrives at the abandoned train station and finds Madara there. Madara sees him in the admin block and they figure out how deserted the place is. Just as they're about to leave, they find a big beaver yukai sitting on one of the benches. They get a little closer to the beaver who smells and mistakes Natsume for Reiko. Natsume and Madara tried to explain things to him, but the beaver wasn't budging at all. Eventually, after calming him down, Natsume explains the situation to him and the beaver gets sad again. When asked why he misses Reiko so much, the beaver tells them, it's because she promised to go somewhere with him back when she was still alive. Natsume checks the ticket and asks the beaver if Reiko has promised to go to a place named Kiriganuma. The beaver nods in agreement and tells the duo that he's there to go look for his lost friend, Mikuri. The beaver then tries to explain things, but then again, he just can't gather his thoughts. Natsumi decides to help him out by freeing him from the Book of Friends. He asks for the beaver's name, and he calls himself Santo. Hearing this, Natsume opens the book and searches for the name Santo before freeing him. After that, Natsume sees memories Reiko had with Santo back when she was still alive. Apparently, Santo was just as confused as he was, and couldn't understand why Mikuri, his best friend, was so angry at him. Even though she couldn't understand him, 
Reiko still chose to go with him to search for Mikuri. Natsume snaps back to reality and decides to go with Santo to search for Mikuri. Madara makes sure he knows what he's getting into before taking such a bold step. Natsume promises to come by tomorrow but then Santo gets a little sad, so Natsume changes his mind and decides to go with him that evening. Madara still tries to change his mind but then Natsume isn't ready to back down. Eventually, he accompanies Santo on his way to find Mikuri. After walking the train tracks for hours and hours, Santo stops by to eat some berries from the forest. He feels a certain tingling in his belly, but thankfully nothing happens. They continue their journey to find Mikuri and discuss a few things on the way there. As they near the area, some vines spring up from the ground and trap Santo and Natsume. Madara quickly changes his form and saves Santo and Natsume from the raging vines. As he races to safety, Madara tells Natsume that the raging vines are coming from an angry Mikuri. Maybe he didn't like Santo that much. Santo keeps calling for his friend, but nobody comes to his aid. Suddenly, the earth gets hot and starts to disintegrate. Madara maneuvers his way and gets the two passengers to safety. While he rests, Natsume gets off his back and searches for Mikuri through the dead of night. When he hears nothing, he turns to Santo and asks him what Mikuri looks like. Santo tries to illustrate Mikuri's size using some rocks, but then Natsume realizes that he's too dumb for him to remember his friend. Just then, a large catfish surfaces from the river in front of them, and Mikuri swims up to the sky, revealing his tremendous size before diving back into the water. Madara grabs hold of his tentacles, hoping to keep him from diving back into the water. However, Mikuri holds him and Natsumi up, thanks him for coming to him, and asks for the Book of Friends. He shakes Natsumi a little and the bag falls from his pocket. Santo holds the bag and refuses to return the book to his friend. Mikuri gets a little restive and releases Madara while trying to get the book back. Madara quickly rushes into the water to attack Mikuri and return him to normal. When he's done, Mikuri, who's now a little catfish, swims up to shore and finds his real friend, Santo. Santo holds him dear and thanks him for returning to him a normal fish. Later on, Mikuri scolds Santo for giving his name willingly to Reiko back when she was still alive. Natsume tries to stop Mikuri from bullying Santo, but then again, it seems like the both of them are having fun. Natsume and Madara watch as the two friends banter each other cutely. Natsume returns home with Madara and puts the train ticket back to its normal place. Madara joins him and checks through all the remaining letters and books in the box and finds quite a few of them there. The following day in school, Natsume bumps into Sasada who tells him about the two friends that were arguing the previous day. Turns out that after all the fighting and arguing, they got back to being the best of friends. Natsume remembers something and heads out to the corridor to think a little. There he thinks about some of the the rough patches friends have to go through to make their relationship strive. While he's at it, Taunuma shows up to check up on him. A few days later, Natsumi and his guys ride their bikes across a bridge. While at it, they look over to the dam on the right side of the road and are shocked to find out that it's been dried up. This means they can't go fishing this summer. Natsumi keeps quiet like always and finds a mirage waving at him. He asks his friends if they can see the mirage, but they tell him no. Suddenly, the mirage disappears and breezes past Natsume, who gets a little dizzy and faints shortly after. By nightfall, Natsume wakes up and finds Madara close to him. Madara teases him as usual, and then gets close enough to smell his body. Before he could tell what he was sensing, another yukai called for Natsume's name outside. Natsume gets to his window and finds a group of yukai waiting for him with their leader, Tarusaru. Tarusaru gets up to his windowsill and introduces himself to Natsume. Tuko, who appeared to have heard something from Natsume's room, gets up there and opens the door. Thankfully, she couldn't see anything there, so she only asked him to come down for dinner shortly. Hearing this, Natsume asks her to give him a few seconds, and she gets back down to the dining hall. After she's gone, Natsume tells the yukai to wait till after dinner so he can attend to them properly. Once he's done with dinner, Natsume calls the yukai up one by one and starts removing their names from the Book of Friends. Over the next few hours, Natsume returns the names of everybody in Tarusaru's group. To thank him for his help, Tarusaru gives him his magic mirror and asks him to look inside. Upon looking inside, Natsume finds a yukai attached to his back and shrieks out of fear. Almost immediately, Madara kicks the yukai out of Natsumi's body and reveals her to be the spirit of a beautiful young lady. After wrestling the young lady for a little while, she finally succumbs and shows herself. She humbly asks Natsumi to help her see someone before he takes her back to her world. Madara butts in and tells her to stay away from Natsumi. However, the lady insults him and gets into a huge fight with him while Natsume and Tarusaru watch. The next day, the lady follows Natsume everywhere until he finally agrees to help her out. He asks her for the identity and location of the person she is looking for, and the lady tells him about Tanyozaki, the man she's always wanted to meet, who also lives in Futaba Town. Hearing this, Natsume asks her when the village was flooded and she tells him it was submerged about 20 years ago. So, there's no telling where the guy is now. Natsume gets back to school and asks his friends about a man named Tanyozaki who lives in Futaba. Almost none of them know anything 
anything about such a place. Just as he's about to give up, Kitamoto tells him about his dad and the likelihood of him knowing about the man. Natsume spits out his drink and asks him for more details. After school that day, Natsume walks back home with the lady, who kept asking to hold his hands. Natsume allows her to hold his hands and they continue moving and talking about random things. At one point, Natsume compliments her cold hands and wonders how they got so cold. Along the line, the lady predicts a heavy downpour. Natsume asks her how she knew about that, and she reminds him about her past life. Madara shows up a little while later to pick up Natsume and take him back home. Sadly for them, the rain started falling heavily, and all three of them were forced to stay at a shed near the road to avoid getting wet. There, the lady tells Natsumi about her former life. Apparently, she used to be a young bird with her little siblings in her past life when one day, their nest fell to the ground. Some humans passed by their tree and found the nest lying on the ground. They helped the birds up and placed the nest back in the normal spot on the tree. Moments later, their parents came back from their food hunt and started perceiving human scents on their chicks. As such, they abandoned them and left for another nest. Some days after their parents left, the lady's siblings began falling and dying one by one. Eventually, the lady's the only one left as she falls into a ditch and waits for death's sweet call. Eventually, she became a spirit and started living in a small bush. One day, a human came by and served her some food to eat. She eats it voraciously and happily waits for him to come the next day. The same man came by the following day and dropped off some food for her. This continued on and on until the lady grew to like the man. That same man, Tanyozaki, is the person she wants to see before she reclaims her name. The next day in school, Kitamoto shows Natsume Tanyozaki's address. Natsume thanks him, and races to the town where the man is with the lady, so she can see him one final time. Upon getting there, the lady sees the man and tries her best to say hi. Sadly for her, the man couldn't see her. The lady returns home with Natsumi, thanks him very much, and prepares herself to return to her village. Natsumi stops her there and tells her to try meeting the man one more time. Only this time, he would work towards making sure the man knew she was there to see him. The next day in school, Natsume kept wondering what to do about the lady's situation. After school, he gets back to the same spot and waits for the man to pass by. When he does, the lady tries to call call him but then again the man doesn't answer her. That evening, the lady gets a little tired and she goes back to sleep till the next day. The next day comes and still no response from the man. Eventually, Natsume goes to Tarusaru for help. Tarusaru tells him about the Futaba festival, where a group of yukai are made to compete for a summer garment that can make a yukai appear human for just one night. Natsume realizes just how helpful this can be to the lady. He confirms and makes sure the guy is actually telling the truth. That night, Tarusaru holds Natsume and heads to the event venue through the forest. Madara catches them on the way and asks Natsume where he's heading. Upon realizing that he's heading to the Futaba festival as a human, Madara changes his form and challenges Tarusaru for intentionally leading Natsume to get eaten by the yukai at the festival. Tarsaru also changes his form and asks him why he cares so much for a human. Madara tells him about the deal he made with Natsume and urges Natsume to get back to the house with him. However, Natsume tells him to disguise himself as a yukai and sneak him into the festival so he can compete for the yukata. Madara grumbles a little bit and eventually takes Natsume there. After disguising him, the event begins, and Tarusaru leads him to the crowd. Madara joins Tarusaru and watches their guy compete against stronger yukai. When the bell rings, everyone races for the yukata clothing. Madara notices how slow Natsume is and decides to help him. He transforms himself to his other form and takes Natsume to get the yukata first. Natsume wins the event and gets the clothes for himself. He takes the summer garment to the lady, who is later identified as Tsubame, and tells her to wear it so Tanyozaki can see her. Tsubame was surprised and hugged Natsume with tears in her eyes. She thanks Natsume from the bottom of her heart, puts on the dress, and heads back inside town to meet the man. The next day, Natsume wakes up and finds the entire village completely covered in water. Apparently, it rained heavily earlier that day and was able to return to her home village. Natsume and Madara chill out on a tree after school and talk about their relationship. At one point, Tanyozaki passes by and Natsume stops him. Upon seeing him, Tanyozaki takes out some pictures and shows Natsume a photo of himself and Tsubami. Natsume sheds tears on seeing how happy Tsubami looked in the photo, and wishes she could be happy like that forever. Deep in the forest, a little white fox is seen admiring a hat that someone dropped earlier during his visit to the forest. He picks it up and raises it to the sky, only to remember her most precious moments with her dead mother. The little fox gets a little teary, but then he wipes off his tears and urges himself to remain strong so he can live on his own. As for Natsume, he's seen packing his load and leaving the house to go for a study trip. Before leaving, Shigeru, Tuko's husband, stops and asks him to visit the pottery near the hot spring camp to help him get some teacups there. Natsume accepts the task and sets off to the train station. On his way there, Madara pops his head out of his bag to say hi. Later on, they get on the train and begin their journey to the Kariwa Hot Springs Konai High School camp. Upon getting there, Natsumi and his classmates have their first lesson of the day before going on a long break. During break time, Kitamoto and Natsume's other friend ask Natsume to go out with them. 
However, since he had one or two things to do, Natsume had to decline their request. He then heads into the woods to find the pottery and possibly get the teacups. Along the way, he runs into two yukai bullies harassing and beating the poor little fox. Natsumi quickly jumps in to save the fox and ends up knocking out the two yukai. Upon seeing what he could do, the little fox picks up his hat and runs into the shrubs nearby. Natsumi decides to ignore and continue on his search for the pottery. He joins Madara, who was busy chilling on a tree and continues moving towards the pottery. Meanwhile, the little fox was a little scared of Natsume as he hated humans altogether. Over the next few days, he crept and spied on Natsume's life in the hot spring summer high school camp. From what he could see, Natsume was a pretty cool person. After class one day, Natsume joins his friends, Kitamoto and Sasada, to chill out a little. As usual, the little fox spied on him again but couldn't quite figure him out. His smile and laugh all seemed to be fake. Natsume, however, knows what he is doing. Turns out he could spot the little fox each time he came to spy on him. One night, the little fox sits by his mother's grave and wishes Natsume could be like him one of these days, as he thinks he's just a human in disguise. The next morning, the little fox follows Natsume and Madara all over the forest again. This time, Natsume decides to draw him out. He runs a little and camps under a large tree when it begins to rain. The little fox tries to follow them, but soon loses track of them. After a few hours of rain, Natsume and Madara were already soaking wet from the heavy downpour. The little fox finally caught up to them and gave them a large leaf as an umbrella. Natsume, after hearing a loud voice call his name from the forest, finally gets to see the little fox and he collects the leaf umbrella he had for him. Very early the following morning, the little fox goes over to his mother's grave to tell her about the strange new dude he found, aka Natsume. The bullies come by again and begin harassing the little fox, calling him useless at every chance they get. The little fox tries to fight back, but then they get a little too pissed and slam him on the ground. One of the bullies raises their hands to smash the little fox to pieces, but then Natsume comes in at the right time to save him from imminent harm. Just then, the loud voice from the previous night calls on Natsume and he rushes to the location of the voice. Both the bullies and the little fox follow him to the tree yukai. There they watch him release the name from the Book of Friends and the bullies run away in fear of having their name taken. After he's done releasing the tree yukai's name, the little fox comes out of his hiding place and urges Natsume to write his name on the Book of Friends. This way he can be bound to Natsume Natsume forever and will be obliged to work for him. Natsume smiles, bends down, and tells the little fox that he doesn't roll that way. He only sees him as a friend and nothing less than that. A few days later, Natsume's high school summer camp trip ends and he's back to his foster family's place. He presents them with the teacup he brought over from the pottery place and is gifted one of them by Shigeru. The next day, the little fox checks out the hat he's always kept dear to him and wishes he could see Natsume right now and give it to him. He gets a little teary again, but then quickly wipes it off for fear of being treated like a child. He then encourages himself to be strong to make sure he can protect his dear friend, Natsume. Now, one of the creatures hiding nearby shows himself and makes him a deal. He will help the little fox see her Natsume if he can fill his mouth with fish. The little fox quickly heads to the river nearby and catches baskets full of fish. The yukai creature eats to his fill, and gives the little fox a medicine that can make the little fox human for a day. This way he can sneak into the human settlement and finally see his Natsume again. The little fox happily collects the medicine and uses it instantly. Just then, he transforms into a human and puts on his hat before heading off into the village. He says goodbye to his mother's grave and gets a train ticket to travel to Natsume's town. Upon getting off the train, the little fox gets a little lost as he searches for Natsume's house. After walking for hours and hours, he decides to smell him out. At one point, he smells something like Natsume and traces him to a river where he is fishing with his friends. Later that evening, he follows him home and finds him enjoying dinner with his family. After seeing how happy Natsume is, the little fox leaves without saying hi. Natsume, on the other hand, catches a glimpse of the little fox and follows him outside. He helps him up after he falls and the little fox throws herself in his arms arms, crying like a baby. Natsume holds his hand and escorts him back to his forest. A few days after helping the little fox with his problem, Natsume goes to the lake near his town with Madara and finds a man sitting there as if he were waiting for someone. He engages the man in a conversation about fireflies and finds a yukai hiding behind the man as he talks. Natsume excuses himself and continues to the other parts of the forest. On his way, he begins to wonder if the man has been possessed by the yukai spirit or not. Just then, the yukai lady who has a mask on her face sneaks up on him and attacks him. Natsume bails and runs towards the edge of a cliff and falls. Luckily, the yukai arrive just in time to rescue him. Natsume thanks her and invites her to spend the night over at his place so they can talk. Over a can of beer, Natsume asks the lady yukai if she truly possesses the man she was hiding behind. The lady tells him she wasn't even planning on doing such a thing. Apparently, that man used to be able to see her when he was much younger. Now that he's older, though, he can't see her anymore. She's been lonely for a long time without him being around, so... She just decided to see him one more time before he got married. She then likens the relationship she had with the man to that of Natsume and his pet, Madara. Natsume makes her understand 
that he's in a commensalistic relationship with Madara, and nothing more. He then asks for her name, and the lady asks him to try guessing it. Natsume does a pretty wild and random guess until the woman tells him to stop. She still refuses to tell him her name. However, she asks him to keep her company until the ceremony that will be taking place the next day. That night, Natsume wakes up and finds the woman's body giving out a dull, green, bioluminescent light. He goes back to sleep and the lady tries to wake him up, but he is already long gone. The next day, Natsume wakes up a little late and gets ready to get to school. Before leaving his room, he gives the lady the name Kyo and makes sure she's fine with it. Natsume gets a little worried about the man not being able to see Yukai now that he's older. He fears that he may face the same fate and he's not ready to find out how he'd feel with such a thing. On his way to school, Madara narrates the legend of the fireflies to Natsume. At one point, they stop by and find the man staring at the river. Suddenly, Yukai surfaces in the river and swims towards the man sitting near the bank. Natsume quickly runs towards the man and pushes him out of the Yukai's way. The man smiles and thanks Natsume for helping him out. Natsume lets him know it's his pleasure. Then he asks the man if he can see anything out of the ordinary in the pond. The man lets him know he can't, so Natsume continues his journey to school. During the second half of his journey, Natsume runs into Kyo, who sits him down, and explains a few more things about the man. Apparently his name is Akifumi, and he used to have huge family issues back when he was younger, so he would often come to the river and cry his heart out. Sometimes, Kyo would stay behind the bushes and watch poor Akifumi cry over his family issues. One night, while Kyo tries to hide from Akifumi's sight, something sticks to her body and makes her glow in the dark. Akifumi calls her out and she shows herself to him. Upon recognizing that she's a yukai, he turns his back and continues moving. Kyo rushes over to him and asks him to please entertain her as a human. Akifumi returns home that night and shows up the following day to discuss with Kyo. Both of them grew pretty close over a few years up until poor Akifumi lost the ability to see her. Kyo would sometimes shout out his name hoping he would hear her. Sadly, she was already invisible to him. After narrating her story, Kyo turns to Natsumi and wonders if he will later lose his ability to see them one day. Natsumi returns home worried and thinking hard about losing his ability. Eventually, if it comes down to it, Natsumi makes his peace and reminds himself to make as many memories as he can with the yukai he knows. This way, he can hold on to them forever. The following day, Natsume goes over to the pond and finds Kyo sitting near Akifumi by the pond. He musters up the courage to go and ask Akifumi about his ability and how he lost it. Upon hearing his question, and Akifumi tells him everything about Kyo, including his love for her and the mysterious loss of his ability to see her. Ever since then, he's been lonely. But now that he's found a lady who he loves just like Kyo, he can finally let go and move on with his life. After his wedding ceremony in three days, he won't come over to the pond anymore. Just then, his fiancé calls his name, and he goes back home with her. After he's gone, Kyo shows up from behind and thanks her stars that her lover has found someone new and better than her. She holds Natsume's hands and allows him to see the wonderful memories she had with Akifumi including the day he lost his power to see her. Despite her being in front of him, poor Akifumi couldn't see her. Day after day after day, Akifumi would come over to the pond, sad and ridden with suicidal thoughts as he now thinks Kyo hated him. What Kyo only had for him was love and nothing less. Natsumi wakes up and finds himself pinned down to his bed with Kyo lying on him. Kyo tells him about her deformity. She was just about to turn into a bug and she came to say her goodbyes to Natsumi. Once her form is changed into that of a bug, Kyo flies to the pond. Madara warns Natsumi about the big yukai they found in the pond earlier that eats fireflies. Madara and Natsumi immediately rush towards the pond to stop the monster from eating Kyo. They arrive just in time to stop the monster from eating the firefly. Thankfully, Kyo was able to escape the mouth of the monster. She finds her man with his fiancé and lands on his finger. Akifumi immediately recognizes her and calls to her. Sadly for him, she joined the other fireflies in the air to get to the pond. After catering for Kyo and her lover, Natsume gets to the bridge above the pond and wonders whether he did good by letting Kyo go. Just then, Kyo, who's already a firefly, flies past him and wishes him good luck in bug language. Two days later, Akifumi gets married and starts his new life. Natsumi attends the wedding and heads back home with his cat, Madara. On his way back, he holds Madara and encourages him to make many wonderful memories with him, so that when his powers finally leave him, he can have something to remember him by. A few days later, Natsumi takes his cat out on a walk. Madara gets a little worried and asks him why he's been made to go on a forced walk. Natsumi tells him that he needs to do more exercise now that he's gotten fat. Along the way, Madara finds a grasshopper and chases after it. Natsume loses track of Madara and walks into the grass to find him. He stubs his toe on a stone and almost falls to the ground. Thankfully, a random stranger finds him in time and stops him from killing himself. Just then, the random stranger is called back on set, and Natsumi finds out that he's stumbled upon a movie scene. The person who saved him earlier is none other than the hot cake actor, 
Natori Shuichi. He gets a little surprised and wonders why an actor like Natori would have a live wall gecko walking all over his body. Natori catches him staring and waves back at him. Natsumi ignores him and gets back on the road with Madara. Later that evening, Natsumi finds a yukai with a rope bound to its head walking past him. He checks the bandages on her arms and finds out that they are coming off. He offered to help the lady, but then again, she didn't want anything to do with Natsume at all. Eventually, Natsume ignores her and gets back to his house in one piece. Later that night, Natsume wakes up after having a nightmare about the yukai. He wakes up and searches his room for Madara, only to find a note from the cat saying it's gone drinking. Natsume opens his door and checks around the corridor. There, he finds a weird paper talisman that chases after him. Natsume jumps out of his room window and runs into the woods nearby. The paper talisman eventually caught up to him and wrapped itself around him. Natsume struggles a little and manages manages to break himself out of the talisman's hold, only to fall and find Natori standing there with him. He asks Natsume about the talisman that attacked him earlier and lets him know that he planned it all along. When asked why, Natori tells Natsume that he wanted to test his strength to find out if he could really see the yukai spirits. So far, he's impressed. Natsume gets a little curious and asks him to cut the BS and tell him who he really is. Natori removes his cap and summons his servant, Yukai. He then continues commending Natsume's amazing intellect, letting him know just how impressed he is with his performance. The following day, Natsume preps himself for school. Just as he's about to leave, Tuko hands him his lunch and wishes him a good day in school. Upon getting to school, Natsume spends most of the day thinking about Natori's words from the previous night. He gets so confused that Tanuma, the other weirdo, notices him and asks him what's up. At one point, Natori comes by the school to visit Natsume. Natsume gets downstairs and follows Natori to a nearby cafe to talk. There, Natsume asks Natori what he wants with him. Natori tells him he's hoping to get someone to assist him in his side job as an exorcist. Natsume gets up to leave as he's not interested in such an offer. Natori calls him back and Natsume sees the tattoo again. He finds it moving again and asks Natori about it. Natori only smiles and tells Natsume that the tattoo gecko is a birthmark of Yukai that's been with him ever since he was born. He spews a few more words that make Natsume a little curious to know more about him. Eventually, Natsume gets pissed and tells him to shut the hell up. Just then, Natori's servant Yukai appears in the ceiling and restrains Natsume. Madara shows up after Natsume causes a mess and chases the servant Yukai away. As the waitress comes to clean the mess, Natsume picks up his cat and rushes out of the cafe. Later on, Natori catches on to him and makes fun of Natsume's cat. Natsume stops him from doing so, and Natori pets the cat. Madara gets pissed and causes a feud between Natori and Natsume. Eventually, both sides settle, and Natsume follows Natori to his house. There, Natori sits him down and introduces his other servant, Yukai, to Natsume, before explaining the next job to Natsume. Apparently, a family had called him to exercise an evil Yukai, who stayed in the cellar of their house. The yukai has been known for bringing bad luck to anyone who enters the cellar to buy the house. Before considering Notori's service, the owners of the house had called a pawner to value the house. The pawner entered the cellar and has since been getting into accidents, incidents, and even nightmares. Eventually, they called Notori to come help them exercise the demons living in their cellar. Notori begins to badmouth the yukai, but then Natsume stops him from doing so. He finds the gecko yukai on Natori's hand and smiles widely. Natori notices the smile on his face and commends him for being such a nice kid. At the end of their meeting, Natori escorts Natsume outside and hands him the address of the house with the evil seller. Before Natsume could say too much, he hears a weird voice from the bushes behind him and tries to ignore it. Unfortunately for him, the voice materialized into a yukai that came for his guts. Natori senses the yukai coming and stabs it in the eye with a wooden stake. He prepares himself to take another jab at the monster, but Natsume stops him from doing so. Natori tells him to understand that he has to protect himself first before any spirits. However, Natsume could do without harming the yukai. Natsume thanks him for saving him and refuses to be his assistant. On his way back home, he and Madara find a familiar rope and pick it up thinking it was a barrier or something. Just then, the masked lady from earlier speaks up and urges Natsume to stop drawing her rope. Eventually, Natsume curls up to her and fixes her bandage. While at it, the lady tells him her origin story. Turns out she was tied to the cellar of a particular house by a wicked human who wanted to protect his riches. As such, She's bound to curse anybody who comes to acquire those riches for themselves. If she fails to protect the riches, the rope around her head will constrict and cut it off. Natsume sees her nails and realizes that she may have tried to get away one time, but then gave up when she found out it was pointless. One day, however, a young boy just like Natsume came by and helped her tie her bandages back in place. She never got a chance to say thank you, but when she did, she was disappointed to hear that the boy had become an exorcist. Natsume immediately realizes who she is talking about. Nevertheless, the lady wishes to be a servant to the boy. Natsume finds his resolve that evening and decides to help the lady out. The next day, he gets to the address written on the paper Natori gave him and finds Natori preparing himself to do the exorcism. He tries to stop him, but the roped lady is already falling into the trap. 
However, the servant Yukai restrained him. The roped lady unknowingly walks into the magic circle Natori drew and activates the spell. Natsume frees himself just in time and rushes into the magic circle. Madara also joins him a little while later and the three of them get absorbed into the spell. As the lady gets consumed by the magic spell, Natsume rips out her name from the Book of Friends and frees her. He then peeks into her memories and finds one of the beautiful moments the lady had with little Shuichi Natori. In that memory, she petted her head and was happy enough to meet someone like him in her lifetime. After getting back to reality, Natori Natori thanks Natsume for saving the yukai. Natsume smiles and accepts his thanks. Later on, Natori heads to the train station and bids Natsume farewell. Before leaving, however, Natori asks Natsume to make sure to call him if he ever runs into trouble. Now that he's freed the roped girl, she can now follow and serve Natori. Natsume and Madara watch the roped girl follow Natori out to the train tracks. The following day, Natsume goes out to chill with his two buddies on a bridge by the lake. While sipping up some juice from his juice box, he spots an umbrella falling from the sky. Natsumi tries telling buddies about the falling umbrella, but then again, they can't see it. This makes him believe the umbrella must belong to a yukai. The umbrella falls to the ground and Natsume finds the yukai hiding inside it. His friends leave shortly afterwards, giving Natsume enough privacy to be himself. As soon as they're gone, Natsume calls out the name of the yukai and lets him know that he can see him. The yukai gets out of his umbrella and tries to possess Natsume's body. Natsume fights the yukai and knocks him out with a punch. Madara arrives at that moment with a fish in his mouth and teases Natsume for getting such bad luck. The yukai gets up and gets ready for round two. However, a beautiful female voice came out of the gourd he kept below his waistline and warned the umbrella guy, Akagani, not to harass Natsume anymore, even if it was for her sake. Akagani tries to understand Asagi's orders, but can't hear her voice anymore as she's fallen asleep. Madara recognizes the name and asks Akagani if she is the person who plays the Kodo in the Isozuki forest, a forest where nobles gather to share their ideas. Akagani confirms his suspicions and tells him indeed, his Asagi is the one. However, she's fallen ill and is unable to play the Kodo anymore. As such, he's taken her soul and placed it in the gourd on his waistline, but then again, he needs her to possess Natsumi's body so she can play the Kodo again. Natsumi is clearly not ready to offer his body to some random yukai he knows nothing about. Akagane begs to differ and he tries to force Natsumi into surrendering his body for possession. Madara jumps in to defend his master and ends up biting Akagane on the head. That night, Natsume thinks about his ordeal with Akagane earlier that day and wonders how absurd his life would be if he were possessed by such a yukai. Little did he know that Akagane had been waiting for him to fall asleep so he could plant Asagi inside his body. Natsume wakes up the following morning with blue hair and blue eyes. Upon finding this out, he shakes his head and his hair gets back to normal. On his way to school, his friend Kitamoto greets him like a dude. However, Natsume acts feminine and rubs him off the wrong way. That day in school, Natsume also acts a little weird to Tanuma. At this point, Natsume was already suspicious. He got to class that day thinking hard about what was happening to him. In the middle of class, Akagane shows up and tells Natsume that he'd already implanted Asagi's soul in his body while he was asleep. After class, Natsume takes a chill pill by the bridge on the riverside. Suddenly, Asagi speaks to him in his head and apologizes on Akagane's behalf. Natsume accepts her apology and discusses things with Madara on his way home. Along the line, Akagane shows up and hurries Natsume to get going, so things can get back to normal. Natsume tells him not to get too comfy with this, as he still has control over 75% of his body. Just then, Asagi takes over Natsume's body and begins to laugh with Natsume. Madara stops them from getting too comfortable and brings Natsume back to his real body. Eventually, he agrees to help Akagane as long as they leave his body once they're done. To start their mission, Akagane takes Natsume to the river to harvest a special yukai with a white string in its body. This string would make up the material they'd use to make the strings for the kodo. Akagane takes Natsume to the river and encourages him to rummage through the river to find the yukai. They search the river for hours only to end up finding nothing. Natsume eventually gets tired and gets out of the river. While he lies on the grass to catch a breath, Asagi tells him some things about Akagane. Apparently he used to be a bodyguard and an umbrella holder to the people in the Isozuki forest back then. Even so, he was very skilled with the sword and would strike anybody who came close to harming his people. Asagi felt so safe around him that she thought she would stay and play the koto with him forever. Then, one night, the impossible happened and her koto strings were cut. With that, she felt useless and left the forest to search for a new life. Before they get to continue their discussion, Akagane finds the yukai they were looking for and proceeds to find the best wood for making the body. He tells Natsume they have to go back to the forest and find a tree stump with a bamboo shoot growing out of it. Natsume sighs and hops on Akagane's back who carries him to his house. Natsume gets home very cold and wet that night, and gets petted by Tuko. After taking his bath, Natsume goes to sleep. In the middle of the night, he gets into a nightmare and finds his body disintegrating 
into sand-like grains. He quickly wakes up and finds Akagane sitting next to him. Akagane then explains the horrible disease plaguing Asagi's body and begs him to keep her in his body until the next full moon, which is tomorrow. By that time, a path to the Isozuki forest will be opened and Asagi and Natsume will be able to get to the forest and play for their creator, Mibusama. Natsume asks him why he would go so far for a fellow yukai. Akagane smiles and confesses his love for her. The next day, Akagane and Natsume continue the search for the tree stump. Natsume passes by a weird monster yukai who gives him the location of the tree stump in exchange for letting him eat his gut. Without knowing it, Natsume and Akagane find the location of the tree stump, and they get to complete the making of the koto. A few hours later, while Akagane makes the koto, Natsume asks Asagi if she truly wishes to play the koto. Asagi tells him she's more than willing to do so as it will bring a smile to her face. Natsumi falls asleep and is woken up by nightfall after Akagane finishes making the koto. He takes Natsumi and races him to the top pathway. However, the monster from earlier chased after them and pushed the koto out of their hands. Natsume jumps after the koto and falls into a ditch. Thankfully, Akagane was able to save him and the koto in time before they became minced meat. Akagane wakes him up a little while later and urges him to follow him to the forest so she can play with him. Asagi, however, calms him down and decides to play for him instead. Over the next few minutes, Asagi takes over Natsume's body and plays the most beautiful melody ever. Once she's done, she leaves Natsume's body and returns to her gourd to sleep for a longer time. As dawn dawns, Akagane thanks Natsume for helping him out and goes his own way. Natsume joins up with Madara and hugs him on the way back to the house. On getting home, he tried playing the koto again, but just couldn't figure out the best ways to play the sound. The following day, Madara hides in the bushes and spectates some birds playing in front of him. He suddenly jumps out of his hiding place and falls into a ditch. As he adjusts himself, Madara hears a little girl screaming at him. She admires his fur and his cute look as a cat, but then Madara wasn't really up for being cuddled by some human child. The child continues petting him until he eventually succumbs to her touch. A few seconds after getting into her arms, Madara gets up and tries to climb his back out of the ditch, only to have the girl begging him not to go. She holds his fur and tells him he reeks of alcohol. At that instant, Natsume arrives from his school and finds Tuko searching for the shrimp in the fridge. Natsume gets annoyed and walks upstairs to go find his cat. There he finds Madara playing with his CD and and asks him about the shrimp in the freezer. Madara tries to defend himself from Natuzme and the others living in the house. However, he only ends up getting Natsume even more pissed. In the end, Natsume kicks Madara out of the house and lets him go. Before he could change his mind, however, Madara rushed out of the window and ran into the forest. On his way, Madara eavesdrops on some yukai complaining about his nasty habits of eating all the food, and he joins them to complain about himself. When they're done talking, Madara gets so pissed that he summons lightning to fry them up till they're crisp. Madara leaves the yukai crying on the floor and walks towards the monk who manipulates the purifying wave. Upon getting there, he advises the monk, Tanima, to destroy the eight fields and all the yukai there. The monk tries to speak with the weird girl, but then she disappears into thin air. In the next scene, both of Natsumi's friends finish playing at an arcade, and they get outside to get some air. There, they run into an angry Madara in the form of a girl and ask her out. When asked who she is, she tells them she is Natsume's sensei and asks them to follow her somewhere. Madara takes both boys to a restaurant and makes them pay for all the massive food she ate there. When she's done eating, she orders them to take her to the arcade to play some games. In the meantime, Natsume goes to the movie shop to get a new CD to replace the one Madara destroyed. While at the arcade, Madara makes sure to have fun all day. One of Natsume's friends begs her to let them go home, but then again, she isn't done yet. In the next scene, Natsumi and his guardians notice that the big fat cat is missing. They ask if Natsumi knows where the cat is, but then again, Natsumi tells them he doesn't know. On his way to school, Natsumi finds a cat doll that resembles Madara. He picks it up from the trash and is disappointed to find out it's just a stuffed doll. Sasada, who was just around the corner, caught Natsume going through the dumpster, but then she thought nothing of it. Upon getting to school, Natsume returns the CD he borrowed from Nishimura and hears his two friends complain about his friend, the lady who spent all their money without even thanking them. Natsume tells them he doesn't know or have any female friends. But when the guy mentioned that the girl called herself his sensei, he became a bit curious and asked, for more information. After school, Natsume heads into a cafe to get some games. As he steps out of the cafe, he finds Sasada waiting for him. Sasada walks up and speaks to him. Before she gets deep into the conversation, a little girl from her neighborhood calls her, and Sasada bends down to say hi. She greets the little girl and finds out that she's finally going to have a picnic with her parents. Sasada pets the little girl's head and gets back to continue her chat with Natsume. Sadly for her, he's already long gone. Natsume arrives back home and is shocked to find out that his guardians already bought another pet cat to replace Madara. 
Madara. In the meantime, Madara is seen chilling on a tree and missing Natsume. Just then, a yukai shows up to make a deal with him. Upon realizing that Madara had cut ties with the kid with the Book of Friends, the yukai asks Madara to join him in hijacking the Book of Friends from Natsume's hands. When Madara refuses to join him on his charade, the monkey condemns him and prepares to head out for his hunt. Madara quickly changes his form and crushes the yukai to protect his human. After he's done taking care of the monkey, he heads back home injured to see his Natsume again. Madara, however, gets the shock of his life when he finds Natsume chilling and being happy with the new cat. Madara bows his head in shame and leaves the house for the new cat. He decides not to care about Natsume anymore and returns to the eight field to drink his arse out. Madara goes through a midlife crisis as he misses his dear friend now more than ever. The next day, Madara wakes up with a terrible hangover and tries to drink some water from the spring. Since his arms and legs were short, he couldn't drink the water. He gets a little hungry and hunts some birds only to fail woefully. Eventually, Madara gets lucky and falls into a ditch to find the girl he found earlier there. The little girl gives him some chocolate to cheer him up. Natsumi, on the other hand, gets back home and finds his own cat tearing up some newspapers. Rain begins falling a few moments later, and the little girl clutches the kitty, crying profusely over the amount of trouble she's in. Eventually, she falls asleep, and Madara gets to understand a thing or two about humans. After the rain, Natsume starts searching all around town for Madara, who was busy flying the little girl to her parents' house. He keeps her at the police station and watches from a distance to make sure she is catered for. Just then, he hears his sensei calling for him and runs towards his dear friend, Natsume. On his way to school the next day, Natsumi and his three friends chat and talk about the wonderful autumn forest. They all plan an outing at the Futaba Dam and decide on which food to bring on the outing. Natsumi, on the other hand, is pretty confused about what to bring to the outing. However, he does let them know that he will try his best to convince Tuko to make some sandwiches for them. At one point in their journey, Natsume splits up from his friends and takes a separate path home through the forest. After walking a few meters deep into the forest, he finds a frog trapped in a spider web. Then he turns his face and finds a yukai eating another yukai. The yukai predator finds Natsume staring at him and attacks him with its tentacles. Natsume frees himself from the tentacles and makes a run for it. Eventually, he gets home in one piece and sneaks off into his room after greeting Tuko. On getting to his room, Natsume finds a weird red mark on his left arm. Madara says hi and tells him about the delicious dinner they're having that night. Madara checks Natsume and finds the curse mark on his arm. He instinctively touches the mark and gets electrocuted for a short while. After the effects of the electric shock, Madara shrinks in size and tells Natsume that he's been cursed by another yukai. Following that, Madara munches on some food in front of Natsume and tells him about the curse mark alongside the ritual they'd need to break the curse. But before that, they would need to call someone else to be Natsume's bodyguard since he's now very small. To to do this, however, Natsume is to draw some weird markings on the floor in a part of the forest, then take the mirror and the Book of Friends and sprinkle some blood on it. Natsume follows all the instructions laid out and ends up summoning Misuzu. Thankfully, the summoning works and Misuzu appears before Natsume. Before saying much, he scolds Madara for being so careless with his job of protecting Natsume. Natsume cuts him short and shows him the curse mark on his left arm. Misuzu unfortunately tells him there's nothing he can do from his end, as he's not that familiar with curses. However, there's someone he could call to help Natsume out. On hearing this, Natsume thanks him for the help, and urges him to get the person around quickly. He also mentions that Natsume should refrain from showing Yukai his weakness, as there's no telling that they could use it against him. Madara jumps and argues a little with him before he disappears. Shortly afterwards, another yukai appears from nowhere and calls Reiko's name. She fondles Natsume's body and feels his chest. When she finds out he has no breasts, she gets a little flustered and asks Natsume what he did with Reiko. Madara tells her about Natsume's origins, and the lady laughs at Madara for looking like a stuffed cat doll. The lady, Hinoi, then asks what happened to Reiko. Sadly, Natsume tells her Reiko has already passed away. The lady starts crying and Natsume offers her a napkin to clean her nose. When she's done with that, Hino sits and whips up a smoke to discuss things with Natsume. Upon seeing the curse mark, Hino explains that the curse mark is the five-day curse mark invoked by a yukai that's cursed to be immobile. For about five days, Natsume's life force will slowly be eaten until he can't move anymore. By that time, the yukai will have enough strength to attack and eat Natsume. If he's successful, then Natsume dies, and the yukai's curse is broken. However, if he fails to get Natsumi's body in the required time, then Natsumi's curse will be gone. Following her explanation, Hinoi advises Natsume to get back home and avoid the yukai for the time being. On his way home, Natsumi sees a dark silhouette figure standing under a streetlight. He ignores the yukai and heads home before it gets too late. On getting home, Tuko finds the bandages on his arms and tries to treat them. However, Natsumi urges her not to do so and he rushes to go to sleep. The next day, Natsumi finds out that the curse mark has already gotten bigger. He ignores the mark and continues on his way to school. On his way, he finds the same silhouette from the previous night and likens it to a horror story, 
Mary. Natsume gets a little worried about what to do as the silhouette keeps standing and stalking him. Suddenly, Hino appears again and tells him about the evil spirit she talked about yesterday. Apparently, the evil spirit just needs to eat one more cursed person before it's finally freed from its curse. Despite how slow the shadow is, it still manages to find Natsumi's house. She advises him to be very careful about his movements so that the shadow doesn't get to him and eat him. Just then, Madara's powers go out of control, and instead of transforming to his normal Kitsuna form, he transforms himself into a big cat. As he makes a fuss, Tuko opens the entrance to investigate the source of the noise. Natsume and his people hide out of sight and chill out. That night, Natsume climbs down from his window and runs into the forest to sleep off and wait out the curse's effect. Over the next few days, Natsume spends his time running and avoiding the merry shadow. One day after school, Natsume phones Tuko to inform her that he won't be coming home that night as he has a sleepover at a friend's place. After making the call at the phone booth, Natsume starts feeling a little dizzy. Hino appears to him again and Madara shrinks back to his minuscule size again. Hino feels pity for both master and student and decides to teach Natsume how to summon a light spirit to help with his curse. Natsume thanks Hino and goes back to sleep. That night, Natsume rests at the foot of a tree for a little while. Hino prepares the instruments they'd need for the curse to be activated. After she's gone fishing, Natsume wakes up and finds the merry shadow hovering above his head and itching closer to eating him. On seeing him, Natsume runs as fast as he can and searches all around the place for the scroll he needs to summon the light creature. Madara tries his best to protect Natsume, but then the monster is too intangible for him to do much or any damage. Just then, Hino arrives from her fishing trip and hands over the scroll to Natsume. Almost immediately, Natsume grabs the scroll and recites the incantation to summon the light creature. Sadly for him, the creature was just a little bird, so the merry shadow underestimates it. When it comes down to it, the little bird uses its light energy to dispel the dark shadow and save Natsume. The following morning, Natsume wakes up to see Hinoe and Madara staring at him. Misuzu appears to them and reveals the truth to Natsume. Apparently, he was the one who planned it all along, and he wanted to test Natsume's worthiness to carry the Book of Friends. After passing the test, Misuzu entrusts his name to Natsume. Hino also does the same thing and then disappears into thin air. Now that the curse mark is gone, Natsume returns home and receives the worst scolding of his life from an overly worried Tuko. The following day, Natsume gets lost in the forest looking for his pet cat, Madara. At one point, he falls and stumbles upon another town. In the meantime, Madara slips and falls down a hill only to crash into Tanima on the way. Tanima almost breaks his finger, but thankfully he doesn't. After getting back on his feet, he checks the weird fat cat sleeping on the road in front of him and puts it back to normal. Madara woke up and spoke to Tanuma, which startled him. Surprised, Tanuma got closer to Madara and petted his head. He has a nice conversation with Madara and asks him who he is to Natsume. Madara tells Tanuma that he's Natsume's teacher. However, Tanuma gets a little confused as Madara looks more like a follower than Natsume. This annoys the cat and he changes his form to attack Tanuma. Natsume, however, arrived at the right time to discipline his cat. Later on, while Madara fishes, Natsume explains his relationship with Madara a bit more. He calls Madara his bodyguard and friend. By that time, Madara catches a fish and shows it to Natsume. After eating his catch, he advises Natsume and Tanuma to visit the nearby town so they can watch the townsfolk prepare for the festival that's to take place that night. Natsume grumbles a little, but eventually follows Madara to the location. On getting there, Sasada spots him and comes nearer to him. She asks if he could see the hordes of yukai present there with them to witness the festival. Natsume checks around and finds many yukai creatures checking out various things to be used at the festival. Just then, Sasada's mother asks her to come do something, and she quickly gets back to her mother's stall, hoping the boys aren't going to bail out on her. The moment she gets back to the stall, the boys run into the woods nearby. At that moment, a truck arrived with some of the building materials, and the little fox jumped out of the back. He quickly transforms into his real self and rushes into the festival grounds. There, he runs into her two yukai bullies and gets bullied again. This time, they spilled a pot of soup that belonged to a human and made it seem like the little fox who appeared like a normal fox to the human, did it. As the human harasses the little fox, Natori comes by and saves him from harassment. In the meantime, Natsume and Tanuma chill out in Tuko's house. At one point in the discussion, Tanuma checks the ceiling and finds a pond's reflection there. He calls Natsume's attention to it, and they both get up to check the yard in front of them. Natsume finds a pond in the yard, but Tanuma can't see it, so he begins to wonder if water can be in the form of yukai as well. Along the line, he remembers Madara and returns to the festival location to pick him up. Meanwhile, Sasada finds Madara lost 
and sleeping on the chair before her. She rushes back to her mother's stall to get some rope to tie Madara up. Elsewhere, the little fox is seen thanking Natori for saving him from the terrifying humans and the bullies. Eventually, the little fox runs off to find Natsumi, and Natori orders Hiragi to follow the little fox. After he's gone, Natori heads to a weird house to attend some secret meeting. Madara wakes up shortly and finds himself tied up to a chair. Tuko gets a little worried about Natsume as he's been missing for some hours now. She paces the house and wonders if he'll be safe in the festival all on his own. Her husband, Shigeru, calms her down and urges her not to worry too much about Natsume's condition. He's a big boy now, and they should try leaving him to do his own thing. At that instant, the little girl who fell into the ditch with Madara and her parents arrived at the festival. She finds a small pouch on the ground and takes it to Sasada for safekeeping. Sasada collects the pouch and keeps it near her stove. Just as the little girl is about to leave, she finds Madara at a corner struggling to free himself from his ropes. She loses him and drags him away from the mountain. Sasada comes in disappointed to find out that the cat is gone. By the time the festival begins, Natsumi and his friends sneak into Sasada's tent to find out that Madara's gone. By that time, the little fox realizes that his pouch is missing. When asked why the pouch is so important, the little fox tells Hiragi it contains medicine to make him human for a day. He then gets a little worried and asks Hiragi to help him find it. Hiragi gets off the truck and heads off into the festival with the little fox to search for his pouch. Natsume, on the other hand, continues searching the festival for his fat cat. He spots his two friends trying to get some teriyaki and asks if they found the cat. Sadly, they didn't know where the cat was. So Natsume leaves them and continues his search. Along the line, Hino shows up at the party, steals the friend's teriyaki, and forces them to pay for it. Little Fox and Hiragi already located the pouch that contained his medicine in Sasada's tent, and Little Fox headed down into the tent to get the pouch. Sasada finds him, and since he appears as an annoying little fox, she pursues him out of the tent. Natsume arrives just in time to get the fox and take him back to the wild. Sasada tries to follow him, but then Tanuma distracts her and buys Natsume time to escape. Natsume takes the fox behind a large tree and scolds him a little for being reckless with himself. Just then, Hiragi shows up and hands over the little fox's pouch. Natsumi recognizes Hiragi and asks her if Natori is there with her. Hiragi tells him he's here and scolds Natsumi for relating too much with Yukai in front of the people. Natsumi reassures her that he's fine and waits for the fox to use her human medicine. After she changes herself into a human, she follows Natsumi to the festival and has the best time of her life there. Madara, on the other hand, arrives a little late and falls into the hands of Sasada yet again. On their way home, Tanuma asks Natsumi if Tuko knows about his abilities. Natsumi tells him they don't, and he doesn't bother telling them, because they may not believe him. The fireworks start shortly, and everyone has a wonderful time staring at the brightly colored fireworks in the night sky. Tanuma gets an idea and invites Natsumi to come walk with him to a better spot so they can see the fireworks pretty well. Madara catches up to them and scolds Natsumi for leaving him with such a cat-hating monster like Sasada. Hino and the other yukai spectate the fireworks from a distance as they enjoy that night in peace. A few days later, Natsumi is seen sitting on a fence and reading some content from a storybook while his friends play ball. He gets lost in thought as he thinks thinks about his life up to that point. Just then, someone kicks the ball towards Natsumi, and it gets lost in the other compound beyond the fence. Natsumi also loses his balance and falls into the other compound as well. His friends apologize for the trouble and ask him to bring the ball back to them. Natsumi finds the ball in a small bush and picks it up. Right beside the ball, he finds a yukai that chases after him. Natsumi runs as fast as he can and accidentally breaks a barrier holding a creature inside a seal. The yukai eventually ends up wrestling him to the ground as Madara shows up to do nothing. Natsumi punches the yukai and Madara and then scolds him for taking his bodyguard job way less seriously. Madara acts sassy, and gets into a small argument with Natsume. In the end, both of them go their separate ways and Natsume heads home. By nightfall, he's called downstairs to have dinner with his foster parents, Shigeru and Tuko. Upon getting downstairs, Natsume digs in and eats his food voraciously. He sees the wonderful atmosphere around the family and decides not to raise too much suspicion about his secret life. After eating, Natsume heads back upstairs and finds a black cat, similar to Madara, standing at his window. At first, he mistakes the cat for Madara just trying to be funny. He even gets a good laugh from the but then the cat ignores him and walks around his room with his dirty feet. Natsume knocks the cat out and bathes it before cleaning himself up. Shortly afterwards, Madara gets back home from drinking and shocks Natsume, who now knows the other cat is a different one. Madara also expresses his shock as he gets closer to the cat for a closer inspection. While they wonder what the cat could be after, Madara asks Natsume to check on the Book of Friends. Natsume takes the book out of his bag, and the cat yanks it out of it before running into the woods. Natsume and Madara follow him through the forest until they get tired and rest up a bit. Madara warns Natsume to go back back home as it is dangerous for him to be out there at that time. Natsumi begs him to let him search a little more but then again, 
they hear voices a few meters away. Upon close inspection, Natsume and Madara find out the voices they heard were coming from the Willow the Wisps, which is a bunch of yukais traveling through the forest at night. Madara knows how dangerous such yukai are, so he urges Natsumi to go hide himself to avoid getting caught. As the Willow the Wisps pass by, one of them smells Natsumi's human scent from a distance. Madara catches on to this quickly and transforms himself to his bigger form just so he can cover Natsume well. Natsume complains about his weight, but then again, Madara urges him to be more quiet. Natsume goes quiet and hears the yukai talking about their master who was once smelling like a human. Minutes later, the crowd is gone and another yukai, Benio, another one of Madara's friends, flies down to inspect the human and the spirit perching nearby. Upon finding out about Natsume's identity, she shouts a bit and gets silent by Madara. After settling down, she tells Madara and Natsume that the yukai there are currently gathering around for a party nearby. They ask her if she found out about a black cat trespassing in that area. Benio chuckles and tells him she may have seen something like that. Despite the danger involved, Natsume opts to disguise himself like a yukai just so he can find the black cat and get his book back. Benio goes with his plan and escorts towards the party. They discuss a little bit about Reiko on their way there and Natsume flashes back to the first time he saw the Book of Friends. Apparently he thought it was just a scribble book initially, but now that he's wiser, he knows just how important the book is to the greater lot. They get there before the party and disguise themselves before entering the party. Upon setting eyes on Natsume, the first few yukai mistake him for a human. But then again, Natsume's disguise and his sweet mouth manage to convince them otherwise. Moving on, the yukai drink with Natsume and talk about their weird master who loved humans so much that he fell into their trap and was sealed. They wished they could get their master back, but then again, he's quite dumb. Natsume sits patiently and listens to all they have to say about their master. Just then, their second-in-command calls their attention and plans a search and rescue attack on the human settlement to find their master and bring him back to them. Hearing this, Natsume gets very worried and asks if there's a way to stop them. Benio tries telling him to quit trying to stop this many yukai. Natsume, on the other hand, talks smack about some of the yukai there and accidentally finds the black cat amongst them. He chases after the cat and finally catches him. He calls Madara and Benio to come to interrogate the cat, and then the search begins. Benio runs a spiritual mind reading on the cat and finds out it's actually their master. She curses the humans for doing such a vile thing while Natsume thinks of his next move, to stop the yukai from attacking. After much contemplation, they all decide they have to return his name to him so he can be free again, now that they have the Book of Friends. The only issue now is that the Book of Friend doesn't have his name, so Natsumi would have to find it on his own. Before he could do more digging, however, the second-in-command catches them in the shrubs and brings them to face the entire crowd. Natsume gets up and asks for their lord's name so he can free him. However, his disguise comes off and the entire yukai rush to attack and eat him. Natsume listens to the crowd and finally hears someone call their master's name. After hearing the name, Madara transforms into his kitsune form and buys Natsume enough time to release the name of their master. The entire yukai horde stops in their tracks as their master is returned to them by a human. After getting back to his normal angelic form, Ryo the master Master, holds Natsume dear and shares his memory again. He thanks Natsume for his help and tells him he purposely brought him there to stop the attack on the human settlement. After saying a lot, Ryu disappears, leaving Natsume and his friends awed by his demeanor. The following day, Natsume spends most of his time thinking about Ryo and the other yukai. Benio gets up on her feet and heads back to the forest after saying her goodbyes. Natsume takes a long look at the forest from his window and reflects on how weird goodbyes are. The next day in school, Natsume drifts on into dreamland as he takes a nap while in a class. In his dream, he finds his younger self being called a liar just after seeing a yukai and reporting it to his friends. His teacher catches up to him and wakes him up so he can get back to class. Natsume apologizes as his classmates laugh at him. After school that day, Natsume heads home with his two friends. On their way, they both talk about how sleepy Natsume has been lately. Maybe he's not getting enough sleep? They ask about it and he tells them what they want to hear. Soon after, they reach their intersection and Natsume heads off towards his own home. He finds Madara playing with an angry chained dog as he gets to his street and laughs at Madara as he makes a fool out of the dog. After having fun, Natsume continues his journey through a part of the forest with Madara to get to his house. Along the line, Natsume and Madara stop to play with the snow on the ground. Natsume throws some snowballs at Madara who also does the same. This random act of playful violence continues until Madara cracks his hip and runs into the forest to heal it. Natsume sits by a statue to wait for him to return and creates a snow bunny with leaves for ears. He takes a look at his invention and smiles at it. Just then, a dark cloud covers the area above his head, and Natsume looks up to find a yukai waiting to possess him. As the yukai charges at his body, Natsume dodges its attack and puts the snow bunny in the way. The yukai accidentally possesses the bunny, and gets a little annoyed when it finds out it failed to possess Natsumi's body. Nonetheless, the yukai introduces himself as Jen, 
and explains to Natsumi that he has a problem. Natsumi takes him home and listens to his problem. Firstly, he emits a mild aura that causes Natsumi to feel at peace for once. Moving on, Natsumi asks Jen to explain a few more details about his problem. Jen bows his head in regret and begins his story. He tells Natsumi about his partner Sui, who used to live with him in a statue just outside their town. Sui was a very kind woman, and together, the both of them would watch and protect the forest they were put in charge of. However, everything changed when the villagers smashed her statue into bits. Now he's all alone and misses Sui. Hearing this, Natsumi pets him and goes to sleep for the night. The next day, Natsumi wakes up after sharing Jen's dream. He finds Jen crying in his sleep and wakes him up to speak some soothing words to him. Shortly afterwards, Natsumi is called downstairs for breakfast. In school, Natsumi and his teacher talk about the cursed evil forest that's said to be miles away from their town. After school, Natsumi returns home and finds Jen as a full human with bunny ears cleaning the yard. Natsumi is surprised and asks Jen how he got to change himself to a human. Jen tells him that he has the ability to get used to his current shape and make himself into something similar. Madara shows up moments later and runs his mouth as usual. Natsumi gives him some food and gets into a cute argument that makes Jen laugh and call them friends. This comment makes both Natsumi and Madara a little embarrassed and they react weirdly to it. In the end, Jen transforms back to his snow bunny state and tags along with Natsume as they go search for the evil forest to search for Sui. On their way there, Jen talks about one of the fun moments with Sui and wonders why humans are so selfish when it comes to praying to their creators. When they get to the evil forest, Madara finds a trail of dead fishes and reports it to Natsume, who follows the trail alongside General together. The three of them rush towards a rundown house and break into the house to check it out. Inside, they find the house completely turned upside down. Not only that, the air inside the house is completely unsafe for breathing. As they try to figure out what happened, the evil spirit living in the house shows itself. Jen recognizes the spirit as Sui and goes forward to hold it. Sui breaks out of Jen's hands and flies back into the forest. After their experience with evil Sui, Natsume, Jen, and Madara return home to talk about Sui. After getting home, Jen sits Natsume down and narrates the horrible turn of events that led Sui to become an evil spirit. As expected of humans, the villagers started blaming Sui and Jen for their drought during the dry season. Their anger and rage led them to destroy Sui's statue. Annoyed at their pettiness and lack of understanding, Sui got bitter and hated humans for their selfishness. She became an evil spirit and attacked the village till she was sealed in a statue to be left untouched for thousands of years. After hearing his story, Natsume goes downstairs to find out his foster parent, Tuko, had already made snow bunnies and kept them in the fridge. That night, Natsume made Jen sleep close to the smaller snow rabbit, but in the morning, it melted into water. That day, Natsume went on and about to ask various yukai if they knew where Sui was hiding herself. Sadly, no one knew where she was. That night, while sleeping, Jen goes rogue and attacks Natsume. Natsume wakes up just in time to knock Jen out and protect himself. Madara shows up from his drinking date and finds Natsume sitting close to Jen who seems to be losing control of himself. Out of desperation, Jen begs Natsume to write his name in the Book of Friends so he'll be under Natsume's command. Natsume wasn't a slave master, so he tells Jen to believe in himself and trust him to find Sui in due time. Jen, after hearing such sweet words, thanks Natsume for the help and cries out loud. The next day, two yukai came to report a strange forest sighting and requested he pay them with cookies. After giving them their cookies, Natsume rushes to the forest and finds the evil Sui hiding in one of the branches of the tree. Sui tries to escape after seeing them, but then Natsume holds on to it, despite its hotness, and begins to see into Sui's memories. He saw her and Jen having a wonderful moment together and stopped at nothing to make sure they were together again. Madara warns Natsume to get rid of the evil spirit as it is burning him. When Natsume wouldn't listen, he changed to his fox mode and lunged at Sui. Luckily for her, Jen caught up to her before Madara could. He holds Sui in his hands and reverts the dark magic that seems to have taken over her to a better one before disappearing into the spirit world with her. With Jen's problem out of the way, Natsume returns to his town with Madara thinking about how wonderful humans can be if they try to be good. On his way back home, it rains heavily, so Natsume runs under one of the tree canopies for cover from the water. As the rain subsides, he gets back on the road and finds a bunch of tiny, miniature yukai escorting their lord in a palanquin to their destination. They come across a small puddle of water and are a little shocked at the large size of the water in front of them. Natsume smiles and places a small log of wood on the puddle so they can cross it. The miniature yukai are thankful for his help, and they continue their journey to go find their master's body. Natsume peeks into the palanquin and finds a skull-faced spirit lurking behind the curtains. After they're gone, he returns to his home and finds a bunch of talismans at the entrance of his house. Madara shows up to say hi and tease Natsume. Natsume takes his eyes off the talisman and gets wrapped by the talisman before he's dragged all the way to the user. After scraping his back against the ground, the talisman finally took Natsume to Natori. Upon finding Natsume, Natori introduces himself again 
and invites Natsume to go out with him. Natsume reluctantly follows Natori to a cafe nearby to get some tea. There, Natori asks Natsume if he'll be free during the holidays. Despite Natsume telling him no, Natori invites him on an all-expense-paid vacation at the countryside hot spring. Natsume asks if he has another friend to go with, but then Natori says Natsume is the only person he can be free with. Before he gets a chance to say yes, Natori heads over to Tuko to tell her about the vacation he's having with Natsume. Tuko, after hearing about the vacation, gives Natori permission to take her beautiful son on a vacation. At this point, Natsume has no choice but to go on vacation. In the next scene, Natori and Natsume travel to the countryside to observe their vacation. Moments after alighting the bus, the duo walk to the inn and checked in right after getting there. Natori excuses himself to do something and Natsume is taken upstairs to see his room. On getting there, Natsume lays flat on the ground and takes in the fresh air from the countryside. While at it, he hears a rustle in the closet and goes to check it out. Before opening the door, Natori shows up and calls him to get to the bath downstairs. Madara jumps at the offer and plunges himself into the hot spring. Natori gets annoyed at the weird fat cat for taking taking first dibs on the hot springs and gets into a little argument with it. Later on, Natsume and Natori both enter the pool to chill out and soak out all the gunk on their skin. At one point during the bath, Natsume sees the newt on Natori's back and wonders if the man himself feels weird with that thing on his body. Then again, he decides it's not his business so he submerges his entire body into the spring and leaves only his head out. As he looks up at the ceiling of the building, Hiragi, Natori's yukai servant, shows up and startles him. Natsume and the others get out of the hot spring shortly after and clean themselves. After getting into their robes, he covers Hiragi's head to hide her from the immense cold. Natori tells him not to worry about things like that, as Yukai rarely catches cold. On their way back to their rooms, Natsume catches a glimpse of a lifeless body hanging on the ceiling of a dark room facing the corridor. He tries calling Natori's attention to it, but then, the body disappears and he continues moving. Natori notices his change of countenance and asks him what's up. Natsume tells him not to worry too much, so Natori excuses himself again to check out the inn again after telling Natsumi to head back to the room. After getting back to the room, Natsumi gets worried about hiding the Book of Friends from Natori. Madara tells him not to overthink things and just be glad that Natori hasn't made any weird moves for the book yet. Natsumi thinks about his words and sees some sense in them. Just then, he hears another rustle in the same closet and gets to check it this time around. There he finds a clay pot sitting in the corner of the room. Madara tries to spook him by telling him the pot probably houses the head of a dead human. Natsumi gets a little scared and covers the pot. Seconds later, Natori walks into the room and Natsumi tells him about the weird sounds and sightings he's been seeing lately. Natori pets his head and tells him not to worry too much about Yukai as they're on vacation. Natsume agrees with him and they get to enjoy the rest of their evening in peace. Natsume goes to sleep and is woken up by Madara and Natori at midnight after having a nightmare about his awful past as a youngster. As he gets up from his bed, Natsume finds tears in his eyes and gets very embarrassed, as he is just crying in his sleep. Madara and Natori ask him what the matter was, but Natsume only apologizes and tells them not to worry too much about him. Some minutes before dawn, Natsume wakes up and hears the same rustling sound in the closet. After close inspection, they find the pot open. Natsumi immediately rushes downstairs to look for the spirit. On his way down, however, Madara stops to tell him to be careful when dealing with the spirit, as it must be pretty strong for it to break itself out of such a powerful seal. Natsume thanks him for the heads up, and gets back to the weird room from earlier. There, he finds the body coming to life as the spirit falls with its head attached. Upon hearing that the person in front of her is Natsume, the lady attacks him and begs him to release her name back to her. Natsume calms down and listens to her story. Apparently, humans merely got tired of the yukai living in their land for too long, so they cut her head off and seal her in a pot to prevent her from coming back alive and taunting them further. After hearing her story, Natsume warns her to leave the inn once he returns her name to her. Otherwise, he will be forced to use the Book of Friends' power on her. The spirit, whose name is Sumi, promises to leave once her name is returned to her. Completely unaware of the trap she set, Natsume does the ritual and frees the spirit. Natori walks in, just as Natsume does the ritual, and sees the extent of Natsume's powers. After getting her powers returned to her, Sumi goes rogue and attacks Natsume. Madara and Natori step in to defend Natsume and take him to a special room Natori had set up earlier that day. Natsumi enters the room and finds weird markings on the walls and floor. Natori apologizes for lying to Natsume and reveals the true reason why he brought Natsume on vacation. Apparently he was there on a mission to exercise the yukai haunting the inn, so he thought it'd be a good idea to bring Natsume along. He apologizes for lying to Natsume, but Natsume understands and tells him 
there are things he couldn't tell him as well. Somewhere around the building, Sumi waltzes into the room and gets trapped by Natori's talisman. She wiggles herself out of the paper and jumps towards Natsumi, who is standing in the circle's middle. Just as she's about to reach him, the lord of the miniature Yukai Natsume builds a bridge that appears large this time and banishes Sumi to his land. After solving the Sumi problem, Natori and Natsume check out of the inn and prepare to return to town. While Natori takes care of the paperwork, Natsume reflects on his experience there and wishes he could tell Natori more about himself someday. When he's done, he joins Natori and boards a bus back to the town. A few days later, while chilling in his room, Natsume checks the bird's nest on the tree in his yard and finds out that only four of the five eggs initially present have hatched. Madara asks him when they're going to dig in and cook the eggs, but then Natsume would rather not eat such an egg. Madara begs to differ, and he tries to convince his student just how delicious it will be to eat such an egg. Natsume ignores and notices someone standing at the front of his house. He gets downstairs to check the person out, but he's already long gone. Before leaving, however, he finds a weird writing there, and Madara gives him ideas on who may have written the markings, calling them Ayakashi. Natsume stares at the sky and watches the birds abandon the last unhatched egg. That night, Natsume climbs up the tree in his yard and retrieves the egg from the nest. Tuko catches him climbing the tree and asks what he is doing there. Natsume lies about his mission on the tree as he picks the egg up and takes it back to his room. The next day, Madara woke up to find the egg in his bed. He shouts and insults Natsume for thinking the egg will still be alive. Natsume, however, tells him to keep the egg so that when it eventually hatches, they can eat the chick. Madara buys into Natsume trick and then agrees to keep the egg safe and warm. Natsumi dresses up for school and heads outside. At the front of his house, he finds the weird markings there again, and ignores it this time as he is late to school. After school, Natsume returns home to find Madara wrestling the egg. Natsume collects the egg from Madara and continues taking care of it before it breaks. Later that night, Natsume switches off his light and goes to sleep. By midnight, a yukai appears in front of Natsume's house, as if to check on something and disappears almost immediately. The following morning, Natsume wakes up and finds another writing at the front of his house. This time, he reads the writing as coming and connects the dots. He realizes that the person writing these letters at the front of his house must have been counting down to something. The only problem is, what are they counting down to? Before he finds an answer to the question, the weird man from the previous night appears to talk to him. He asks Natsume if he could really see those words, and Natsume tells him yes. Then he introduces himself as the servant of an unknown master, and tells Natsume that he's here for the contents of the last egg. Natsume asks him why he's after such an egg, and the man tells him his master wishes to eat the chick inside it. He then moves on to ask Natsume if he's seen the egg recently, as it turns out to be missing. Natsume lies, and tells him he's not seen the egg, and the man disappears instantly, leaving Natsume confused. After getting back to his senses, Natsume runs to his room and finds the egg lying alone with a note beside it. He reads the poorly written note and squeezes it in anger. Then he picked the egg and placed it on his ear to listen to the sound it was making. Seconds later, Madara comes home drunk as usual and goes to sleep. The next day, Natsume heads out of his house to get to school. He finds the same writings at the front and ignores them again. Life goes on normally for him for the next two days, but on the third day, which is the egg's hatch day, Natsume leaves school as early as he can so he can see the egg hatch in real life. That night, Natsume and Madara sit patiently and watch the egg hatch into a very tiny creature that takes the form of a human. Upon hatching, the egg emits a white light and the tiny human pops its head out of it. The chick starts sneezing and Natsume quickly sews some clothes for it. After clothing it, Madara plays with the hatchling which he later identifies as a Tatsumi, aka an Ayakashi's chick. These chicks aren't really ubiquitous, but they appear to take the shape of the creature they see upon hatching. When they grow big enough, they'd return to their true forms and leave. Natsume asks Madara what the Tatsumi eats, and Madara tells him they eat human flesh. Natsume gets pissed at Madara and gets into a fight with him. The following day in school, Natsume gets a little worried about taking in such a creature on a whim. After school that day, Natsume returns home and tries out some of Tuko's fish crackers. Impressed by how delicious they were, Natsume decided to take some to his room to feed the Tatsumi. Upon getting to his room, he finds his entire room thrashed and sees the Tatsumi trying to get his attention to something. Natsume checks around and finds the paper nest the Tatsumi made earlier. Natsume realizes it's only trying to create a home with its father, Tatsumi, but then he is too big to fit in the nest. The next day, Natsumi and Madara take Tatsumi out to the forest to play. As it plays around, Madara and Natsumi discuss their plans for the Tatsumi. Natsumi gives the Tatsumi a name, Tama, and continues playing with it. Life went by easy for all of them until Tama started getting weak. The weird man kept coming every night for the egg but didn't suspect a thing. One night, while Natsumi is on his way to get some food downstairs, he runs into a mouse that transforms into a man. The man, after transforming, accuses Natsumi of lying to him and breaks into his house to steal the Tatsumi away from him. He finds Madara in his fat cat 
cat form and pins him to the wall with his talisman. While he's at it, Natsumi takes the Tatsumi and passes through the window to get outside and escape with the Tatsumi. After creating a considerable distance between them, he places the Tatsumi down to rest. In a split second, the man appears from behind and orders Tatsumi to give him the Tatsumi. Natsumi steps back and falls as the Tatsumi gets even sicker than before. Natsumi pets the Tatsumi and annoys the man until he decides to take the Tatsumi by force. Seconds away from harming Natsume, Tama grows into its original size and bites the Yukai man. Madara changes into his Kitsune form and confronts Tama head on. With the tension growing larger by the minute, Natsume places his hand on Tama's head and brings him back to normal. Tama drops the Yukai man and gives Madara and Natsume a beautiful aerial view of the town at night as he flies them back home. After leaving, the Yukai man transforms back to his mouse form and gets back to the woods. After getting Natsume and Madara to their homes, the Tatsumi, who's now a full-grown Ayakashi, flies back to its natural habitat. Life gets back to normal for Natsume as he joins his family to eat dinner the next day before leaving for school. During lunch break that afternoon, Natsume heads out to the bridge with his two friends to enjoy some cold drinks and talk about random things like snowboarding and riding on trains. While his two friends argue about baseless facts, Natsume gets lost in thought. His friends call him back to reality, and he struggles to figure out what they are talking about. His friends ask him why he's been absent-minded lately, and Natsume tells them he's been studying all night and has been avoiding sleep. His friends show their concern for him and tell him to try to get some rest. Natsume thanks them and looks towards the middle of the bridge. There, he finds a weird little boy staring back at him and his friends. He gets a little suspicious and asks his friends if they could see the boy across from them. When they tell him they can't, Natsume presumes the boy must be a yukai as he runs the other way. Later on, Natsume returns home to find Madar trying to gulp down two big glizzies in one sitting. He sits down and complains a little bit about his body temperature. Madara tells him to calm down and rest himself. But then again, Natsume tells him the medicine he took should be kicking in soon. Madara checks outside the window and sees the little kid from earlier. Natsume joins him and finds the kid tripping and falling all over himself. Eventually, Natsume invites the kid to sit with him. The kid remains silent for a little while and then starts acting acting weird again after touching a hot cup of tea. Natsume calls him to order and asks if he can understand human words. Madara gets close to him and startles the kid well enough to make him speak. The kid speaks up for the first time and apologizes for the way he acted earlier. Moving on, he asks Natsume if he can remember his face, but Natsume gives him a confused look. Then he remembers that the child must think he's Reiko. Natsume shocks the kid by telling him his real identity. The kid struggles to get accustomed to the fact that he's not Reiko. After pulling himself together, Natsume takes out the book and opens it to find his name. To his surprise, he doesn't find the kid's name there and begins to wonder what the problem could be. Just then, the kid calls their attention and tells them his name isn't in the Book of Friends. When asked where the name is, the kid takes Natsume and Madara out to show them where his name is. Apparently, Reiko had tied the kid's name to a branch 50 years ago and promised him to come back after 50 years to take it. Natsume gets a little confused and asks the kid why he never searched for the name. The kid told them that Reiko had warned him never to touch the book as he may cause the destruction of the earth and all that's in it. At this point, Natsume and Madara are convinced Reiko is just messing with the poor boy. Madara gets tired and advises the boy to give up. Without giving it a second thought, the boy gives up and starts walking back to their place. Natsume stops him and advises him to keep trying his luck and see whether he will find the piece of paper soon. Just then, Tanuma shows up from behind and finds Natsume talking to one of the yukai. Although he couldn't see the kid, he still joined Natsume to search for the missing piece of paper. The duo search around for a little while with binoculars till they get tired and decide to rest up a little. Soon enough, Sasada and Natsume's two other friends join the search only to come up with no clues whatsoever. When it gets late, Natsume gets up and takes one last look at the forest, hoping he'll find a clue. Kirinoha, the kid, gets a little surprised and asks Natsume why humans are working together as he'd always known them to be cold towards one another. Before Natsume could answer his question, Hino comes into the picture carrying Madara on her back. She says the usual hellos and his and pats the little kid on his head. Natsume discusses a few things with her and continues moving. Shortly afterwards, he faints and is rushed back home to be taken care of. Tuko thanks Natsume's friends for taking such good care of him and sends them off politely for the night. In the meantime, Hinoi, Madara, and Kirinoha all gather around Natsume to care for him. Kirinoha apologizes for taking Natsume on a wild goose chase only to end up with nothing. Hinoi stops him there and tells him to appreciate the efforts Natsume is making towards his success rather than just apologize. On hearing this, Kirinoha decides to go with her advice. Hinoi moves on to narrate the first time she met Reiko. It was a normal day and Reiko had gotten lost in the forest, so she asked Hinoi for some directions. Hino leads her to a river and asks her weird questions on the way there and Reiko provides answers like normal. Just when Hinoi thinks she's cornered Reiko, Reiko reveals her true self and asks if Hinoi is an evil yukai. Hinoi gets a little flustered and decides it's now or never. She also reveals her true self but then gets attacked by a bunch of crows and loses her hairpin. As the crows fly away with her 
their hairpin, Reiko hits one of them with a stick, and the bird drops the hairpin into the river. Reiko dives into the water and retrieves the hairpin for Hinoi. After telling her story, Natsume wakes up and thanks everybody for taking care of him. After he's awake, Madara gets curious and asks the little boy why he thinks Reiko would lie to him like that. Kirinoha told her that he's always wanted to see the sea, but since he was created in the forest, he's never seen it before. Madara and Hinoi ask him to describe the type of sea Reiko described to him back when she was still alive, and Kirinoha describes a god-awful sea filled with dinosaurs and UFOs. Madara and Hinoi quickly break it to him that the sea is totally different from what Reiko told him. The boy bows his head in shame and becomes a little sad for being lied to. Natsume feels for him and decides to take him to the sea when he's well. The very next day, right after Tuko goes out for her morning grocery run, two yukai sneak into Natsume's house to report their findings to him. Apparently, they just found the tree somewhere and thought they'd do well to inform Natsume. Natsume gets dressed and heads out to the same tree. There, he and the others encourage little Kirinoha to climb the tree. Although climbing the tree was hard, Kirinoha climbs it successfully and finds his name on one of the branches. He looks further into the distance and finally sees the sea. Hinoi and the others finally understand why Reiko wanted the little guy to return to the tree 50 years later. She knew the tree would be much taller by then, and the guy would be able to see the sea without leaving the forest. After sightseeing in the forest, Natsume takes the kid back to the house and finally releases his name. Before he could change back to sicko mode, Tuko returns from her grocery run. Natsumi and the others quickly pretend to be sleeping in his sick bed. Tuko walks inside and finds her foster son sleeping peacefully on the floor with his dirty socks on. A few days later, after Natsumi's speedy recovery, Natsume returns to school. During lunch break, Natsume's friends drag him across the hallway to discuss a weird girl they saw earlier. Sasada catches the boys discussing sneakily and then tries to join their discussion. However, the boys left her for the weird girl's class. When they get there, Nishimura drags Natsume and his other friend along to check up on the girl who was just sitting quietly in her seat. A few minutes later, the girl gets up and walks out of the room. Nishimura stops her in her tracks and tries to hold a conversation with her. The girl looks up and sees Natsume with them. She gets scared and runs away. Natsume thinks Natsume nothing of it and returns home just in time before it gets dark. Tuko, after welcoming him home, tells him about the missing family cat, aka Madara. Natsume gets back outside to search for his sensei. He calls out his name and gets a response which calms him down. Natsume lies down to chill out on the grassy plains and begins to hear voices way different from Madara's voice. Just then, two miniature yukai accidentally bump into and run back for dear life after seeing him. Natsumi, on the other hand, retraces their paths and finds a path of bare ground with weird markings on it. Before he can make any sense of the markings, Madara shows up with some birds tied to a rope in his mouth. Natsume ignores him and continues looking at the markings. He hears rustling nearby and looks around only to find the weird girl from the other class drawing the same markings on another patch of land. Natsumi calls the girl and she gets flustered yet again. This time, she removes her hat, calls Natsumi's name and promises to win a particular game before running away. After she's gone, Natsumi begins to look and wonder what the girl meant by winning the game. Eventually, he thinks nothing of it and returns home. That night, Natsumi feels a little feverish and goes up to his window to check out who is there. Surprisingly, he finds a big and scary monster there with him. Upon seeing Natsume, the monster laughs and promises to end him in a few days. Natsume jolts back up to life and realizes he's been dreaming all this while. To avoid getting late for school, Natsume gets up quickly and brushes his teeth. While at it, he spots a character on the chest of his reflection in the bathroom mirror. Just as he's about to say a thing or two about it, Tuko finds him checking himself out and giggles. Natsume finishes his brushing as quickly as possible and heads back to his room. There he finds a megamind-shaped yukai with an odd mustache. Natsume gets startled and calls for Madara to come check the yukai out. Madara shows up and is shocked to see such an odd-shaped yukai there to see him. The yukai introduced himself and told Natsume his story. Earlier that day, the yukai stepped on one of the weird girl's circles, and this made him visible enough for a mere human to see. He was there to report this to Natsume, and hoped there was something he could do about it. Without wasting any time, the odd yukai picks Natsume up and takes directly to the fields to see the girl drawing such circles all around. Natsume gets up at one point and tries to talk to the girl. The girl runs away as soon as she finds Natsume, but then she trips and falls a while later. After falling, the girl takes a look at Madara the cat and hugs him dearly. This shocks Natsume and the odd yukai, but then they quickly get used to it. After she gets comfortable enough to talk to Natsume, the weird girl introduces herself as Takituru and asks whether Natsume can see the yukai or not. Natsume gets a little surprised and asks how she got to know. The girl says that she heard his name from one of the yukai's mouths. When asked if she could see yukai, 
The girl tells Natsume she can't see them until they walk into the weird circles she's been drawing all over the fields. Moving on, she takes out a note from her grandpa and shows it to Natsume before asking for his help in a life and death situation. Natsume collects the letters and opens them only to find the pattern of the circle Taki's been drawing all this while. Taki explains that she follows that same pattern to draw out magic circles that expose Yukai. After seeing the first Yukai trespass her circles, she began drawing more circles for research purposes. Then, one day, a large scary yukai stepped into one of her circles and gave her a challenge. If she could find him again in 360 days, then he would let her go. Otherwise, he'll eat her for lunch. Natsume recalls a similar experience in one of his dreams, as Taki continues on to tell him the rest of the story. In addition to eating her whole, the scary yukai promised to go into her memory and find the names of the last 13 people she spoke to and eat them as well. Now that explains why she's been trying pretty hard not to speak to anybody. Now that Natsume knows, he has to help her win, or he risks getting eaten by the yukai. Natsume sighs and tests the magic circle by pulling the mustache man into the circle. Taki sees the man and Natsume starts thinking of a plan. After getting home, Natsume realizes he only has one month left before the yukai comes for Taki. Madara rejoices when he notices he'll be having the Book of Friends in one more month. Just then, Tuko calls both of them down for dinner and Madara eats voraciously. Natsume, on the other hand, gets lost in thought again, and his foster mom gets suspicious. Thankfully, she buys Natsume's lie so he gets to sleep easy that night. The next day, Natsume and Taki see each other in school to talk about the yukai plaguing them. Taki smiles and thanks Natsume for making her talk this much to anybody ever since. Natsume pets her head and assures her they'll win the game. After school that day, Natsume escorts Taki back to the field so she can continue her drawings while he asks around for the yukai. Eventually, he's unable to find him by the end of the day, so he splits up with Taki and walks back home. On his way back home, Natsume runs into Nishimura and the other guy. Nishimura throws a fit over Natsume trying to steal his girlfriend and runs off crying like a baby. Natsume ignores him and stops by the lake to search for the yukai. Madara gets too excited and dives into the lake. Natsume, who was still on the bank, gets kidnapped by the scary yukai. Madara swims back to the shores and nothing but Natsume's bag waiting for him. He screams out Natsume's name for seconds, but nobody answers him. Madara tries calling Natsume's name a few more times, but there's still no answer. Madara finds the bag, picks it up, and takes it past Taki, who immediately realizes something's wrong. She leaves whatever she's doing and races past Madara to go search for Natsume. Moments after getting kidnapped by the yukai, Natsume wakes up and finds a noose tied to his neck. He tries to wiggle his way out of the noose, but the yukai restrains him from doing so. After trying and failing several times, Natsume decides to speak to the yukai. He asks the yukai why he would curse a girl just because she saw him. The yukai laughs and tells him he hates humans and would do anything to see them revel in despair and anguish. As for Natsume, the yukai promises to eat him very slowly as he senses Natsume to be a kid with special powers. Natsume calls out the BS on this and tells the yukai he's disobeying the rules. The yukai pulls him close to his face and licks it all the way through. Then he tells Natsume he has no obligation to follow the rules and that he'll do whatever he likes when he likes. Natsume notices the distracted yukai and pours some sand on his face. The yukai releases his hold on Natsume who quickly acts fast and escapes while he can. Natsume cuts the rope around his neck and runs out of the cave into the forest. After running for a few meters, Natsume bumps into Madara, Taki, and the mustache guy who are busy looking for him. Now that he's found his friends, Natsume settles down and chats with his friends a little bit. While talking to the rambling Madara, Natsume kept on cleaning both his eyes, almost as if something was inside them. When asked where he was, Natsume tells the group that he met the yukai. His eyes begin to feel itchy, and he scratches them. Natsume and Taki notice this, and call his attention to it. Natsume tells them his vision has been blurry for quite a while now, and he just couldn't figure out why. Just then, the odd mustache guy speaks up and Natsume can only hear his voice but not see him. This comes as a surprise to everyone as Natsume loses his ability to see Yukai temporarily. Not to worry though, as the odd mustache guy promises Natsume that the itchy eye effect will only last for a few days before fading off. Natsume hears this and thanks the Yukai for his kind words. He keeps a sullen face and Taki apologizes for bringing her problem to him. Natsume tells her not to worry too much about that now that he's been cursed. All he needs to do for the next couple of days is live and learn. Following their meeting, Natsume and his cat head back home. There, Natsume continues rubbing his eyes as the itch keeps getting more annoying. At one point, even the vessel Madara's spirit was inside, aka the cat, becomes a little blurry to him. Madara scolds him again and sits him down to discuss a few things. Natsume asks him why he can see Madara as a cat, and Madara tells him it's because he's in a vessel. To test out the real defect, Madara transforms into his normal self, hoping Natsume will be able to see him. Sadly, Natsume still couldn't see him. Meanwhile, Madara was right beside him. He blows a gentle breeze at Natsume, 
and this makes him realize his defect again. The next morning, Natsumi gets startled by an odd mustache and almost swallows his toothpaste. Shortly afterwards, Natsumi gets dressed and heads to school. On his way, he talks about the odd marking on his mirror image and tells him that the marking read the number 2 that morning. Madara listens to what Natsume has to say, and passes near a mirrored glass pane. Natsume, who was walking behind Madara's back, notices weird markings written on Madara's mirror image, and asks him about it. Madara confesses to telling Taki about himself back when Natsume was gone. Now that he has the same markings as Natsume, he urges him to be quick about things and finish the game as fast as possible. After school that day, Natsume and Madara visit Taki, who's busy drawing her markings everywhere on the fields. Upon seeing the cute and cuddly Madara, Taki immediately feels the urge to pick him up and coddle him. However, she restrains herself and begins communicating with Madara through her mind. Madara also gets the message as he notices a weird aura around her. After communicating telepathically, the two become friends. Natsume realizes the instant chemistry between Taki and Madara, but then asks them both about their next move. Madara goes on to talk about a mirror that accumulated enough dark energy to become a ceiling mirror yukai. If handled correctly, a human or yukai could seal another evil yukai inside the mirror. Natsume and Taki get a little worried about how to find such a mirror. Just then, Madara shocks them as he takes out the mirror and shows it to them. Apparently, he won the mirror in a bet while drinking with his yukai drinking buddies. Natsume and Taki are thankful to have such a mirror at their disposal. Madara explains how it works and plans to use Natsume as bait to lure out the yukai from his hiding place and lead him to one of Taki's circles so they can recite the chant and trap the yukai in the mirror. Madara moves on to tell Natsume that his book of friends will be enticing enough for the yukai to pursue. Hearing this, Taki asks Natsume about the book of friends but then Natsume tells her not to worry too much about him. There's a little silence in the air and suddenly, someone or something invisible kicks Madara away from Natsume and Taki. Then, he attacks Natsume and Taki and manages to knock the mirror off Natsume's hand. Taki runs towards one of her magic circles so she can see the yukai. In the meantime, Natsume, while being held to the ground by the yukai's feet, struggles as hard as he can to get the ceiling mirror. The evil yukai enters the magic circle and shows his face to her. Now that she can see him, Taki tells him the game is over so he is obliged to let her and her friends go. However, the yukai weren't done with them yet, so he holds Taki up and squeezes her just so she's small enough to fit in his mouth. Natsume extended his hand to get the ceiling mirror, but then the mirror was too far away. Just then, Madara shows up and carries Natsume close to the mirror and then takes him to the yukai where he recites the chant and seals him in the mirror. After finishing his mission, Natsume gets back home to sleep and rest up for the next day. For the next few days, Natsumi is bedridden, but then he eventually regains his power to see the yukai again. On his way to school one day, Natsumi runs into Taki and talks about the book of friends to her. Odd mustache guy pops his head out of the shrubs near Taki and gets into an argument with Madara. Natsume and Taki both walk to school as Madara and the odd mustache guy argue with themselves. Shortly afterwards, Natsume leaves Madara to go join his friends who were also on their way to school to play around with them. A few days later on a weekend, Tuko returns from her usual grocery store with dozens of snacks for her foster son, Natsume. Natsume collects the snacks, thanks her, and heads upstairs to his room. There, he struggles to fit the plentiful snacks into his bag. After trying and failing several times, he decides to eat some of the snacks with Madara. Later on, Natsume packs his bag and heads to the bus stop to meet his friends and wait for the bus. Since they were on holiday, Natsume and his friends decided to go on their planned outing. Upon getting to the bus stop, his friends check out the bag full of chips and ask Natsume where the party is. As their bus arrives, Natsume chuckles and tells his friends he just wanted to make sure they had enough snacks on their road trip. Eventually, the boys board their bus and stop at a nearby bridge. They go over the bridge to cross to the other side. While on the bridge, they notice some black silhouette moving in the water below them and stop to check it out. Scared that it was a man-eating yukai, Natsumi pushes his friends and gets them to safety. After trekking a few hundred meters, Natsumi and his friends arrive at the inn for their vacation. They knocked on the door several times, but there was nobody there to answer them, so they open the door to check out the inn. Natsumi and Madara stray away from the other two to take a look at a pond beside the house. Natsumi wonders why there are many ponds all around the area, and Madara pops his head out of his bag to tell him about the mermaid legend that supposedly lives there. Natsume, upon discovering that Madara had somehow managed to sneak himself into his bag to tag along, gets pissed and beats Madara up. Thankfully, Madara is saved by the innkeeper, Chizu, who welcomes the boys to the lodge. She takes the guys to their respective rooms and tells them to have a wonderful stay on their vacation. Chizu smiles and takes a look at her guests. However, she pauses after taking a look at Natsume, as if she knew him from somewhere or remembered something about him. Nonetheless, she ignores her hunch and lets the boys have the fun they need to have. Over the next few days, Natsume and his friends finally have some time away from school life. One night, Natsume and Madara spectate some of the carp in the pond near the inn. Natsume 
fixates himself on a carp and notices the eyelids move. Natsume throws a fuss and realizes the carp may be a yukai in disguise. He gets up and checks for the Book of Friends before retiring for the night. By midnight, a mermaid-like yukai wakes Natsume up and pulls him outside. There, she threatens to eat him if he doesn't hand over the Book of Friends. Luckily for Natsume, Madara came in time to bite her tail so she let Natsume go and talk to him normally. Before she could threaten him any further, Chizu woke up and put on the lights to check out who was causing the noise in her yard. The mermaid quickly jumps into the pond and swims while Natsumi and Chizu sit down to talk. Chizu tells Natsumi that his face reminds her of what she used to see back when she was much younger. She asks Natsumi if he's ever heard of the legend of the mermaid, but Natsumi tells her no. Just then, she narrates a horrible experience she had with a particular mermaid at that time. She tells Natsumi that her friend was dying back then and she got desperate enough to ask for the mermaid's blood. After getting it, she made her ill friend drink the blood so he could survive the illness. Judging by the legend of the all-powerful mermaid, Chizu has been scared ever since as she thinks she accidentally made her friend immortal after forcing the mermaid's blood in his mouth. The next day, Natsume and his friends leave Chizu and her inn. On their way back to the bus stop, Madara informs Natsume of an incoming yukai. Just as they're about to cross the bridge from earlier, Natsume excuses himself and heads towards a bunch of flowers. There, the mermaid tries to jump at him again, but Natsume ends up punching her to the ground. The mermaid gets up in pain and rejects Natsume's offer to help. Natsume asks for her name, but the proud lady refuses to tell him her name. Natsume wets a towel and helps her clean her head. The mermaid asks him for the book of friends, but then Natsumi tells her he simply can't do that at all. He bids her farewell and heads to the train station this time to get back to town. A few minutes after arriving at the train station, Natsume finds the old lady Chizu and sits her down to discuss a few things with her. He asks her why she was there, and Chizu tells him she's there to search for the immortal friend, Keiichi, as someone told her they found someone looking like him at the station the previous day. Natsume asks her to narrate her story to him, and Chizu begins from the very beginning. As someone whose parents worked from morning till night, Chizu had been very lonely. One day, she went to the lake and found a friendly mermaid to play with. She became so attached to the said mermaid that sometimes she would sneak out of the house just to get some alone time with her friend. At one point, her neighbor Keiichi, who was around Natsume's age, found her at the pond and began playing with her when her parents weren't around. One day, he fell fatally ill and had little to no chance of survival. Chizu ran down to the lake and begged the mermaid to give her a vial of her blood so her friend could be whole again. The mermaid, after hearing her woes, gave her what she asked for, and Chizu made her dying friend drink the blood. By some miracle, the friend survived. Natsume checks to confirm Chizu's story, but then Chizu says she may have been dreaming as this incident happened several years ago. She says she remembered it all after her husband died a few years ago. She overthinks everything as she thinks she's cursed Keiichi, her dear friend, with immortality. Natsume pets her and returns to his house with Madara. Natsume thinks about things a bit and decides to go back to the area to search for the mermaid. Upon getting to the lake, he calls for the mermaid to come out to him and she ignores his call. Just as he's about to leave, the mermaid surfaces and Natsume jumps into the water to catch her. The mermaid asks what his deal was and he tells her about Chizu. The mermaid acknowledges the story while nearly drowning Natsume and promises to eat Chizu. Natsume gets out of the water all wet and races towards the train station to get to Chizu before the mermaid. Chizu, on the other hand, is seen standing at the train station as she waits for her Keiichi. Just as she's about to give up, she sees Keiichi and follows him to the river. The mermaid there sneaks behind her to eat her but Natsume arrives just in time to pin her to the ground. The book of friends fell from his bag and reacts to her presence. Natsume realizes her name must have been in the book for her to want it so badly. Madara yanks Natsume from the mermaid's hands and buys him time to perform the ritual. After freeing the poor mermaid from her restraints, Natsume sees into her memories and finds out she actually didn't give Chizu her blood. Rather, she gave her some grape juice to give to her friend. Sasafum, the mermaid, now knows she's been exposed, so she begs Natsume to apologize on her behalf to Chizu for tricking her. Before she disappears into thin air, Chizu arrives just in time to see the beautiful mermaid one more time. After their ordeal, Natsume gets back to the train station to search for Keiichi. Apparently, he found Keiichi's grandson and realized the truth. Keiichi had already died of old age three years ago, and the person she was looking for was his grandson. Natsume meets her at the bridge and introduces Keiichi's grandson to Chizu, so they can catch up. After the entire ordeal with the mermaid and Chizu, Natsume returns to his normal life as a high school teenager. One day, while they're at a yard sale, Natsume and Madara check out some gratin dishes to buy for himself and his parents. While they're at it, Natsume hears a rustle near one of them. He realizes a yukai may be nearby, so he gets up and traces the silhouette to a weird painting. The seller offered him the painting for cheap, and Natsume took it home. Upon getting home, Madara complains about the eeriness of the paintings. Apparently, it was a painting filled with blossomless trees, 
but Natsume hung it on his wall and went to sleep. The next day, Natsume wakes up to find flower petals all over his bed area. He gets up from his bed and wonders where such flowers came from. Since there was no leak in his roof, he thinks nothing of it and clears his room. However, the same thing happened over the next two days, and Natsume gets a little suspicious of Madara. He wonders whether the flowers he keeps seeing every morning are somehow related to the painting he just bought. Well, there's only one way to find out. At breakfast, Natsume plans to wait up that night with Madara, so that when the culprit comes to drop the flowers, they can catch them red-handed. That night, Natsumi and Madara stay up late and wait for the culprit to come by. Minutes away from closing his eyes to sleep, Natsume hears a result in the ceiling. Just then, a yukai opened a pigeonhole from the ceiling and dropped several flower petals on Natsume's floor. Madara jumped onto the ceiling and dragged her to the floor for questioning. Natsume sits her down and asks her why she is dropping several flower petals in his room. The lady points to the painting and tells Natsume that she is doing it to appraise the yukai living in the painting he bought from the yard sale days ago. Natsumi checks the painting for any missing details. After straining his eyes for seconds on end, he finally sees the small dark shadow pop up in the middle of the painting. Natsume clearly gets spooked as he lets out a little yell. The lady, who calls herself Mia, calls the person in the person Yasaka. Apparently, Yasaka used to be a human who died and became a yukai. During his several years as a yukai, he got tired of the human population and decided to make a painting that he could hide inside. Now that she's been found, Mia claims the picture and tries to get it back. She gets up and tries to yank the picture off the wall. Sadly, Yasaka wasn't letting the picture go at all. Eventually, she gives up after Natsume also tries and fails and promises to come back every day until the picture eventually comes off on its own. Natsume tried to call her back, but she didn't come back at all. The next day, Mia came back with butterflies as gifts for Natsume. After letting them fly around Natsume's room, Mia tells Natsume a little bit about her Yasaka. Back when he was still alive, Yasaka would often come under a sakura tree during spring to bask in the beautiful sight. Then, Mia would look down at him from one of the branches and would sometimes talk to him. Scared of what he might think after he realizes she's a yukai, Mia would make sure she hides herself in the blossoms and talks to him. Eventually, she made friends with him and would only see him during spring when the flowers started blooming. A few years later, however, he stopped coming. Mia tells Natsume that she searched all around for him only to find out he's locked himself inside one of his paintings. Since then, she has traveled all around the world with pictures just so Yasaka doesn't feel bored. Natsume, after hearing her story, gets back home to think about Yasaka and Mia's story. The next day came by quickly and Mia returned with her flowers. Day after day after day, she would come with her flower until one day, springs came and the trees began to blossom. One day in the fields, a nomadic yukai finds Natsume and predicts his future for him. He tells Natsume about the horrible future he sees for Natsume. Apparently, he sees Natsume's body buried in the ground with flowers all over it. Before Natsume could question its prediction, Tuko shows up to check up on Natsume. Natsume lies to Tuko again and follows her back home. On getting home, Natsume and Madara find something bizarre in the painting. From the looks of things, the trees from the painting had already started growing their roots out to Natsume's wall. At this time, Natsume begins to cough and feel weak. Madara immediately realizes that the painting must be draining Natsume's power, so he transforms into his kitsuna form and threatens to devour the painting in no time. Natsume gets in the way and gets bitten by Madara. The bite from Madara causes Natsume to faint and go unconscious as he recalls some of the memories Yasaka had with Mia. The next time he opens his eyes, he finds Mia close to him, apologizing for the picture's effect on his wall. She promises to take the picture down with her own hands, but Natsume begged her to be a little patient with the picture. Mia smiles and takes a look at the picture before telling Natsume that it's okay for them to take it down. Still. Natsumi tells her to try another method as he feels Yasaka is still somewhere in that picture and is probably worried about his Maya. Several days pass by and Natsumi gets sicker and sicker. Then one day, Mia finds her resolve and visits Natsumi to tell him she's going to have to burn the picture. Before doing that, however, she'd like to give Yasaka one final gift. So she gets some paint and three brushes for Natsume and Madara to draw the famous lilac leaves on the sakura tree branches in the painting. It takes them the entire day to paint such an amazing picture, and when they're done, Natsume collapses from exhaustion. As he drifts away from the real world, Natsume finds himself inside the picture and sees Yasaka extending his hand towards one of the branches. Suddenly, Mia came out of the blossoms and finally showed her face to him. Natsume woke up the next day and found the entire leaves and branches they drew on the wall and on the painting entirely gone. He removes the painting easily this time and finally burns it to seal Maya and her lifelong lover away in a happier place. After doing the deed, Natsume says his final goodbyes to Mia and joins his foster mom to help do her 
a thing. The next day, Madara wanders off into the forest to drink with his buddies and passes the night in the forest. He wakes up the following morning after dreaming of Reiko confronting and challenging him to a fight. He checks around for the yukai he sensed earlier and fails to notice the falling wild orange landing on his head. Just then, Natsumi falls from the tree with his handful of wild oranges he just plucked off the tree. Madara complains to him about his recklessness, but then Natsume chuckles and apologizes for dropping apples on his head. Suddenly, a cool breeze blows past Natsume, and before he can notice it, an axe flies straight towards Natsume's head. Thankfully, he dodges the axe just in time before it slices his face right off. Both Natsume and Madara are scared beyond reason, as they wonder who could throw such an axe at them. That day after school, Natsume returns home with his friends, thinking about the axe thrower from earlier. At one point, he runs into Shigeru, who asks to walk home with him. Natsume walks home with Shigeru and finds weird footprints on the floor leading to their house. Upon following the prince, Shigeru and Natsume find a weird graffiti drawing on their front porch. Shigeru seems to recognize the drawing as if he's seen it before. Eventually, he passes it off as some angry kid's tantrum and heads inside to rest from work. Later that evening, Madara returns from his drinking trip to check up on Natsume. Natsume takes him outside to show Madara the drawing. To his surprise, however, he finds out it's actually gone. Madara interprets such a drawing and tells Natsume that it's like a message from Yukai announcing his arrival. Natsume ponders over the mystery when suddenly, he hears Tuko screaming in the backyard. Natsume rushes over to the back backyard and finds Tuko staring at her destroyed garden. He finds the plants there all trampled, and holds Madara responsible for such an atrocity. Madara clears his name by identifying another set of humanoid footprints in the garden sand. This can only mean that something or someone just invaded their house. Madara lets Natsumi know just how powerful such a yukai can be. That night, Natsume has a nightmare about a weird-looking yukai floating over his head. He wakes up, finds the yukai running in the corridor, and follows it downstairs. There, he finds Shigeru awake and tries to explain himself. Madara throws a fuss at the time and makes Shigeru remember a memory about a ghost that used to haunt the house when he was much younger. Natsume gets interested in hearing Shigeru's story and asks him to tell him more about it. Shigeru tells him not to worry too much about the ghost and that it calmed down after a young and beautiful lady came over to his house one day to stop it. Although he didn't know what the girl did, Shigeru thanked her once again and went back to sleep. Natsume returns to his room and discusses the strange girl with Madara, the cat. Apparently, Reiko used to live in that area several years ago before she packed out of there. The next morning, Natsume goes to meet Shigeru and asks him to narrate the entire story to him. Shigeru gets a little suspicious as he never thought Natsume would be interested in ghost stories. Natsume laughs a little and tells Shigeru not to worry too much about the details and just start the story. So it all began the day Reiko found young Shigeru trying to get his ball from the tree. Apparently a yukai had stolen his ball and left it on the tree. Reiko found young Shigeru cute and asked the yukai to release the ball for him. Shortly after getting his ball back, two boys show up to bully Reiko. They throw stones at Reiko, but she hits the stone and chases them away. Shigeru sees Reiko laughing at the boys and decides to help Reiko get revenge on them. Reiko, however, stops him from injuring himself and plays around with him. This made him fond of her, and he began playing around with her more often. Sometimes young Shigeru would catch Reiko playing with trees and laughing all on her own, but he usually minded his business until one day when he found her near a lake and joined her to chill out. They exchanged words like normal sister and brother, and life remained the same. Then one day, strange things started happening in Shigeru's household. His mother started getting sick and his father was hurt. He told Reiko about the stuff happening in the house and she asked if she could visit his house one day. Since his parents aren't really fond of her, Shigeru waited till they were out for work before inviting her. Upon entering the house, Reiko could already notice a strange yukai cursing and devastating the entire house. So she waited until Shigeru was out and exorcised the bad spirit from their house after destroying a room in the process. Shigeru mentions to Natsumi that the bad luck plaguing his family suddenly stopped after the exorcism, but then Reiko moved out of the locale days later, and he's never seen her since then. Natsume returns to his room smiling as he realizes what Reiko did to help out the family. He pets Madara on the head but then stops when he senses something move past his door. Madara tells Natsume that the yukai is probably the spirit from Shigeru's stories. Without giving it a second thought, Natsume Natsume rushes to the corridor and confronts the yukai. Madara follows suit and finds Natsume getting eaten by the Karime yukai, as he calls it. Thankfully, he's able to rescue Natsume and take him to a safe room. There, he mentions that the yukai must be there to get its revenge on Reiko for exercising it. If they don't exercise it soon enough, the same curses that plagued Shigeru's family back then will happen again. So, Natsume prepares himself and lures the yukai into a special room where he performs the exorcism. The yukai realizes way too late 
and sinks into the ground as the entire room and its windows get blown up in a white light. With the spirit gone, Natsumi now knows the entire house is free from harm. He sits in the middle of the room and realizes the mess he's made. He gets a little flustered and tries his best to rearrange the room to its former self. Shigeru comes by after hearing the loud sound and finds the entire room in shambles. On seeing him, Natsume gets very worried and keeps on apologizing to Shigeru for trashing the room. Shigeru smiles and walks inside the room to pet his head. Apparently the poor man was just happy that Natsume was spending more time with them, rather than locking himself alone in his room and avoiding them. Natsume thanks his foster dad for not giving up on him and returns to his normal life. On another day, Natsume follows his foster mom out to get groceries. On their way back, Natsumi notices a yukai with wings flying in the sky and follows it to the forest, leaving Tuko behind. Suddenly, the winged yukai falls to the ground and gets eaten by another yukai before Natsumi can get to him. Hiragi shows up a little while later with Natori to investigate the situation. Natsumi remembers the look on the yukai bird's face, almost like it was calling Natsume for help. Natori tells him it's because the bird sensed his immense power, that's why it asked him for help. Moving on, Natori shows Natsume an invitation letter inviting him to a sorcerer's meeting that's to be held the following evening. Natsume checks out the letter and asks him what the setting will look like. Natori tells him he'll be joining dozens of sorcerers from all over Tokyo as they come together to discuss certain things about yukais and the supernatural. Since there have been incidents of yukai attacks lately, now's the best time for the meeting to come up. That night, Natsume wonders if he'll meet anybody like him in the meeting. The next morning, he informs Tuko that he's going to be back the next day as he's on an outing with Natori. Knowing Tuko, she grants him permission and asks him to keep calling her when he has the chance. Natsume thanks his foster mother and heads into the forest with Madara. There, they ran into some friendly but hungry yukai who were hell-bent on eating him. They tried deceiving him into eating him, but Natori and Hiragi came just in time to save Natsume. After chasing them away, Hiragi goes silent and suddenly asks Natsume to strip. When Natsume doesn't listen, she tries to force him into removing his clothes. Natsume punches her until she finally tells him what she wants to do with him. She removes the sleeves of his left arm and draws a charm on it to protect him from a carnivorous yukai attack. Madara teases Natsume about his charm, but then Natsume ignores him and follows Natori to the meeting place. There, Natsume is bemused by the different variety of people all gathered in one place. As he wanders in their midst, he gets a little worried and wonders if there may be someone like him there. He concentrates his hearing and finds someone talking about Natsume Reiko. Just then, Natori arrives with a beret on his head and advises Natsume to put on a mask so he can blend into the crowd. Natsume asks him why he doesn't have a mask on, and Natori tells him it's because his family is already known for being expert exorcists, so there's no need for him to hide himself. Soon after, an elderly woman walks towards Natori to say hi and asks after the associate Natori promises to introduce her to. Natori identifies the woman as Nanasi and introduces her to Natsume. Nanase gets closer to Natsume and pulls open his mask. Then she asks him if he knows something about the infamous Reiko she's heard every yukai talk about. Natsume tells her Reiko is his grandmother, but she died a long time ago, at a very young age. As for how she died, he doesn't really know or even care to find out. Nanasi finds this a bit disturbing and asks him why he never wants to find out about his grandma's death. Natsume keeps calm and keeps wondering if he can trust Nanasi with any information about his grandmother. After attending to Natsume, Nanasi turns to Natori and asks him about the yukai he was hunting. Apparently, there was a bounty on the yukai's head, and Natori was up to win the prize money. To help his search and capture mission, Nanasi gives Natori a pot meant for sealing yukais, and continues on her own way. Natori takes Natsumi on another trip around the meeting place to discuss some little details about his missions. On the way, he finds images of the yukai from the previous day with those images labeling the yukai as a deadly one. Although it may be natural for large things to eat small things, Natsumi sees this as a little bit excessive. That evening, Natori and Natsume meet in a secret room to perform a location ritual so they can figure out the location of the carnivorous yukai. To start the ritual, Natori asks Natsume to place his hand in the middle of the magic circle and imagine the yukai in his mind. After doing so, the talisman on Natsume's hand becomes alive, breaks the window, goes out, and flies back in to locate the yukai. Realizing the kind of situation they're in, Natori, Hiragi, Natsume, and Madara begin searching the entire building for the yukai. They run as fast as they can till they get to a room filled with yukai. Natsume gets into his disguise and senses the aura around the room. Suddenly, he looks up and finds blood dripping from the ceiling. The yukai breaks through the ceiling to the ground level and threatens to harm Hiragi. Natsume got in the way and got his left hand bitten. The yukai tasted the charm on his left arm and ran away. Madara transforms into his normal self and attacks to chase the yukai out of the house. A few meters away from the house, Natsume and Natori finish completing the magic circle needed to activate the ceiling pot. Almost immediately, they activate the ritual and successfully capture the yukai. Then, they close the lid 
to stop the Yukai from getting out. Mission successful. After their capture mission, Natori and Natsumi head back to the building holding the pot as they discuss the aftermath of their actions. Suddenly, the pot develops wings and flies back to Nanasi's hands. Natori asks for an explanation, but then Nanase thanks him for bringing her a new Yukai servant after she sent her flying Yukai away. Natsumi and Natori realize that Nanasi had used her bird Yukai, aka the bird that got eaten as bait, to lure in this Yukai so she could train it to be her servant. She tells Natsume and Natori not to get too drawn to Yukai so they don't get disappointed when the Yukai turns on them. As she returns to her room, Natsume gets worried about being taken advantage of. Madara tells him not to worry about her using the pot as the seal they used isn't going to be that easy to break. The next day, Natsume and Madara return home to their foster parents. As Natori gets back home, he mentions the details of their new job to Hiragi and tells her it's going to be a tough one. Natsumi, on the other hand, gets back home safely and goes back to his normal lifestyle. On his way to his school one day, Natsumi lets his guard down and fails to notice the Yukai axe thrower nearby. Nothing out of the ordinary happens, so Natsumi's pretty much okay. That evening at closing, Natsumi's friends drag him to visit a haunted house. Natsumi was initially against the idea, but then again, his persuasive friends convinced him to come along with them. After pushing him for several minutes, they all finally arrive at the big house. Nishimura pushes Natsumi into the house and exposes him to the vastness of such an elegant building. He meets Sasada waiting for him inside the house, and she explains the mysterious sound she keeps hearing inside the rooms every night. She urges Natsumi to use his super awesome powers to figure out where the sounds came from, but Natsumi tells her he can't sense such things, even though Sasada doesn't seem to believe him. At some point in the house tour, Natsume asks after his other two friends. Kitamo Moto and Nishimura and Sasada tells him they're probably going back home. As they continue talking, Taki enters the house, amazed by the plentiful space inside. She helps Natsume get rid of Sasada and buys him enough time to do more detailed research. After they're gone, Madara catches up to Natsume and warns him about the powerful Yukai living in that house. He advises they leave now before the Yukai catches up to them and eats them up. Natsume refuses to abandon his girls so he keeps moving until he hears sounds in a particular room. Upon getting to the room of the sound, he hears someone screaming in a coffin, and opens it to find a middle school kid crumpled inside. The kid on seeing Natsumi punches him and makes a run for it. After he's gone, Sasada and Taki return from their escapade to check up on Natsumi. Natsumi tells them he's fine, but he then checks the identity card from the middle school student and realizes his name is Ishio Kai. On his way to school the next day, Natsume asks some middle schoolers about Kai and they tell him he's an odd guy who seems to think he's being chased by ghosts. Natsume asks the kids if Kai is being bullied in school but they only chuckle and tell him Kai's a pretty smart guy with a lot of friends. After they leave, Kai and his friends pull up to bully Natsumi and Madara. Natsumi initially tries to talk some sense into them, but then again the insults were so great that he ran back home to sulk. After his sulking session, Natsume asks Madara to give Kai his ID as he cannot face such a guy at the moment. Madara rejects his offer and Natsume heads into the forest to search for the weird kid. On his way, he finds Tanima and walks with him. Suddenly he hears a sound nearby and traces its source to a graveyard. There he found a yukai promising and threatening to eat some kid. Natsume makes a sound and the yukai vanishes. Taki shows up seconds later and warns Natsume not to spend too much time around that area, as it's known for attracting Yukai from all over there. She notices his hand bleeding and tells him about it. Natsume, Tanama, and Taki all return to the road to get his wound dressed and treated. After that, Natsume and Taki discuss the Yukai he just found. Despite being attacked by such a Yukai, Natsume still felt the need to help him back up. He calls it being arrogant, but Taki calls it being kind. As they all settle to enjoy the evening breeze, Kai runs from where he is hiding and gets attacked on the way by Madara, who he thought was a Yukai. Natsume, Tanuma, and Taki all rush up and catch up to Kai. There they find Madara giving Kai his lost ID and Natsume is happy with his cat. Madara, after giving him the ID, asks for his 200 but gets a warm hug from Taki instead. Natsume walks over to Kai to ask him about his experience earlier. Kai starts by apologizing to Natsume for the insults his friend put him through back then. Taki and Tanuma laugh at him, but Natsume quickly stops them and asks Kai what he intends to do about the guys chasing after him. Kai tells him it's not going to work as they may not believe him. He tries to act cool and cold towards Natsume and ends up spraining his ankle. Natsume shouts and scolds him into submission. Kai drops the cold guy act and lets Natsume back to his house. Taki follows Natsume as they all trek towards Kai's house. On the way, Kai kept sobbing quietly until Natsume stopped. Kai told Natsume that he was only trying to protect him this time by ignoring him and throwing him off the Yukai's scent. Natsume thanks him for the kind thoughts and drops him off at his house. They notice how alone the boy is as the house spells loneliness. Nevertheless, they refuse to intrude into another man's house and return to theirs. On their way home that night, Natsume and Madara finally find the Yukai with the axe that's been after them all this while. Natsume talks a little about his wound and annoys Madara in the process as he complains bitterly about it. The next day in school, 
Natsumi finds Kai checking up on him from the bike park. After school, Natsumi began spending lots of time with Kai to make up for the loneliness he felt at home. Kai also grew fond of Natsumi and Taki and would often follow them home. One day after school, the yukai with the axe attacks Natsume. Kai notices the monster early and pushes him out of the way. Kai is surprised to find out Natsume can see the ghost like he does. To save him from near death, Natsume takes Kai to the place Taki warned him about. The yukai walks to the place and attacks Natsume who tries his very best to defend himself. Minutes away from getting sliced by the yukai's axe, Madara came and chased it away. Natsume asks Madara how he got to know his location and Madara tells him Taki had told him about him moments after they left her. Kai's more than amazed to see such a cool and powerful yukai come to their rescue. Taki also arrives a little while later and frolics around Madara, who's now turned to his cat form. Natsume looks around the forest and finds someone in a long coat running away. He follows the person only to find out he is actually running after Natori. Natori holds Natsume and complains about him intruding on his mission. Natsume gets a little confused and asks Natori why he thinks like that. Natori bursts his bubble by telling him that Kai is actually a yukai, and he sealed him in the coffin to keep him from the outside world. He also mentions how powerful Kai is, and warns him not to get too close or attached to him. After realizing Kai's real nature and Natori's plan to exterminate him, Natsume gets really confused about who to choose this time. He returns to Kai and Taki with a sullen face and tries his best to hide his reaction to the truth. Thankfully, Kai didn't seem to notice anything wrong with Natsume's expression. That night over dinner, Natsume's foster parents catch Natsume spacing out, and ask him about it. Natsumi lies to them as usual and goes to sleep thinking about his next move on Kai. On his way to school the following day, Madara and Natsumi get into a small argument over Kai and what to do about him. Their argument is interrupted by an ad featuring Natori and a weird actress on the TV near them. Natori shows up seconds later and takes Natsume to a staircase to discuss their next move. After getting his attention, Natori asks Natsume what he plans to do now he's found out about Kai's real identity. Before he gives him an answer, Natori moves on to tell him about the well in the area they were in previously that supposedly has some ravenous ogres sealed inside. Natori then tells Natsume that a yukai with extreme powers could easily undo the seal on the well and release the deadly ogres back into the town. Natsume asks him how Kai's related to the well, and Natori tells him that he came to the city just to find the well and free the ogres as they've been calling to him ever since. Natsume asks Natori if he knows where the well is, but Natori tells him he doesn't really know. Natsume gets a little suspicious and asks Natori about his employers. Natori refuses to tell him anything and just tells him to choose between humans and yukai. Will he forsake his own race and species just to save some boy that probably doesn't give a damn about him? Natsume runs away and Madara follows him leaving Hiragi and Natori alone at the staircase. After they're gone, Hiragi asks Natori if he could just refuse the job. Sadly, Natori tells her he can't. Shortly afterwards, Taki finds Natsume sulking somewhere random and tells him about the cookies she made for Kai. Natsume tries to tell her about Kai's true nature, but he chokes at the last second and asks her to let him give Kai the cookies himself. Taki trusts Natsume and places the cookies in his hands. Natsume heads straight to Kai's hand and finds nobody there. He gets back into the forest to search for the abandoned mansion they were in previously. On his way there, he finds Tanima and asks if he knows where Kai is. After giving him the directions, Natsume runs towards the abandoned house and feels a weird aura coming from the house. He rushes inside and begins searching through the corridor for Kai. Somewhere in his search, he finds Madara in the hallway and engages him in a random discussion. Just then, a sweet scent comes from a room behind Madara and he follows it there only to get trapped in the magic circle. Natsume continues searching for Kai through the rooms and stumbles into a room with a hole in its ground. Suddenly a talisman attacks Natsume and pins him on the ground. Madara arrives at the right time to dispel the talisman, but then Natsume falls in the hole and gets saved by Kai who pulls him out. This time he asks Kai about his identity and his search for the well. Kai doesn't deny any of those allegations and tells Natsumi that he was there initially to search for the well, but now that he's found Natsumi, he's happy he came to town. As for the exorcist who put Natsumi's life in danger, Kai promises to bring him to justice. Natsumi tries to explain things to him, but Kai jumps out of the window to go search for Natori. Natsumi jumps after and starts running towards Natori. A few minutes later, Kai catches up to Natori and dispels his yukai. Hiragi takes Natori and escapes through the hubbub to get away from the angry spirit. Up front, they ran into Natsume and Madara, who were hiding inside the bushes. Natsume tries to warn Natori about Kai's immense power and hatred for him. Natori tries to make him choose again, but Natsume tells him he's going to choose both of them, as they're both important to him. Hearing this, Natori decides to tell Natsumi about Kai's true nature. Apparently, Kai is a water deity who resides in the mountains and leads a lonely and boring lifestyle. His job there is to protect the source of the river and wait for the people and their offerings to replenish his power. However, since modern times are coming, Kai faces the risk of disappearance due to the lack of worshippers. As such, he began to get even more bored of his place. Then. 
He heard the voice of the ogres calling him for their rescue and came to town to find humans like Natsume and Taki. After saying all that, Natori promises Natsume that he's going to find the well and renew the seal so the ogre's voices don't seep out of the cracks anymore. Natsume thanks Natori for his help and starts planning how to locate such a well. Kai, who is flying several meters above them, finds Natsume and Natori and thinks Natsume betrayed him. He gets down and confronts Natsume for betraying him and allying with Natori, his worst enemy. Before Natsume could explain, Kai flew towards the well to free the ogres. Natsume and Madara immediately fly after the deity, hoping to catch up and stop him before he does something bad. Thankfully, they find him flying in front of them, searching for the well. With the help of a yukai, Kai finds the well and flies straight towards it. Natsumi also gets help from Taki and discovers the location of the well. He flies straight towards the location and finds Kai about to break the seal. He tries convincing him not to break the seal, but Kai breaks it anyway to free the ogres. Expecting to be thanked for saving them, Kai gets the shock of his life when the ogres come for his head. Natsume tries to save Kai, but he gets knocked out and the ogre escapes. Madara catches one of the ogres trying to fly and throws it on the magic circle Natori made earlier. The ogre gets burned to pieces and dies a second time. As for Kai, he finds Natsume's book of friends and checks it out only to realize that Natsume Reiko and her grandson aren't the people he took them to be. He starts crying like a baby and realizes that he highly misunderstood Natsume's intentions. When Natsume comes to, Kai's already gone. Not to worry though, as he was able to arrange an outing with Natori and some of his friends so they could see Kai again. At the outing, Natsume goes alone again and thanks his bodyguard Madara for helping him out with his stuff earlier on. After much deliberation and discussion, Natsume joins his friends to eat. At one point in their picnic, his parents come by and they hear the peaceful bell sounds from the vacation house. A few days later, two little yukai are seen taking a brief walk in the forest when one large yukai stops them in their tracks to ask about Natsume Takashi. Having not seen him before, the yukai tell the bigger yukai they don't know where he is and the bigger yukai lets them go. Shortly after he's gone, Natsume gets down from the tree he was hiding in and thanks the miniature yukai for helping him escape. Then he races off to the plains, hoping to get home before it gets dark. Thankfully, he finds his way back home to rest. At his frontage, he finds a yukai teacup and tries to pick it up. The teacup sees him and quickly escapes Natsume's grasp to get into the gutter. Natsumi tries to go after the teacup, but then Tuko comes just in time to welcome him back home. She asks him what the trouble is, but Natsumi lies to her again and gets through the day. By nightfall, Natsumi and his family have a wonderful dinner with the family's fat cat, Madara. After dinner, Natsumi asks Madara about the weird teacup from earlier, and he gets the explanation he needs. Apparently, the teacup is also called the Shadow Cup, and it's created when a very beautiful teacup absorbs Earth's energy to come alive after it's been thrown out. Oftentimes, they live under old houses and only appear to run around a household if they sense danger coming. Running around the house and causing noise is their own way of warning the family living in such a house to be careful about the danger coming. Also, if the teacup really loves the family it's trying to protect, it can break itself to absorb the effect of the spiritual danger that's coming and leave the family whole and safe while it passes on. Natsume asks to confirm that the cup is actually harmless, and Madara tells him it's perfectly harmless. Just then, one yukai shows up at Natsume's window to have her name back. Natsume fulfills her request and returns her name. After the ritual, Natsume collapses for a few minutes from exhaustion and drifts off into sleep. Later that night, Natsume wakes up after hearing strange footsteps in the house. He gets to the corridor and finds the teacup running up and down the corridor, and realizes a disaster is coming for their house. The following day in school, Natsumi's friends find him worrying about the disaster that's coming. They manage to comfort him in their own way until they get back home. On his way back from school, Natsumi runs into an elderly woman who just fell from her walking stick. He picks up her stick to help her, but then, the elderly woman reveals her true self. Apparently, the old woman is a yukai who is seeking someone to take her bait. When asked what she wants, the old woman tells him to help her find a particular yukai known for bringing disaster to the land. Natsume clearly cannot involve himself in any more scary yukai experiences, so he gets up and runs away. Before he gets too far, the old woman threatens to curse him if he doesn't do her bidding. Natsume ignores her and finally gets home in one piece. Throughout that day, Natsume keeps thinking about the old woman, as he's scared he may have brought calamity to their household. By midnight, the impatient old lady found Natsume's house and asked him to help her again. This time, Natsumi offers her his help, and she leaves him to rest for the night. On his way to school the following day, Natsumi and Madara discuss a few weird things about the old woman they've been seeing lately. After school, they take the same path as always, and find the old woman there waiting for them. The old woman smells them from a mile away and brings Natsumi's attention to her. After meeting up with her, the old woman directs Natsumi further into the forest, 
to get him to the last seen location of the girl she's looking for. While following her tracks, Natsumi seriously hopes the old woman doesn't know about the Book of Friends as he fears she may get desperate once she finds out. For now, though, the woman didn't seem to care much about a book. Rather, she makes a stop somewhere and continues their journey after a few seconds. In the second part of their journey, the elderly woman narrates her experience meeting Reiko. Apparently, Reiko, who used to be feared amongst all yukai, was nice to her when she asked her for an important item in her possession. Back then, the elderly woman used to reside in a cherry tree, up until it was possessed by an evil spirit. Unable to drive the spirit out with her powers, she needed a mirror to help her do that. So when she heard about Reiko, the elderly woman decided to approach and ask her for the mirror. To her surprise, Reiko gave her the mirror after asking her just once. Even back then, Reiko, who had serious disdain for humans, told the elderly woman not to trust humans so much as they're always up to no good. In the end, Reiko helped her exercise the bad spirit from her tree, and they became best of friends. After hearing her story, Natsume asks her for the mirror, and she shows it to him. Before he could say much, the large yukai searching for him finally catches up to him and bites him. Almost immediately, Madara transforms into his kitsune mode and eats the yukai. Natsume gets back up and checks himself only to find out his left shoulder is still intact. Madara returns to his fortune cat mode, and checks for the Book of Friends to confirm its safety. Natsumi checks his bag and takes out the Book of Friends. He shows it to the old woman and reminds her of her name. The old woman suddenly remembers a scene in her past where she wrote her name on something. Natsumi finds her name in the book and returns it to her. He gets a little peek into her memories and watches the entire story she told him play out right before his eyes. From the moment she approached Reiko in a haphazard manner till the time Reiko gave her the mirror, and helped her take down the bad spirit before they became friends. During their last meeting, Reiko found out the elderly woman was a yukai and challenged her to a challenge. As expected, the old woman lost and surrendered her name to Reiko. Upon realizing her true name, the old woman thanks Natsume for his help and directs him on the shortest route to get back to the town. On his way back, Natsume finds the tree the old lady was talking about. From the looks of things, it turns out the bad spirit had already been banished and it was doing just fine. On getting home, Natsume finds Tuko checking the broken teacup she found in their yard. Natsume bends down and realizes that the teacup must have sacrificed itself to avert the incoming danger coming to their household. The following day is a weekend, so Natsume heads into town with Madara to get some soup. On his way back, they hear some yukai having a good time in the shrubs nearby. Madara barges in on their drink party and chases them away. Natsume stops his fat cat from being a bully and invites the other yukai to be comfy in their own space. Two hungry yukai stare at the soup he had in his hands and ask for some but Madara tells them not to even think about it. He then moves on to ask about the monk who used to chant from the temple not so far away. The yukai tell both Madara and Natsume that they've not been hearing any chanting recently. Maybe the monk died or something. Natsume gets a little worried about the monk as he turns out to be Tanama's father. On the next Monday, Natsume is seen joining his friends for gym class. He meets Tanama on his way there and tries to ask him about his father. However, he stopped in his tracks and continued his gym class with his friends. After school, Natsume asks Madara for advice on what to do about Tanuma's dad. He fears he may be intruding if he asks Tanama about his dad. Madara feigns ignorance to all his questions and leaves Natsume with no choice but to go visit Tanama. Meanwhile, Tanuma returned home that day and found a weird yukai floating around his room. Natsumi, on his way to school the next day, finds someone like Tanuma with his head buried in the ground. He tries moving over to him, but then again decides against it. That was the right decision to make, as he saw the real Tanuma in school. After school, Natsumi walks home with Tanuma and asks about his dad on the way. Thankfully, Tanuma's dad is on a business trip and will be in about a month or so. Natsumi is relieved a little, but then he sees a weird expression on Tanuma's face and asks him about it. Tanuma tells him it's nothing and they split ways. Just as he's about to cross a bridge, Natsume finds a weird yukai that asks for his name back. Just as he's about to do the ritual, Madara calls him back and tells him there's no yukai presence there with them. This comes comes as a shock to Natsume but then he forgets about the experience and continues his journey back home. That night, Natsume woke up to see another silhouette walking along the corridor to his room. Upon going out to check it out, he finds out there's nothing there. The following morning, Madara heads towards the yukai drinking spot in the forest to cause trouble. He has his fun and jump scares the yukai till they almost pee their pants. Eventually, he settles with the two hungry yukai from before and asks them for some information. The two yukai break the bad news to Madara, telling him about the bad air yukai that has been revived recently. According to the rumors he was initially defeated by Reiko who also took his name and hid it somewhere. Now that he's back he's spreading his bad miasma everywhere and is actively seeking for Natsume. At that instant the same yukai they were talking about finds Natsume crossing the same bridge from the former day and stops him. This time the yukai appears to be a lady who asks Natsume for his help. Apparently she is a sister to the yukai Madara and the two yukai were talking about and her brother's name is the one in the book. 
book, not hers. She then goes on to tell Natsume about the Ukihara village, a village where the trees never wilt and the birds are always chirping. This village is a village hidden in an alternate dimension that only makes contact with the real world during a huge festival or event. Back when they were still together, the Yukai speaker and her brother accidentally got into the Ukihara village while wandering the forest. Sadly, their stay there never lasted, and they left. Up until now, she mentions that she's been searching for the village alongside her brother, hoping to gain access to such a wonderful place someday again. Eventually, she grew weak from the miasma of her brother, and he left her after leaving her in the hole of a holy tree. Ever since that time, she's never seen her brother again. She wanted Natsume to help her find her brother by calling his name into the sky. Natsume, however, breaks it to her that he can't do that since he hasn't seen the brother before. This pisses the lady off and she strangles him and threatens to end him if he doesn't release the Book of Friends. In his struggles, Misuzu came by out of sheer luck and chased the lady away. Madara also shows up seconds later and says hi to Misuzu who is in a bad mood. It turns out someone has been eating low-level yukai in his area and he needed to find out who that person was. That night, Natsume finds out the elder brother of the yukai he met earlier has been residing in Tanuma's house and he suspects him to be the one eating the low-level yukais in Misuzu's land. That same night, Tanuma has a nightmare about Natsume and the yukai plaguing his house. He gets up from his bed and rushes outside, only to see the yukai oozing out miasma from his body as he walks further into the forest. The next morning, Tanuma waltzes into a building the yukai broke into and finds a map of the old temple near the forest. He tells Natsume about it the following day in school, and Natsume rushes straight to the temple. He finds a much smaller structure than he should expect and asks Madara about it. Madara tells him about a festival the humans used to hold in the temple that could open the door to the other worlds. Meanwhile, Tanuma crashes over at a friend's to avoid getting attacked by that big bad yukai. Later that night, while searching the forest for the big bad yukai, Natsume and Madara find the yukai and his miasma trying to off himself after drugging some other low-level yukai with his miasma. Natsume calls the yukai to order and talks to him cordially. The yukai apologizes for his miasma's effect on the yukai around the place and tells Natsume he's about to give up. Natsume tells him about his sister and the fact that she's been dead ages ago. So who is this person claiming to be his sister. The Yukai tells Natsume she's probably an imposter. He then continues his story, telling about his brief meeting with Reiko back then and his confrontation with her, which made him surrender his name to her power. Eventually, the big bad Yukai sleeps after realizing Reiko passed on and wakes up several years later to find the abandoned temple rebuilt with two people, Tanuma and his father, Tanum Sr., staying there. Over the past few days, he hasn't felt the monk's mana, so he came there hoping to find a way back to his village in the alternate dimension. Natsume then asks him about the person posing to be his sister, and the yukai tells him she's probably a yukai that's been following all around, thinking she could follow him back to the village through a portal. Madara now understands why she was after the Book of Friends. Now that they've known the truth, Natsume returns Kanawa's name to him. Just as the ritual is about to be completed, the imposter stabs Kanam in the back and harvests some of his blood. Kanama remained strong and restrained her with his clips as their world shifted into the Ukihara village. The imposter is taken and transformed into a wand the music producer uses to make his music. Before he returns to his world, Natsume relives Kanama's memories, especially the one that involved him doing rock, paper, scissors with Reiko, only to lose and surrender his name. Before the door to the village closes, Kanama asks Natsume to follow him in, but Natsume tells him not to worry too much about him. Kanama thanks him for the help and disappears to the other world. On his way back home, Natsume finds Tanuma, who rushes to tell him about the yukai in his house. Natsume calms him down and tells him that the yukai has already returned to his world. One day, Natsume finds out from Tuko that it's Shigeru's birthday. So before he heads out to school, Tuko tells him to get some shortcakes for his foster father before he returns that night so they can celebrate it nicely. At school that day, Natsume receives a map of a French pastry service near Kitamoto's home from Sasada. After school, they follow the map and find themselves in front of a pink pastry shop, which is quite different to the one Sasada drew for them. Before even getting close to the place, Natsume gives up and leaves the pastry as it appears way too girly for him. Before he goes far, Kitamoto reminds him of his foster dad's birthday cake and urges him to give the pastry a try. Natsume turns back and finally gives the pastry shop a chance. Just then, one of his childhood friends from kindergarten shows up and steals Natsumi from his friends. At first, Natsumi doesn't seem to remember, but then the guy introduces himself as Shibata from his previous elementary school. Upon hearing the name, Natsumi has flashbacks about the moments he was bullied by the guy. For a minute there, Natsumi pretends not to know the guy, but when the guy finally tells him to follow him somewhere, Natsumi's curiosity gets the best of him, and he abandons his friends. On their way to Shibata's location, Shibata reminded Natsumi about the horrible things he faced back when he used to be bullied 
bullied for seeing Yukai. Natsume held his expression and told Shibata not to worry about the weird things he used to say back then. He then turns his back to go home, but then Shibata calls him back and asks him to help him out. Based on the pitiful look Natsume saw on Shibata's face, Natsume boarded a train with him to another part of town and continued following him until they got to a small bush. Shibata hides Natsume in the small bush near the road and tells Natsume to check out the lady who is coming, and tell him whether she is human or Yukai. Natsume could sense Shibata's sheepishness around the girl as she got closer to them. This makes him laugh as he realizes that the girl, Murasaki, is as normal as a girl can be. Shibata gets a little embarrassed at himself for being so flustered over a girl. Murasaki hears the laughter and stops by to say hi to Shibata, who is still hiding in the bush. She asks after Natsume and Shibata introduces him to her as his old friend. A few minutes later, Shibata and Natsume escort Murasaki to her house. On his way back home that day, Shibata thanks Natsume for helping him out and tells him not to tell anybody about this. Natsume laughs a little at the person who used to bully him. Suddenly, he remembers the shortcakes he was supposed to get for his foster dad and gets a little worried. Shibata, upon finding out about the news, helped him search through the town for any delicious shortcakes they could buy. After searching the entire town for ages, they finally find some delicious shortcakes to buy for Shigeru's birthday. When dinner time comes, Natsume and his entire family feast on the shortcakes as they celebrate Shigeru's birthday. After dinner, Natsume returns to his room to rest for the day. He drifts off into sleep a little while later and dreams about the Murasaki girl eating a human. Natsume jolts back to the real world and heads towards that same forest the next day with Madara. This time, he stumbled into a peaceful lake and heard crunching sounds near him. Just then, Murasaki drags him up into a tree and goes on top of him to smell his body. She commends just how delicious his body smells and inches closer to eating him. Before she does any harm to him, Madara attacks her in his cat form and chases her away. On their way back home, Madara explains the kind of yukai Murasaki is. She's one of those yukai things that would hide inside forest trees, and then change into beautiful humans just to lure an unsuspecting human and eat them up. Madara tells Natsumi that Shibata probably felt something off about the girl and that's why he came to Natsumi for help. After school one day, Natsumi traces Shibata to his high school and meets up with him. Then, the duo get to a vending machine to get some drinks and chill from the hot sun. Natsume asks for Shibata's story, and he narrates the first time he ever laid eyes on her. According to him, it was love at first sight as he found her sitting alone in the park with a sullen look on her beautiful face. He said nothing at first, but over the next couple of days, he kept running into her in that same park on his way home. On a rainy day, he decides to ask for her number and contact details. Sadly, Murasaki didn't give him at all. Shibata could sense from her gaze that she liked him. As such, he pressed on and continued going to meet her. During one of his meets, however, he felt an icy cold feeling in her hands and decided to cross-check her humanity. At this point, Natsume gets sad and breaks the sad truth to him. Murasaki wasn't human and Shibata would be doing himself some good by letting her go and moving on with his life. Shibata takes Natsume's advice the wrong way and gets angry over the sudden change of information. He calls Natsume a liar and runs away. While taking his bath that night, Natsume thinks about his next move only to find out Madara had been in the bathtub with him the entire time. After punishing Madara for his disrespect, Natsume gets out to dry his hair and talk about Shibata. The next day, Natsume tries to see Shibata again, but this time he hides himself from Natsume and tells two girls to chase and throw Natsume off his scent. Although Natsume knows Shibata's game, he respects his wish not to see him and heads back into the forest where the weird yukai is. There, Murasaki came out of hiding and attacked Natsume, who tried to discourage her from eating Shibata. Murasaki gets a little feisty and attacks Natsume, hoping to eat him up. Madara sees this happening and immediately transforms himself into his kitsune form to eat Murasaki and be done with her. Natsume Natsume, however, pulls Murasaki behind him and begs Madara not to eat her yet. Murasaki realizes just how much her own prey cares about her, so she flies up into the sky and flies away. Natsume and Madara follow her until she crashes into the ground. They get to the crash site and find Murasaki fading off into nothingness. Natsume asks her why she hasn't eaten Shibata yet, seeing as she'd had countless opportunities to do so. Completely drained of power, Murasaki tells Natsume that she blew her first chance to eat him as she was too weak to even do anything after transforming into a human. Her liking for him only seemed to grow every time he would come to visit her. Then one night, when she was too tired to change into her normal human form, she showed Shibata Shibata her hand and asked him to come another time as she wasn't feeling too well. Shibata respected her wishes and left. After her story, Murasaki gives Natsume a letter to deliver to Murasaki before fainting. Natsume runs as fast as he can to find Shibata and gives him Murasaki's letter. Upon reading the letter, Shibata still acts like a baby and condemns Natsume's kind words towards her. Natsume advises him to check the letter a little more, and he finally deciphers the real meaning. Almost immediately, Shibata rushes towards Murasaki 
and finds her waiting for him at the foot of a tree. She asks him to take her to the mountains like he's always promised, and Shibata holds her hand to take her there. On their way there, though, Murasaki disappears into thin air, leaving Shibata with a broken heart. Later on, Natsume brings Shibata a drink from the vending machine and cheers him up. The next day in school, Natsume writes his final midterm exam paper and goes out to see his friends in the hallway after he's done. Now that their exams are over, Nishimura and Kitamoto invite Natsume to go fishing with them. Sasada catches them planning something and tries to join them, but the boys grumble a little. She surprises them by showing the boys some tickets to an art museum a few miles away from their school. The boys try to cancel in on her, but now they have no choice but to tag along. It's summer, so the weather's hot and everyone needs to cool off. Anyways, after school that day, Natsume returns home and finds his foster mom staring at an old photo of herself and her friends. He asks her about it and she tells him her former classmates are organizing a school reunion, and she's a little scared of appearing too old for her people. Tuko gets a little flustered and recounts her nostalgic memories with her click back then. She wishes she could relive those wonderful moments as they count as one of the things she missed having as a kid. After seeing his foster mom get so flustered over nostalgic memories, Natsume gets a little envious and wishes he had such wonderful childhood memories. Not to worry though, as he still has time to make some wonderful memories in the art museum with his friends. Madara, after realizing there's going to be ramen, gets close to Natsume and begs him to let him tag along with him. Natsume eventually says yes to his request and starts getting ready for the big day. While he's at it, he recalls one of the weird experiences he had with a yukai back when he was still a kid. The yukai, who was also wearing a mask like any other yukai, lived on a tree with branches that grew over a popular pathway that kids passed to get to school. So, every morning, the yukai would try to scare a bunch of kids frolicking along the pathway as they trekked to their school. Sadly for her, the kids couldn't see her, so there was nothing to be scared of. This didn't discourage her, though, as the yukai continued trying her very best to scare the kids every morning, only to get ignored by most of them. One morning, however, she finds two kids bullying a blonde kid, aka younger Natsume, under the same tree, and gets disgusted by their insolence. She hit the tree and threw hairy worms at the kids to scare all of them away. While the other kids ran away, Natsume remained there and looked up at her before running away. Initially, the yukai thinks it's just a coincidence, but the next day, and the day after that, she she keeps on jump-scaring the poor kid. Oftentimes, Natsume would run away from her as she appeared scary like a monster. This went on until one day, the yukai noticed Natsume's absence and decided to go look for him. She found him sitting alone and overheard some kids bullying the crap out of the poor little kid, calling him a liar and an attention seeker for claiming to be able to see yukai. The yukai realizes just how sad life is for young Natsume and tries to cheer him up by startling him again. This time, however, Natsume stands his ground and talks to her for the first time. He asks her why she's always bent on scaring him, and the lady gives a sassy answer. After hearing what he wanted to hear, Natsume gets up and peacefully exits the playground he was at. The Lady Yukai gets a little confused as she's never seen him act that way before. Fast forward to reality, Natsume is seen on a train with his three friends, Sasada, Nishimura, and Kitamoto, as they travel to the art museum by train. He passes the area where he used to live, and recalls back to another childhood memory of his. That day was just another random day, and Natsumi was just given his uncle's long blue coat. That night, Natsumi smiled at the coat as it looked beautiful on him. Meanwhile, the yukai lady keeps trying to convince herself that she doesn't really care about the little boy. She waited on her tree until the next and found Natsume wearing his uncle's long blue coat as he trekked to school with his other friend. She waits for the perfect moment to catch Natsume and startles him to get a good laugh as usual. This time, however, Natsume and his friend fall into the puddle and get their clothes dirty. At this point, Natsume couldn't take it anymore, so he shouted at the yukai and told her to get lost. Surprised, the yukai retreated to the trees and waited for him to come the next day. The next day came and Natsume was nowhere to be found. Apparently, he stopped taking that path to school and would now take the longer route just to stay away from the horrible yukai always bullying him there. The yukai began to miss him so one day, she transformed into a cat and searched all day for Natsume. By evening time, she finds Natsume and gets hugged by the lonely boy who loves cats. The yukai felt at ease touching the boy's body and wished she could stay like that forever. She realizes just how bad Natsume feels being alone and decides to do something about it. A few days later, however, Natsume's first foster family came for his adoption, and they took him far away from her. Ever since that day, the yukai never saw Natsume again. She began to resent humans for being so cruel to one another, and would sometimes sit on her tree branch and watch lovers either break up or hurt each other. One night, she finds a lady condemning her husband and his disabled mother, and is so repulsed by the lady's terrible behavior that she decides to curse the human land. That night, she called Thunder and cursed that land. Then on other days, she'd scare kids just like normal and try to calm them down by appearing as a cat to them. On that present day, while she is busy thinking about the kid with a poignant wish, the grown Natsumi suddenly appears to her. He thanks her for being so kind to him back then, and apologizes for the way he treated her back then. The yukai gets down from her tree and hugs Natsumi with 
tears in her eyes. Natsume, after reuniting with the yukai, returns to his house and finds his foster mom, Tuko, cooking dinner for the family. He'd taken an excuse from his friends and alighted earlier during their trip just to go see the beautiful lady Yukai, who made his childhood worth remembering. On another random day, Natsumi goes out with Tanuma, but on their way back home, there's a heavy downpour, and Natsumi chooses to hide at a random house while they wait for the rain to stop. Minutes later, they hear sounds coming from the door behind them. Initially, Natsumi thinks they're being watched by a yukai, but soon after, Taki shows up at the door with Madara and says hi. Natsume and Tanuma are welcomed into Taki's beautiful old house and settle down for some tea. Natsume asks Taki how she got hold of Madara, and she says she found him wandering away in the heavy rain, so she thought it a good idea to take him into the house. After their tea break, Taki gives Natsumi and Tanuma a personal tour around the house and explains a few historical facts about the house. Apparently her grandfather grew up in the house and left it to her when he passed on. She continues showing them around and sighs when they approach the storeroom. Natsume asks her what the matter is, and Taki complains about the pain she'd have to pass through to clean the storeroom. Natsume and Tanuma decide to help her out, and Taki appreciates the help. They open the storeroom's front door and are shocked to find a wooden doll there. They get a little scared at first, but then they suck it up and begin cleaning the storeroom. While at it, Taki tells them a little about her grandpa. Although he couldn't see Yukai when he was younger, he still researched them every single day. Natsume and Tanuma wander off into the storeroom to find several interesting things about Taki's grandpa. At one point, Natsumi finds an inverted kappa drawing on the wall. He removes the painting and checks it out before he's called upon by Tanuma to check something. The duo get downstairs and find three weird kimonos staring at them. They get a little jump scared, but then again they get over it and continue working till they're done. After cleaning the entire storeroom, they all get hungry, and Taki urges them to let her prepare some yakisoba noodles. As they pass by the kimono, they find out one of them is missing, and Natsume wonders where the kimono could be. After their lunch break, Natsume excuses himself to check out other parts of the house. He enters a dark hallway and gets attacked by the missing kimono. The kimono pins Natsume down and strangles him to submission. Natsume manages to wrestle off the kimono to send it away. He then gets up and finds another miniature yukai spying on him. Once the yukai realizes he's been found, he tries to make a run for it. Natsume catches up to the yukai and finally captures him. The yukai asks for his name, but Natsume asks him to tell him about the kimono. The yukai tells him about the inverted kappa image that he took off the wall earlier and says it used to be a seal Shuichiro, Taki's grandpa, used to seal away an evil yukai. Moments after being sealed away, the evil yukai got his body torn apart and scattered all over the house. Now that he's been set free, the kimono is searching all over the house to find his body parts and become whole again. Hearing this, Natsume runs all around the house to find some of the body parts. He finds one of the evil yukai's legs under the house. He tries to take the leg, but then the evil kimono beats him to it and takes it before him. Taki and Tanima call Natsume to ask him why he's been so feisty lately. Natsume explains the legend of the evil kimono yukai to them and then hears some rumbling sounds in the ceiling. He leaves his friends and races to the first floor, with the miniature kimono on his shoulder, to find the kimono yukai. Sadly, he couldn't find the kimono there. Natsume keeps searching every room for signs of the kimono yukai or his body parts. The miniature yukai on his shoulder shows him a room where young Shuichiro used to stay and learn about yukai. Soon after, Tanuma and Taki find him in the same room and help him up to the ceiling where they hear another noise. Upon getting into the house ceiling, they find another body part there and think, they beat the monster to it this time. Sadly, that wasn't the case as the kimono gets past them and collects his other leg. Later that evening, two other yukai join Natsume and his friends chilling out on the sand in the yard. They begin to run their dirty mouth about Shinichiro, Taki's grandpa, and remind themselves just how bad Taki was crying over at her grandpa's funeral. Taki, who could sense but not hear them, asks Natsume to tell her what they were saying. Natsume tells her only the good parts and avoids the bad parts. After their outside session, Natsume and his friends head back inside the house to continue searching for the ghost. As they walked through the corridor, the yukai appeared from the ceiling again and abducted Natsume. Taki and Tanuma immediately spring into action as they notice Natsume's gone. Taki splits up with Tanuma to search for her grandpa's old diary, while Tanuma stays behind to search for his friend. He finds Madara along the way and picks him up to join Taki in another room. They find Taki trying to summon the yukai spirits around them into the circle so she can see them and ask for their help. Sadly for her, the yukai weren't available to help her. Eventually, Taki abandoned the help and went with Tanuma to find Natsume. Before joining them, Madara asks the yukai why they never showed their face to Taki, despite them being in the same room with her. The yukai tell him they didn't want to risk having anything to do with humans. After hearing this, Madara turns his back on them and follows Tanuma and Taki. In the meantime, Natsume wakes up in the backyard just in time to avoid his right hand being cut off by the angry yukai. Apparently, the yukai had trouble collecting his other hand, so he wanted to borrow Natsume's hand so he could use it to get his other hand. 
Thankfully, Madara showed up in time and fought the Yukai. The evil Yukai gracefully dodges all of Madara's attacks and hits Natsume to the ground. The fight goes on and on, until all the miniature Yukai get bored and work together to exorcise the evil Yukai altogether. Natsume borrows their memories and finds all the Yukai getting worried over Shinichiro when he gets sick. They even tried to heal him using a makeshift stethoscope they made earlier. Natsume is brought back to the real world moments later, and he wakes up to find his friends beside him. He checks around and finds Yukai saying their goodbyes. Taki thanks them for all the help they've rendered, and wishes them a good life in the other world. The miniature Yukais bow and disappear into thin air. After that, Natsume and his friends return to Shinchiro's house to continue their evening in peace. A few days later, Natsume and his cat visit a store to get some squid for Madara. After getting what he came for, Madara voraciously eats his squid on a staircase and drops it on the floor. He gets up to go get the squid, and leaves Natsume alone on the staircase. After he's gone, Natsume gets up and finds a weird woman coming close to him. She passes him by and smudges some blood on his body without even stopping by to say hi. After she's gone, Natsume feels the red substance on his shirt and realizes that it's blood. He begins to wonder where the blood came from and finds the bloody footsteps that are traced all the way back to a house. Natsume enters the house and finds dead Yukai there on the floor after having their blood drained from their bodies. He tries waking one of them, but then the intruder shows up from behind to take him out. Natsume is saved by a winged Yukai who carries him and takes him to the air. As they fly to another location, Natsume thanks her for her help and explains his predicament to her. When the Yukai found out he was a human, she dropped him and he landed on Madara. That night, the winged Yukai settles down with Natsume in his house and apologizes for what she did earlier. When asked what she was doing at the building, she reported to Natsumi that she was there to investigate the recent incidents that had been ravaging the Yukai in that area. Even after all her investigative research, she still couldn't find enough evidence to identify the exact same person. She then humbly asks for Natsume's help to identify the killer, but Natsume hesitates to offer his help. The winged Yukai retracts her request and tells him it's fine not to help before she leaves the house for her place. After she's gone, Madara commends Natsume for not jumping at her offer to help. Just then, Tuko calls Natsume and Madara down for dinner, and they head downstairs to eat. Before leaving the room, however, Madara makes a suggestion that could change how the winged Yukai viewed her investigation. Since they couldn't identify the Yukai stealing the blood, then maybe the attacker could be a human. Natsume gives this a second thought, and suddenly has an idea he'd like to carry out. The next day, he leaves the house with Madara and heads towards the forest, to ask every yukai if they've seen a human stealing yukai blood. When he gets to Akapa, he gets his answer. Apparently, someone dressed in a kimono has been seen stealing yukai blood all around town. On his way back home, Natsume passes near a guy with a scar on his forearm and asks Madara about it. Madara had a look of terror on his face, and he asked Natsume about the man's identity. Before he goes too far, Natsume rushes towards the man's direction and finds one of the talisman yukai, damaging the wings on the winged Yukai. Eventually, he jumps in with Madara and helps the Yukai avoid certain death. After dispelling the Yukai, the controller of the talisman, Matoba Seiji, shows his face and introduces himself as one of the key members of the Matoba Exorcist clan. Madara gives him a brief explanation of how dangerous the Matoba clan is, and Natsumi is amazed. Seiji remembers Natsumi from earlier and invites him for a chat. Just then, the winged Yukai shows up from behind and picks Natsumi up with her injured wings. While they're up in the air, Seiji sends his talismans towards them to distract the winged yukai so they fall and injure themselves even more. This works perfectly well as the winged yukai is incapacitated for a while and Natsume takes it to a serene place for it to rest up and regain its energy. A few minutes later, Matoba's yukai attack Natsume and pin him to a wall to capture him. Thankfully, Natori and his servant Hiragi were there to protect him. After chasing the Matoba clan away, Natsume thanks Natori and Hiragi as they begin taking care of the winged yukai for them. Natori asks Natsume if he would be available for a little investigation and Natsume succumbs to it. Later on, Natori and Natsume walk together to find out who and where the yukai was. On their way there, Natsume kept on talking about a young guy with an eye patch and long hair who could speak with yukai. Eventually, Natori splits up with Natsume and heads to the city. There, he finds Nanasi, who warns him about staying away from interfering in their business, especially now that their boss is in town. Natori thanks her for the advice and takes his leave. That night, Natsume goes to sleep and dreams about a yukai threatening to eat him. He wakes almost immediately and finds a man-made paper yukai sneaking up on him. Madara destroys the the Yukai and urges Natsumi to go back to sleep. The next day, Natsumi goes over to the abandoned building in Hiragi for Natori's location. She says he's been out for most of the night and would soon be back from his outing. Before he says too much, Natori gets back and takes Natsume to another village to investigate the Yukai a little bit further. After asking around and meeting Natori's fans, Natori takes himself, Natsume and Madara on an udon date. There, he asks the waitress there about the whereabouts of the guy with long hair and an eye patch. She tells them he's at Yado Inn, and Natori immediately heads towards the inn with Natsume. On getting there, 
Natori and Natsume checked in as the heavy rain had caused a landslide and damaged the road they'd be taking back home. After calling to confirm with his parents, Natsume settles into the inn with Madara and the rest. At one point in his stay, someone attacks him and threatens to end him if he doesn't do as she says. She drags him to a dark room, locks the door, and gets closer to suck his blood. Natsume manages to wrestle his way out and escapes to the corridor where he's taken by Seiji Matoba and his men. Meanwhile, Madara hitches a ride with Natori to find Seiji and the others. The innkeeper finds Natori holding a cat and tells him not to carry animals around the inn. Natori convinces the woman that he's holding a stuffed animal so she lets him go. Moving on, he continues discussing a few details about the Matoba clan and their history with Yukai. Natori eventually arrives at the special room he set aside for dealing with Seiji and his Yukai, only to find the seal entirely broken. He throws a fit and scolds Madara for being so reckless and destroying the precious seal. He gets into the room to search for Natsume and finds out he's nowhere to be found. Natsume, on the other hand, wakes up and finds himself bound by cursed paper talismans in a room with Seiji and his yukai. Before engaging him in any discussion, Seiji tells him about the ritual they were harvesting yukai blood for. Apparently, the Matoba clan had taken a sudden interest in a certain yukai residing somewhere in the mountains, and were intent on catching it. To do that, however, they will need the blood of innocent yukais to complete a certain awakening ritual so the monster can get back to his normal self and capture it. Natsume condemns his methods, and Matoba shows him the eye patch on his left eye and how he got it there. Before he can continue, someone calls Seiji outside the room, and he leaves Natsume in his yukai servant's hands. Before leaving, though, Matoba forbids Natsume from ever trying to leave the room, or else, he risks having his life taken away from him. Natsume ignores his warnings and ends up escaping. After slipping past Matoba's hands, Natsume heads into the forest to hide from Matoba's yukai. Elsewhere, the winged yukai wakes up after being asleep for days and gets up to search for Natsume. Hiragi pulls her back and urges her to rest up and regain her strength while Natori and the others do the hard work. In the meantime, Natori and Madara find out the person they were after just checked out of the inn. Madara gets so pissed at Natori that he fights him right in the lobby. As they tear each other's face is out, they catch a glimpse of a slender woman with black hair running just past them in the heavy rain outside. Natori and Madara stop fighting for a little while, and they try to sense where they went. Meanwhile, Natsume tries to sense the location of the human yukai that smudged his body with blood earlier. He catches onto her scent and beats down Matoba's yukai before following the scent to its source. Upon reaching the source, Natsume stands and looks around for the yukai. Just then, he's pulled through a hole and dragged into an underground cave. There he finds the human that's been harvesting the blood all along and is attacked by her. Madara and Natori arrive just in time for them to stop Natsume from getting his face ripped out of his body by the woman. She pins Natori and Natsume to the body of the yukai she's been trying to revive and reveals the magic circle around the yukai and the jars containing the blood she's harvested over the past few weeks. The woman complains about Matoba for taking away the only yukai that gave a damn about her. Natsume thinks back and realizes she was talking to the other winged yukai who died a few weeks ago. Natori tells her to quit trying to get revenge against a clan as powerful as the Matoba clan, but the woman doesn't listen to them. Shortly afterwards, Matoba and his yukai find the underground cave and attack them. As they struggle to keep themselves away from the yukai, Matoba shoots several arrows at Natsume, Madara, who's in his kitsune form, and Natori. Natori dodges the arrows, but then again, Natsume and Madara aren't so lucky. Matoba gloats about his prowess to Natsume and Natori and ends up pissing Madara off. He gets up with red eyes and wounds on his neck and threatens to end Matoba if he doesn't repent and apologize for his wrongdoing. Natsume begs Madara to keep his anger in check to avoid opening his wounds. Madara takes one final look at Natsume and changes back to his lucky cat form. Just then, the lady begins the ritual chants and feeds the sleeping yukai the blood he needs to return to life. Moments after sucking on the blood, the yukai gets back to life and emits poisonous gases from his mouth. The lady introduces herself as the yukai's savior and commands it to attack Matoba. As expected, the yukai ends up hitting her and sending her flying several meters back. Natsume and Natori quickly carried her and Madara who fell unconscious to safety. Matoba decides the yukai is unsuitable for use and leaves the cave to join Nanasi outside, while Natsume and Natori go back inside to take care of the yukai there. As they perform the ritual to seal the yukai inside a ceiling pot, Matoba has a brief discussion with Nanase, telling her he's now interested in Natsume. Natsume and his cat. He returns to the cave and finds the yukai getting himself ready to eat Natsume. He takes out an arrow from his backpack and exercises the yukai before taking his leave. After he's gone, the lady tries to gather the ashes of her instrument of revenge to start over. All Natori and Natsume could do was look at her in pity and wish her the best of luck. As for Matoba and Nanase, 
they end up escaping the Lady's revenge. Soon after, Natsumi and Natori also head outside the cave to return to their homes. On their way home, however, they run into Hiragi and apologize to her for causing her harm in the first place. Natsumi gets worried about the Matoba clan's sudden interest in him and his cat. Thankfully, he realizes he has strong people like Natori and Hiragi to protect him always. Meanwhile, the little fox can be seen having fun catching some fish in the river near his forest. His bullies sneak up behind him to steal some fish, but then the little fox finds them and stands up to them to get his fish back. To their surprise, the little fox actually chases them away and gets to go home with all his fish. Over breakfast, Natsumi gets invited by Shigeru on a trip to the kiln near the summer resort to attend a pottery class. Natsumi asks Tuko if it'll be fine for him to go. Thankfully, Tuko permitted him to go out with his foster dad. That night, Natsume wakes up to find Madara groaning in pain from the cursed arrow wounds he sustained from Matoba. He wakes up to check up on him, but then Madara denies ever feeling any pain. Nonetheless, Natsume placed a band-aid on his wound and urged him to go to sleep. Before they can do that, Hinoe, the friendly but sassy Yukai, shows up to check up on her favorite human. She opens Madara's band-aid, notices the deep wound on his back, and tells Natsume to be there for him, as the next couple of days are going to be rough for him. Natsume gets sad because he's to follow Shigeru to the kiln the following day, and he initially didn't want to take Madara with him. Now that he's heard such news, he has no choice but to cancel the trip. Hinoi, after finding out where he's going, tells him to take Madara along with him and search for a yukai herb called Oborosu, which is known to grow on the bodies of century-old trees. If he can apply some of Madara's wounds, then he should be good to go. Natsume changes his mind and decides to go with Madara. Just then, the lights come on and Natsume finds his room filled with yukai there to visit Madara. Without any regard for Natsume's room, the yukai settle in and have a good time with Madara. Very early the next day, Shigeru heads out as early as possible with Natsume to the train station. After getting some refreshments, the duo board a train heading straight to the kiln area. On their way there, the foster father and son both discuss random things, and Natsumi gets to have a wide view of nature. At that instant, the little fox finds a watch in the midst of the rubble in the forest and puts it on. Just then, he hears the honk from a train and climbs over a rock to check the train coming. Seconds later, the stone deity takes a humanoid form and introduces himself to the little fox. When asked who he was going to see at the train station, the little fox tells him about Natsume, his friend. The stone deity settles down and notices the watch on the little fox's hands. He explains the function of the watch to the little fox, telling him that humans use it to measure time. The little fox pays him no attention as he sees Natsume coming out of the train. He rushes down the rock and hides in the shrubs near a pathway Natsume and Shigeru later take. Upon finding that Shigeru was with him, the little fox decides not to show his face. He follows Natsume and Shigeru to the pottery school and tries to signal Natsume with his watch. Before Natsume could get his message, the two bullies showed up again to bully him. This time, the little fox gets pissed and chases them away after collecting his watch. He then checks out the kiln and remembers how hot that room used to get. The little fox gets even more scared as he realizes he may not be able to get close to Natsume in due time. He waits till night and throws stones at random windows, hoping Natsume will open one of them and say hi. In the meantime, Natsume and Shigeru bathe each other while the little fox keeps on wondering what Natsume is there for. He sleeps worried and wakes up very early the next day only to see the watch working. Back at the pottery school, Natsume begins his pottery lessons and gets to play with some of the kids there while the little fox watches from the shrubs nearby. When he gets tired of seeing Natsume happy, he runs back to the rock and sits there to sulk. The stone deity appears to him and warns him to stay away from Natsume so he doesn't get hurt later on. Even so, the little fox still didn't understand what the stone deity was telling him. However, the stone deity told him to respect the little time humans have and just try to live his life like a normal beast of the earth. The little fox asks the stone deity about his own time, and the deity tells him he's been stuck on the rock since the beginning of time. The day he leaves the rock is the day he disappears. Elsewhere, Natsume and Shigeru sightsee the potters put their pieces in the kiln. After witnessing the act, Natsume excuses himself to go exploring the forest. On his way there, he finds the two bullies and asks after the little fox. They complain to him about the harshness of the little fox and hope he does something about him. Natsume, who knows they've been bullying the poor fox again, ignores them and keeps moving. The two bullies take their leave and find the little fox wandering about. The fox immediately gets into attack formation, but the bullies tell him about Natsume's visit and the herb he was looking for. The little fox tried to see Natsume face to face but couldn't, as Natsume called back to the pottery school. By this time, the little fox gets determined to find out where the Oborosu herb is growing, so he sets out and searches nearly half the entire forest to find it. After his second class, Natsumi finds his cat on the roof of the pottery school and rushes over there to call him down. Madara tells him about the little fox roaming the forest and tells Natsumi the direction he went. 
There's a heavy downpour that night, and Natsume races through the forest to find the little fox. The little fox, on the other hand, is seen trying to climb a mountain after finding the Oborosu plant growing on it. Lightning strikes the tree and it falls towards his direction. Thankfully, the stone deity saved him and the little fox was able to get the herbs Natsume needed. Moments later, Natsume is reunited with the little fox who's very happy to see him. He shows him the new watch he found and also gives him the herbs. Then, he tells Natsume everything the stone deity told him and says his goodbyes. Before leaving for town the next day, Natsume makes a ceramic plate with the fox's face on it and places it in an abandoned building before he leaves. The little fox finds out about the ware and is grateful to Natsume for the thought. A few days after returning from the pottery school, Natsume's friends, Kitamoto and Nishimura, are on their way to school, discussing the cultural festival coming up, when they suddenly find Natsume battling something invisible on the bridge he's on. They tried calling him, but Natsume seemed too distracted over whatever it was he was fighting. Soon after, Natsume falls off the bridge into the river below it. At this point, Nishimura and Kitamoto are really scared for his life. They instinctively jumped into the water and pulled their dear friend out. Moments after he's pulled out, Natsume checks the bridge to make sure the yukai he was fighting earlier is already gone. Thankfully, the yukai was no longer there, and Natsume heaved a sigh of relief. To make it up to his friends for ruining their uniforms, Natsume takes them to his house so they can clean themselves up. Upon getting to his place, Tuko welcomes the boys and helps them clean up. Natsumi apologizes to Tuko for troubling her, but she is just happy to see him doing troublesome things with his friends. That evening, Natsumi's friends finish putting on their clothes and head back home after waving Natsumi goodbye. That night, while petting Madara who was sleeping, Natsumi notices a rock walking out of his bag. At first, he thinks nothing of the rock, but when the rock makes a menacing face to him, he gets scared. Hino shows up just in time to visit Madara and kicks the rock out the window. Natsumi makes a few comments about her flip-flops, but Hinoi asks to see Madara. She diagnoses him and tells Natsume just how fast Madara Madara is recovering. Moments later, two other yukai show up to check up on Madara. In the end, Natsumi's room becomes a common room for drunk yukais who are there to see Madara. Before he gets any sleep, Hinoe warns Natsumi to be very careful about the rock they saw earlier, and Natsumi thanks her for the help. The following day in school, while in a meeting with his classmates over their cultural festival planning, Natsumi looks out his window and finds a student staring at something in the front yard. His classmates call him back to the meeting and assign him a job to watch over the stalls on their cultural day. Taki gets a good laugh after the meeting as she never thought of Natsume to be a security-oriented person. She turns to Tanuma and asks him what they were doing in their class. Tanuma smiles and tells her he'll be doing a play with other peers and Taki gets very excited. As for Taki, they'd be doing a cross-dressing show. Taki gets a little serious and makes her friends promise to enjoy the cultural fest that year. Soon, Nishimura and Kitamoto catch Natsume getting close to Taki. Nishimura gets jealous and scolds Natsume for trying to steal his girlfriend. After their brief meeting outside, Natsume follows his other two friends inside to discuss their plans for the cultural fest. They all wish each other a good time as they engage in the cultural fest. Natsume laughs with them and climbs up the stairs only to find red paint scattered all over the halfway. Initially, he thinks it's yukai blood, but thankfully, a student comes up and clears his doubts. Natsumi sighs and wonders what he'd have done if that was Yukai's blood. He forgets about the red paint and keeps on moving. The girl staring in the yard earlier follows Natsume till he's alone in the hallway. Then she comes out of her hiding place, looking possessed, and hands the rock with a weird face over to Natsume for safekeeping before running away. Natsume hides himself in a dark room and ponders what to do now that he has such a piece in his hands. Before he knows it, the rock comes to life and Natsume throws it away. Just then, a large Yukai attacks him in the room and Natsume lets out a scream. Sasada, who was nearby, hears the sound and comes to check up on Natsume. On seeing Sasada, the yukai runs away and Natsume is saved. After school, Hino visits Natsume to talk about the rock that attacked him. Apparently, the rock yukai was just saved from his seal in the river and is out to possess anybody he thinks is strong enough to house him. Hino warns him not to let his guard down as the rock yukai can sense weaknesses in someone's heart and take advantage. Natsume thanks her again for the help and sees her off. After she's gone, Natsume begins to wonder if the rock yukai was after the Book of Friends. With Madara still weak, and recovering from his wounds, Natsume knows he has to be very careful and avoid getting into trouble. As he pets the cat, he thinks about the festival and wishes nothing bad had happened by that time. A while later, both Nishimura and Kitamoto show up to check up on Natsume. He gets outside and gets a little worried that the rock Yukai possessed is one of them. On the contrary, Nishimura and Kitamoto were there to really check up on him. They've noticed his pale expression since he was given such a job and wanted to know if he's really fine with it. Thankfully, he's fine with it, and they all head back home. That night, Madara wakes up to see Natsume sobbing gently over how fortunate he is to have such great friends with him. The next day in school, Natsume and one other guy are given aprons to wear during the cultural day. A day before D-Day comes, Natsume keeps his guard up and watches out for any yukai that may attack him at the party. His friends call him to have some fun, and Natsume joins them to get his aprons ready. 
That evening, they finished setting up the scenery for the cultural day before they call it a day. The following day was cultural day, and everybody, including Natsume, seemed to be having a good time. Natsume gets into his girly apron and stands in front of his stall to attract some customers. Taki takes a few pictures of him and all the girls gather around him to buy some food. When the attention gets too much for Natsume to bear, he goes to a dark room to chill out from the stress. There, the rock Yukai possessed that same girl and came in to ask about his secret again. This time, Natsume pushes the girl again and the Yukai asks him why he keeps secrets from his friends. Natsume chases after the girl all through the corridor and crashes into her at the end of the hallway. Natsume gets knocked out and the rock Yukai comes out of the girl's body to take over Natsume's body. Thankfully, Madara came just in time to banish the awful spirit and save his student. Nishimura and Kitamoto rush towards Natsume to confirm if he's alright. Meanwhile, Natsume remembers fond memories of himself and his friends when he was taught how to ride a bike. He wakes up a few hours later and finds himself in the school's clinic with Madara sitting over him and watching him sleep. He thanks his master for taking care of him and soon his friends show up to check up on him. They all frolic around Natsume and get to play with Madara later on. Eventually, Natsume is discharged and he heads home to play around with his friends. Later that night, there's a thunderstorm, and Madara keeps shouting at the lightning strikes outside. Natsume, who's having a hard time doing his homework, abandons it and goes to sleep. The following day, Madara takes Natsume out on a walk to find a tree that was struck by lightning the previous night. Natsume tirelessly follows the fat cat all around until the scent from the tree becomes stronger. Suddenly, Madara races into some shrubs and gets lost. Natsume sighs and follows the same path Madara followed earlier. Just then, he stops and looks at a tree's branches after hearing some voices over there. Suddenly, he spots something shiny and squints his eyes to make out what the thing is. Sadly for him, the yukai handling the shiny thing drops it and it falls on Natsume's right eye. Natsume rubbed his eyes for a few seconds before attending to Tanama who was just passing by. When asked where he was going, Tanama tells Natsume he's just passing by and is trying to reach his house. Moving on, he tells Natsume about the voices he's been hearing all day long and says it sounded like the owner was searching for something. Just then, something comes at them at high speed and crashes into Tanuma, who blocked its path. After getting hit by the thing that seemed to be a gush of wind, Tanuma returns to normal and assures Natsume that he's fine. There's an awkward silence between both boys, and Madara breaks it after he arrives heavily drunk on sake. Natsume walks up to his cat and picks it up to scold him. Tanuma chuckles at the two creatures arguing and then takes his leave. On his way back home, he gets a very bad headache that only seems to last a second. Tanuma eventually thinks nothing of it and gets back home safely. The next day in school, Taki approaches Natsume to give him some of the pictures she took of him and Tanuma during the cultural day. Upon receiving the pictures, Natsume thanks her and promises to give Tanuma his photos in due time. After he meets with Taki, Natsume heads over to Tanuma's class and finds out he was absent from school that day. After school, Natsume visits Tanuma's house and finds his dad instead. The dad stops Natsume at the front door and collects the gift he had for his son, Tanuma. Natsume politely takes his leaves and argues with Madara on his way back home. The next day in school, Natsume finds Tanuma in school and calls him. Tanuma, however, acted very strange that day and asked for some space from Natsume. Confused, Natsume tried his very best to avoid seeing Tanuma. One time while he was walking along the hallway, he heard a glass shatter in the corridor and found a teacher fussing about it. He checks around and finds a yukai running away. Turns out the yukai was the one who broke the mirror and now he was trying to get away with it. Natsume abandons his search for the yukai and heads back home after school that day, hoping Tanuma will recover from his cold soon. Over the next three days, Tanuma was still the same if not worse. Natsume kept trying to get close to him but Tanuma would only avoid him. One time he finds Tanuma scratching the ground outside the school premises and runs over to check up on him. On getting there, Tanuma is nowhere to be found. Before he could make any conclusions on this absurd behavior, a long, black, and slender yukai attacked him. Natsume prepares to defend himself, but then he feels a sharp pain in his right eye and falls to the ground. The yukai, who seemed to be holding a hammer, slams it at Natsume, who quickly dodges it. At that time, Tanuma gets his body back and struggles to retain his memory of the last five minutes. He suddenly hears Natsume shouting somewhere and rushes over to check up on him. On getting there, he finds Natsume hurting on the floor and confirms that he's fine. Natsume, on the other hand, holds Tanuma and asks for an explanation for his weird behavior. Tanuma tells him about the memory gaps he's been experiencing ever since he was hit by the gush of wind earlier. After hearing all he had to say, Natsume promises to do something about it, and Tanuma thanks him. Taki finds Madara roaming the school grounds and plays with him again. Meanwhile, Tanuma and Natsume hear glass shattering in a nearby room and rush to check it out carefully. Natsume checks the room classroom first and finds the slender yukai and his hammer staring at a mirror. Upon seeing them, the slender man bails, leaving Natsume and Tanuma to check out the crime scene. While they check the broken mirrors, 
Natsume's eyes react to the mirror, and he gets another tingling feeling. However, the pain vanishes after Natsume picks up a mirror fragment from the shards. Natsume turns back to check up on Tanuma and finds his body completely taken over. The yukai who possessed him back then had taken over his body and was demanding her mirror back. She gets a little violent until Natsume slaps her back to her senses. The lady tells him her story. Apparently, she was on her way to tend to a sick friend when lightning struck her and broke her magic mirror that same night. The lady says she slept gently and woke up the next morning to find her mirror shattered. To search and assemble the missing pieces, she possessed Tanuma so she could use his body to search for the mirror. As for Natsume's painful eye, she tells him it's just the mirror's way of identifying when someone strong is around. When the entire mirror fragments are fully gathered and put back together, then Natsume's pain should be gone. Once she's done speaking, she tries to steal Natsume's right eye. Just then, Madara and Taki show up to distract her. Almost immediately, the spirit gets back to Tanuma's body and threatens to do him more harm if Natsumi doesn't help her find her mirror. Madara gets pissed and tries to exercise her with his light. Sadly, that doesn't work and Madara knows they now have no choice but to help the spirit. Natsumi checks Tanuma and is relieved to find out he's still in one piece. Before granting his body back to him, the spirit tells Natsumi to find her mirror quickly so he can have his life and friends back. Shortly afterwards, Tanuma regains his bodily functions and plans a search and rescue mission with his friends to find the missing mirror. Up next, the trio get to the schoolyard and start digging from there till they find the second mirror shard. Natsume's eye pain relieves him as they fit the two shards together. Although Taki's pretty much confused, she tags along with the boys and helps them search for the other shards. After a whole day of digging, Taki splits up and leaves Natsume and Tanuma to head back home together. On their way home, Tanuma tells Natsume about the importance of the mirror to the yukai possessing him. Apparently, the lady wanted to use the mirror's healing properties to heal her sick friend or something. Either way, the two of them fail to notice the slender yukai with a hammer who's been following them since they left school. To prevent any more sudden attacks on Tanuma and his house, Natsumi decided to move in and live with him in the meantime. One day over a chestnut snack, Natsumi shows Tanima the mirror fragments they found, and Tanima compliments his power. Since Tanima's dad was out on a job, the spirit could take over Tanima's body anytime it liked. She takes over Tanima's body and forbids Natsume from playing with the mirror. Natsume blows some air on the mirror and some of the shards end up in his eyes. Natsume screams in pain and the lady warns him not to touch the mirror again. By nightfall, Tanima asks Natsume how he normally feels when he's suddenly being asked to do something by Yukai. Natsume tells him it's a pretty normal feeling too before going to sleep. Minutes after closing his eyes, Natsume barges into the dream of the Yukai possessing Tanuma. In this dream, he could see the lady getting chased away by the same friend she wanted to save with the mirror. He wakes up and finds Tanuma sitting up. The lady speaks through Tanuma and asks Natsume why he would do something as disrespectful as barge into her dream like that. Natsume ignores her accusations and asks her what she really needs the mirror for. The lady narrates her sad story to him. From the looks of things, the lady has been searching for a way to cure the incurable disease her dear yukai friend has. She went from shaman to shaman until she finally heard about the magic mirror from a tree spirit. The tree spirit told her back then, to go to the mountain that always snows and retrieve the magic mirrors known to be guarded by evil yukai. Without giving it a second thought, the yukai lady heads climb through the blizzard, ignoring the eerie voices of the evil yukai telling her to give up, and finally reaches the mountain's summit. There, she found a small house and opened it only to find out the mirror wasn't there. The yukai there made fun of her for being so dense, but then again, the deities were not yet through with her. The blizzard stopped and the sun started to rise. Suddenly, the mirror, which appeared invisible to the lady's eyes, becomes visible. The lady carried the mirror and went back to find her friend only to find out he was nowhere to be found. After telling him her story, she returns all motor functions to Tanima, the real owner of the body. Moments after that happens, Natsume and Tanima hear a weird sound in one of the temple's corridors. They immediately get down from the bed and head to the corridor to find out the source of the sound. Natsume finds some weird footsteps and urges Tanuma, who can't see anything, to follow in his footsteps. At one point, the lady feels bad for Tanuma and allows him to see the footsteps of the yukai. On seeing them, Tanuma gets a little scared of the steps and traces them to a room. He joins Natsume who was spying on the slender yukai and gets scared at the same time when the slender dude looks at them. In the blink of an eye, the slender yukai attack Natsume and Tanuma to get the fragment of the mirror they have with them. Tanuma lets the yukai woman take over his body so she can finally banish the slender yukai from the house. Well, this works just fine as the slender yukai runs for dear life after realizing just how bright the yukai's light is. After banishing the slender yukai, Tanuma collapses from exhaustion and Natsumi blames the lady yukai for this. In her defense, the lady yukai speaks up and accuses Natsumi of keeping Tanuma in the dark for so long, leaving only himself to see the wonderful and horrible things yukai had to offer. She relates Natsumi to her friend who kept his sickness a huge secret from her for so long, 
and just wishes she could get her mirror back and find her friend before he leaves her for good. Natsume sees the tears in the Lady Yukai's eyes and feels sorry for her. Madara shows up seconds later and blames the Lady Yukai for banishing the slender Yukai before he can get a good read. Natsume smiles and carries his cat to thank him for all he's doing. Then he asks Madara to carry Tanuma back to his bed while he takes care of the broken glass. The next morning at school, Taki finds both Natsume and Tanuma tired from the previous night's troubles. She feels sorry for the trouble they had to pass through and gives them the talisman she made for them the previous night. Natsume thanks her for the awesome gift, and also apologizes for making her pass through such stress to make something like that for them. She asks about Madara and Natsume tells her he's outside the school's compound to search for the fragments. Shortly afterwards, Natsume, Tanuma, and Taki search all over the school for mirror fragments. At one point in their search, Tanuma borrows the Lady Yukai's eyes again to see the little Yukai run around the school's hallway. Soon, Natsume and Taki meet up with him and they continue their search until they get tired. After checking all the mirrors in the school, they decide to check the pool. There, they find some fragments in the water and collect them to keep making the mirror. After wiping themselves dry, Natsume and Tanuma take some time off to talk about a few more things. A few minutes later, Madara shows up with the other part of the mirror and presents it to them. He boasts a little about having to do all the work to find such a large chunk of the mirror in such a short time. But then again, Natsume and Tanuma both know he slaved the other Yukai into finding the mirrors for him. The other mirror fragments attach themselves to the chunk and become whole again. The Lady Yukai comes out of Tanama's body to take the mirror, but then the Slender Man attacks them. Natsume takes a hit to the head for the Lady Yukai and buys her enough time to activate the mirror's powers. After activating them, she uses the power of the mirror to dispel the illness that is called the Slender Yukai before going over to check up on Natsume. After thanking him one final time for helping her with her mirror, she takes her leave and disappears into her own world. Natsume gets back up and looks up at the sky as the Lady Yukai gives one final piece of advice before vanishing into thin air. After she's gone, Tanuma tells Natsume about some of the conversations he had with the Lady Yukai. For once, Tanuma could actually understand what Natsume was going through all this time. He was forced to see Yukai and deal with them. The next day, Natsume and his boys take a time out from school during break time to eat on their school roof. As they munch and steal Natsume's lunch, Nishimura gets curious and asks Natsume about his experience in middle school. Now Kitamoto knows this is a sensitive question for Natsume, so he scolds Nishimura for asking such delirious questions. Natsume laughs and admits that he was a little too shy for people to like him back then. Now that he's mature and knows what he wants, he's just glad to have the time of his life with his foster parents and friends. Nishimura and Kitamoto both give Natsume puzzled looks as they realize just how mature their friend's thinking actually is. After school that day, Natsume heads back home and finds Tuko cooking dinner. He gives her his lunch plates for her to wash and collects a plate of pudding from her. Natsume collects the pudding and heads over to his room to eat it alone. While at it, a yukai opens Natsume's room window and pins him to his room floor. Thankfully, Madara came at the right time to banish the yukai with his white light. He finds Natsume lying tired on the ground and rushes downstairs to call his foster mother. Soon enough, Tuko checks his temperature and finds out he has a fever. She quickly puts a cold towel over his head and leaves Natsume with his cat. Hours later, Natsume wakes up in the middle of the night and searches the house for Madara. Coincidentally, he finds another yukai in a corner of one of his rooms and listens to the horrible thing the yukai had to say. When things become too scary for him, Natsume jolts out of his sleep and wakes Madara up. He calms himself down and goes back to sleep only to have another dream again. In this dream, Natsume relives one of his memories, but this time he finds himself in a forest being chased by a big-headed yukai. With nowhere else to go, Natsume stands under a weird tree and listens to the yukai voice calling him to climb up the tree. Upon climbing, the yukai chasing him loses track of him and continues doing his thing. After he's gone, Natsume faces the yukai, who appears to be the yukai that attacked him in the present day and thanks her. The yukai tells him a few random things before leaving him to do his thing. After the discussion, Natsume gets down the tree and heads back to the foster house where he was staying at the time. There, he finds a note from his foster mom at the time, telling him she's gone to buy groceries. Natsumi finds the window pane open and goes over to close it. Suddenly, a little yukai enters the house and trashes the place. Natsumi does his best to keep the yukai out of the house, but when the foster mom and her son come from their grocery run, they misunderstand the situation and think Natsume is just being weird again. The foster mom then asked Natsume what the matter was, but Natsume had nothing to say to her. That night, Natsume overheard the foster parents talking about him and left the house to go for a late night run. On his way, Natsume keeps thinking about the loneliness he feels at that house. He feels a little cold and stops to catch his breath. Just then, 
Tuko approached him for the first time and introduced herself as a distant relative to his dad. Natsume tells her he's out on a late night walk and nothing more. However, Tuko begged him to go back home so he wouldn't catch a cold. Natsume obliged and headed back home. On his way to school the next day, Natsume finds himself sitting with the yukai from earlier. The yukai appreciates his loneliness, but then Natsume asks if he can stop seeing yukai. The yukai sadly tells him there's no way for that to happen, and Natsume takes his leave. On his way back home from school, he bumps into Tuko again, who invites him to come live with them. Although they live in the countryside, she and her husband, Shigeru, are happy together and would welcome him warmly to their house. Natsume, after hearing her kind invitation, gets a little skeptical and decides to give her request some thought. He considers going over to live for them, but then again they don't really know him, so there's no saying what awaits him there. That same evening, the yukai that's been following him ever since approaches him and tries to take advantage of the loneliness Natsume felt to pull him to her side. Natsume rejects her offer and runs back home. In the middle of the night, Natsume hears something at his front door and goes to check it out. Thankfully, there's nothing out of the ordinary lurking behind the door. Natsume goes back to sleep, but then, the next day he becomes super cautious and tries his very best to dodge the lady. That afternoon, he disguises himself and approaches two yukai spectating the sunset and asks them if they know of any special instrument they can use to seal yukai. The two yukai are convinced Natsume's a yukai, so they tell him about the location of the well the humans use to seal off evil yukai. Natsume acknowledges the information and thanks them for the help. Just then, one of them gets a human scent from Natsumi and calls the others to come eat him up. Natsumi bails out and crashes into a tree only to wake up a few hours later with the scary yukai in front of him. The yukai asks him one more time to turn his back on humans and follow her to her place. Natsumi breaks down and tells the yukai just how bad things may get for his current foster family if they find out he's missing. The yukai gives him an ultimatum to come back for him, and Natsume returns to town. His foster brother catches him thinking on a bench outside the city and escorts him back to the house. Upon arriving at the house, he overhears his foster parents talking about Shigeru and Tuko, who came over earlier to talk about adopting Natsumi. Natsumi knows he has to do something about the yukai plaguing him quickly, so he rushes back to the forest to search for the yukai. However, he finds two yukai and asks them to tell him where the yukai went. Eventually, Natsumi finds out where the yukai went and lures it towards the location of the seal. The yukai blindly attacked Natsumi and fell into the pit in front of Natsumi. Trapped and unable to get out, the yukai struggles to find footing inside the pit. Natsumi immediately grabs the cover of the seal, activates it, and permanently seals the yukai inside its pit. The effect of the seal sent Natsumi flying several meters into the sky and getting injured so he's bedridden in the hospital for several weeks. When he does wake up, however, he finds Shigeru and Tuko next to him. Natsume gets up with the wound on his head and asks to stay with Shigeru and Tuko. By the end of the dream, Natsume starts crying. The yukai showed up to take over Natsume again, but then Madara took care of it. Natsume wakes up to find the yukai entirely destroyed by Madara and pets his bodyguard for coming through for him again. Apparently, the seal may have been broken by construction work or something. Natsume thanks Madara for helping him out and getting over his fever. The next day, Natsume returns turns to his normal life and goes to school like always to do his midterm exam. On the night before his final midterm exams, Natsumi spends his entire night remembering yukai names and returning them to them. So he barely had any sleep and was up early the following morning to do his midterm test. After the final test, Natsumi gives everyone a sullen look, almost as if he flunked the test. Nishimura and Sasada show up to cheer him up, and they do a pretty good job doing that. In the end, Natsumi and his friends help tidy up the classroom for the next semester. Shortly afterwards, Tanama and Kitamoto arrive to discuss a few things with Natsumi and the other two boys. Sasada makes a few derogatory comments about the boys and ends up teasing them. By evening time, Natsumi and his friends all gather around in a classroom to discuss their next outing now that school's over. Everybody makes their suggestions, but eventually, they can't conclude. Nevertheless, they still get to talk about the various outdoor children's games they got to play when they were kids. During their discussion, Sasada brings up Shadow Tag as a game she used to play as a kid back then. She looks at Natsumi and asks him if he knows about the game. Natsumi recalls the sad moments back when he could only watch the other kids play the Shadow Tag game. Being the weird child he was, most kids never really wanted to play with him. Natsume forgoes the pain the past causes him and continues moving on with his friends. When it gets late, they all leave the classroom to walk home together. Sasada stops them at one point and takes group photos of all of them. While she's at it, she asks a lot about their future ambitions after school. Natsume and Tanima think about the horrible jobs they may settle for after high school and decide not to give it too much thought. Natsume gets home and joins his mom in the kitchen to taste test the shrimp tempura she is cooking. Shigeru arrives at that instant and steals his wife from Natsume. Natsume leaves husband and wife for his room and is shocked at the crowd he finds there. 
there. Apparently, several yukai from the forest had gathered there to inform Natsume about a party they'd be holding in Natsume's honor. They urged Natsume to think of this as a thank you party from the yukai he's ever helped. Every yukai at the party will be obliged to help Natsume when the time comes, and there will be lots of sake and refreshments for Natsume to never get bored. After explaining the details, they wait quietly for Natsume's answers. Natsume rejects their invites and tells them not to depend on his attendance. To convince him to come, the yukai gather around him and tease him only for them to get hit on the head and sent their merry way. On his way to school the following day, Natsume and Madara run into Taki, drawing her magic circles on the road. Taki rushes towards Madara and picks him up like a pickle. Shortly afterwards, Natsume walks with Taki and asks her why she is drawing circles on the road. Taki tells him she's just eager to learn all her grandpa's spells. She doesn't want her grandfather's beliefs to just escape her like that. Natsume smiles at her and hopes for the best for her. Just then, a yukai shows up and asks Natsume to return his name. Natsume says his goodbyes to Taki, takes out his book of friends, and returns the yukai's name to him. In school, Natsume finds a weird rope and tries to hold it. Suddenly, the rope wraps around his hands and the yukai controlling it drags Natsume to the forest. Before he could get gather his thoughts, other yukai showed up and took Natsumi to the party location. There, Natsumi finds almost a dozen yukai waiting to surprise him. They all gather around him and sing appraisal yukai songs for Natsume. While at it, one of the yukai asks Natsumi to choose a game they can all play. Natsume thinks for a few seconds and suggests they all play Shadow Tag. The yukai seem to be interested, but then again, they don't know the rules. Natsume spells out the rules for all of them and starts the game. After counting down and letting the yukai hide, Natsumi begins searching for them. He finds the mustache dude first and steps on his shadow to make him IT. The mustache man gets a little flustered and finds Madara running frantically. He steps on Madara's shadow and makes him the next IT. Madara transforms into his kitsune form and steps on multiple yukai shadows to make them all the ITs. He sees Natsume and pins him down to a tree. Natsume gets pissed at him for messing up the rules of the game and punches the kitsune out of him. Seconds later, Misuzu, the humongous deity, appears on the scene and causes even more havoc than Madara. This time, Natsume begs him to be their referee and he agrees to the job. The game of Shadow Tag continues for hours on end until everybody, including Madara and Misuzu, gets tired. They all get down to take a break and ask Natsume how they can end the game. To their surprise, Natsume tells them there's no possible way to end such a game. The Yukai grumble a little bit and end the game there. They start another tag game, but this time, the one who gets caught will have to stay in a circle, meaning the last man standing wins the game. Once the whistle is blown, Natsume runs towards a large tree. Tree. On his way there, he steps into a sinkhole and falls into a pit below the sinkhole. There, he sits quietly and hides from the IT so he doesn't get caught. Then he recalls some of the awful memories he had as a youngster and is called back to reality by Madara, who finds out where he was. Natsume asks Madara for a hand, and Madara pulls him out of the hole. In the end, everybody gathered again to eat and drink to celebrate their new best friend, Natsume. When the party's over, Natsume gets up and gets back to his friends who were nearby to join them on their own outing. He says his goodbyes to his new yukai friends, and joins Nishimura, Tanuma, and Kitamoto to get on their new outing. The next day is a Saturday, and Natsume decides to watch some meteor showers that's to happen in a few days. Since it's still morning, Natsume decides to walk home to cool down a bit. On the way, Sasada fills them in on all the amazing myths and legends they stand to enjoy with the meteor showers. Nishimura makes a stupid wish to see his soulmate very soon, and then asks Natsume what he thinks about his own wish. Natsume, however, keeps quiet until they part ways and head to their separate houses. Moments after separating from his friends, a weird yukai shows up and asks for his help. When asked what the matter was, the yukai asked Natsume to come help him pull out his friend from the rock his leg was trapped under. Natsume runs as fast as he can and eventually helps the beast with its injured leg. Afterwards, the yukai asks Natsume to return his name to him with the Book of Friends. Natsume does this and the yukai immediately makes a run for his hideout. Before Natsume can figure out why the yukai ran away, some evil yukai arrive and encircle Natsume to steal the Book of Friends from him. Luckily for Natsume, Madara came just in time to banish the evil yukai and save Natsume. After saving his student, Madara takes Natsume to the top of a tree branch to keep him from the evil yukai. Then he asks him what the evil yukai were all after. Natsume tells him they're there for the book of friends and himself. Madara scoffs and returns home with Natsume before it gets too dark. Upon reaching home, Natsume takes a nice bath and ponders over his life decisions. When he's done, he steps out to his room where Madara keeps complaining about the yukai trying to steal his book. The next day in school, 
Natsume cancels the meteor shower trip with his friends. Tanuma and Taki ask him why he plans on doing such a thing. Natsume tells them he's having a few problems bothering him. Before he gets to explain the details, Nishimura calls him and he leaves Tanuma and Taki. After he's gone, Taki asks Tanuma some questions about Natsume, hoping to understand him a little better. Tanuma explains to her the extent of his suffering and wishes more people knew the things he knows about Yukai. He also mentions how secretive Natsume has to be around his family and friends, for fear of them abandoning him when they find out his true powers. Taki gives Tanuma a surprised look, as she never knew Natsume suffered so much in his life. A few minutes after closing, before Natsume leaves school, one of the evil yukai that attacked him the previous day shows up in school and strangles him. Natsume yanks himself out of their grasp and runs towards the forest, to avoid getting the people suspicious. Natsume almost escaped the yukai, if not for one who knocked him out cold from the front. While that's happening, Madara and Misuzu discuss somewhere in the forest about the Book of Friends. While at it, Misuzu senses something bad in the air and warns Madara to keep away from the forest in the meantime. What they didn't know was that Natsume was already being harassed that instant by about half a dozen evil monkey yukai. They all gather around him and ask Natsume to release the Book of Friends to them. Just then, they all hear Madara's voice from a distance and Natsume makes a run for it. He wanders off to a spot in the forest where he finds weird seals and talismans placed around the forest. Before they can decipher it, the evil yukai catches up to them but soon enough, they all scram for dear life after some large black yukai comes and attacks them. The black yukai simplifies one of the evil yukai into a tiny black vial with one eye. Natsume holds the vial and peeps a few meters up front only to find Matoba and some of his yukai standing just a few meters away. He recognizes Matoba as an evil man and runs in the opposite direction with Madara. Along the line, Madara stops him and tells him to be very wary about the seals and talismans the Matoba clan placed in the forest. Before he knows it, Madara gets abducted and Natsume is left alone. He searches through the website and finds a weird dilapidated mansion, then he approaches it. Just then, he's knocked out by one of Matoba's yukai and taken to a dungeon. Natsume wakes up in the dungeon and knocks out the yukai guarding him. Then, he sneaks up the stairs and hides under the staircase. Matoba walks down that staircase and finds Natsume there. Without giving it a second thought, Natsume runs for his dear life and hides in one of the rooms. After closing all the doors leading to the room, he finds something rumbling in the garbage can. He picks the thing up and finds Madara there. Madara scolds him for being so reckless and wishes the Book of Friends is intact. Natsume sits by and smiles over how cute his cat was becoming that day. Somewhere around the mansion, Nanase complains about the noise in the mansion and asks Seiji to fix it. Unknown to them, Natsume and his partner were already searching for a way out of the mansion. They stop along the line and argue a little about the facts. Then they get themselves into to a dark storeroom and find the black one-eyed vial from earlier, who begs them to help. Before helping him, however, Madara asks him to tell them the room of their master and he agrees to do so without any doubt. Madara argues a little with him, but eventually he accepts the trade and heads out of the store alone to scout the grounds. While inside, Natsume asks the vial what they are doing searching for the Book of Friends. The black vial only tells Natsume that the master only wanted to use the book to revive the forest. When asked how they plan on doing that, the vial explains a pretty awful theory that makes Natsume realize they're better off without the book. In the end, Matoba finds Natsume and captures him. Before imprisoning him, Matoba asks Natsume for his cat's location, but sadly, even Natsume couldn't pinpoint where Madara was at that moment. In the meantime, the Kappa boy informs Hino of Natsume's disappearance. On hearing about his sudden disappearance, Hino gets a little worried and wonders where Natsume could have gone. Just then, two yukai are escorted to that part of the forest by the evil yukai. The evil yukai use these two low-level yukai to threaten Hino. However, Hino wasn't really ready to fold, so she told them to do what they must to get their book of friends back. Seconds later, Misuzu shows up and chases the evil yukai away. After they're gone, Hinoi thanks Misuzu for the help, and tells him about the monkey yukai and their master, Roka. Misuzu gets a little curious about their clan, and decides to go meet the master of this evil yukai clan. He picks Hino up and follows the evil yukai to their master's hideout. Meanwhile, Matoba treats Natsume to some tea to discuss some things with him. Natsume was very careful not to drink any of the tea Matoba offered him, Instead, he keeps his eyes fixated on Matoba's face and listens to what he has to say. After grabbing his attention, Matoba asks Natsume to do the impossible, and that's to join the Matoba clan. Natsume gives him a puzzled look as he becomes a little confused about the entire thing. Matoba narrates his entire life history right in front of him and asks Natsume why he still chooses to be on the Yukai's side. Natsume tells him he's there not for the bad Yukai, but for the good ones. Matoba continues running his mouth and saying all sorts of derogatory things. Natsume gets fed up and leaves the room with the black vial in his hand. Matoba stops 
stops him and asks him for a flat answer to his question, are you Kai and people really the same? Before Natsume can give him a normal answer, Madara shows up with Natsume's bag and barges into the room to save his student. Matoba waits till Madara lets his guard down and places him under a curse. Madara morphs back into his normal cat form, and risks getting attacked by Matoba, who takes out his knife. Natsumi realizes what Matoba's about to do, so he wraps himself around Madara and prevents Matoba from doing any more harm to his dear cat friend. At this point, Matoba gets a little pissed and orders his yukai to put them in prison. In the meantime, Nanase leads a team of her servant yukai to the eastern mountains to attack the evil yukai and search for their master, Roka. After cornering all of them, she tells them the reason they're there in the forest. Apparently all they wanted was to capture their leader and turn him into their slave. The eastern yukai are left between a rock and a hard place. Luckily for them, Misuzu and Hino came by to fortify their numbers and outnumber Nanasi. After discussing a few things with them, Nanasi takes her leave and returns to the mansion. After she's gone, the evil yukai thank Hinoe for helping them against the humans. Hino calls them out on their BS and confronts them for trying to steal the Book of Friends for their own selfish reasons. From the looks of things, Misuzu advises they all go check out the leader of the monkey to see what he's truly hiding. At that instant, Madara and Natsume both seem to be enjoying their time in prison, when suddenly, the Black Vial speaks up and insults Madara. Soon after, two yukai show up from the air pocket of the dungeon and try to steal Natsume's bag. All efforts to stop them prove futile, but then again, the Black Vial came through and threw the Yukai off the bag. Seconds later, Matoba comes through and punishes the Black Vial for calling and leading Yukai to the dungeon. Natsume sees the Black Vial in pain and begs Matoba to stop whatever he's doing. He touches him for a second and gets pushed back. Madara decides to help and he uses his light to push the Yukai back. He then creates a ruckus and uses the distraction that causes Matoba and his Yukai to escape that dungeon. On his way back home, Natsume thanks the Black Vial for helping him keep his bag away from Matoba and his own kind. The Black Vial welcomes him and asks for his help, and Madara lands him to return him to his land. Natsume and the Vile discuss a few more random things before Natsume gets up to leave. Just then, the evil Yukai peeps show up and threaten Natsume to return the Book of Friends. Madara takes care of a few of them, but then again, the other Yukai hiding in the forest drag Natsume to a ditch and surround him. Madara gets understandably pissed and picks up Natsume to get back home. Before leaving, he dares any of them to come at them if they'd like to feel his wrath. Just then, Misuzu arrives with Roka the real master of the yukai, and places him down to see Natsume. Roka gets down and apologizes on behalf of his subordinates. Soon after, Hinoi and the two yukai that were harassed back then came through to free their master, Natsume. Natsume stops them from causing any more harm and says his goodbyes to the yukai before leaving. On his way back, Misuzu, Madara, Natsume and the others all help release the seals the Matoba clan placed from the forest, so the evil yukai can pass through the forest freely. Seeing this, Seiji loses interest in pursuing Roka and decides to leave the forest. The next day, one of the yukai approaches Natsume and thanks him for the help he rendered to their forest the night before. To thank him for his service, he tells Natsume to feel free and call for their services anytime he's in trouble. Natsume agrees with him and heads back home to see his worried foster parents who give him a new sweater to wear on his trip to sightsee the meteor shower. Natsume puts the clothes on and rushes towards his friends to watch the meteor showers in the beautiful night sky. The next day, Madara waltzes in to see Natsume collapsing from exhaustion moments after giving a yukai back its name. He throws a fuss over Natsume's risk-taking and wishes he could be more careful with his job. Natsume ignores him and gets enough rest for his next outing with Madara. After a few minutes of resting, Natsume and his cat, Madara, head out on an outing to get something. On the way, they find some crows trying to eat an injured creature. Initially, Natsume thought the creature was a kitten, so he rushed towards the crows and sent them flying away. When he touches the creature, however, he finds out it's nothing but an injured furball. Madara immediately recognizes it as a yukai and runs back home with Natsume. When they get home, the duo lie on the floor to rest up. Suddenly, Natsume takes a look at Madara's tail and finds the furball there. He tried to touch it, but then the furball got scared and started jumping all around the room with its injury. Natsume ends up catching the furball after sustaining a hand injury. Then he puts it on his table and tends to both his wounds and the furball's wounds. The furball, who turns out to be a yukai, just stares at Natsume in shock as he realizes Natsume may not be as bad as he initially turned out to be. After dressing both their wounds, Natsume and his cat go to sleep. Late in the night, however, 
Natsumi couldn't sleep as the wound on his hand was a little bit too painful. Madara tells him the wound's been poisoned. Natsume ignores him and forces himself to go to sleep. The next morning, Natsume rushes downstairs after sleeping in and prepares himself for school. His foster parents find the bandage on his hand and ask some questions. Natsume lied to them yet again, they let him off the hook. On his way to school, Natsume drops the furball yukai and leaves it to find its habitat. Thinking he is done with the furball yukai, Natsume gets the shock of his life when the furball yukai brings its friend to see him in his classroom. After class that day, Natsume raced downstairs to find the furball. Instead, he finds Madara foraging the grass and embarrasses him. Soon after, the two head home. On their way, they find the two furball yukai from before and follow them into the forest until they find their tree hideout. Natsume is initially surprised at the sheer number of furballs living on that dead tree, but then again, he ignores them and rushes back home in time for dinner. Upon getting home, Natsume heads upstairs to his room and finds a weird yukai who is searching for her blue ring. She seems to think Natsume stole the blue ring and was pissed that he would even dare to do it. To punish him, she held his neck and almost strangled him to extinction. Despite not being the thief, Natsume promises to find the ring for her in the next three days. The yukai agrees to his terms and gives him an ultimatum to find the ring. If he's not able to find the ring in three days, she'll come and burn his house down. Then she disappears shortly afterwards, and Natsume starts searching all over his room with Madara. After searching for hours and finding nothing, they realize the ring must have been stuck on the furball. Before it gets dark, Natsume heads into the forest to ask the yukai living there for the location of the furball yukai. Initially, the yukai laugh at him for giving such a weird description of the furball yukai. Hino arrives on the scene and checks out the yukai's picture. She immediately realizes the type of yukai he's looking for, that is a karu, aka yukai that are known to migrate all year round like birds. Madara catches up to them and promises to end those wimps in a jiffy. Hino checks out the seal on Madara's left side and sees the seal placed on it. She she makes fun of him and offers to help Natsumi if he ever calls out her name for her help. Natsumi keeps searching until it nearly gets dark. Hino advises Natsume to head back home to avoid being in the forest when it gets too dark. Natsumi thanks her for her help and runs back home to take a bath before going for dinner. After taking his bath, he starts pondering his next move. Eventually, Natsume calls it a night after eating and goes to sleep. Just as he's about to close his eyes, he sees a red liquid on his hand and opens his bedspread to see Akazasa berries spluttered on his bedspread. Madara explains that the berries are a natural antidote to the poison infecting his hand. The furball must have felt bad for injuring him to bring such berries for quick relief. Natsumi checks around for the furball, but doesn't find him. He goes back to sleep and wakes up hours later to find the furball hanging in a corner of his ceiling. He gets up and speaks softly to the furball, encouraging it to come on his hands. The furball descends the ceiling to land on Natsumi's hand, but then the two troublesome yukai show up and startle the furball who runs outside the house towards the forest. Instinctively, Natsumi gets down his window with Madara and races through the forest to find the Karu that just escaped. On the way, the two troublesome yukai explained the rumor they wanted to tell Natsume earlier. Apparently, the entire forest of yukai heard about the Karu migrating to their region, and since they're scared of the yokai eating Karus, they've begun migrating to the Hinoi and Kappa yukai region. Natsume and Madara pick up the pace as they get very close to the Karu hideout. When they get to the hideout, Natsume and Madara find several hundred Karu there. Natsume asks Fluffball, aka the Karu he knows, to hand him the ring. The yukai gives him the ring and begins migrating with his flock. Seconds after receiving the ring, the ring owner comes by and accuses Natsume of stealing the ring and lying to her. With the seal on Madara's forehead, there was little to nothing she could do to retrieve her ring. Just then, the Karu all cluster together to form a dragon and steal Natsume back from her hands. Then they fly him to a safe part of the forest and drop him there. Moments after he's dropped, Natsumi's other friends catch up to him and Natsumi's safe again. In the next scene, Natsumi is seen thanking Hino for the help she rendered him the previous day. Now that things are back to normal, Natsumi can finally get back to his normal life. The two troublesome yukai run after him to give him some more Akazawa berries for his wounds. A few days after taking care of the blue ring yukai, Natsume is seen chilling in his room when suddenly Tuko asks for his help to open the door downstairs. He gets downstairs to help his mom open the door only to find nobody there. So who is the imposter pretending to be his mother? To find out, Natsume heads back upstairs to his room, calling for Madara and hoping he gets an answer. Sadly for him, he finds a yukai named Yobiko waiting there for him. Yobiko is a yukai whose special ability was imitating people's voices, and he was there to collect the Book of Friends from Natsume by any means necessary. He pins Natsume to the ground and threatens to end him if he doesn't release the book. Natsume struggles to get out of his grasp and ends up punching the yukai. Madara shows up moments later and finds the yukai, Yobiko getting up. After getting defeated by the almighty Natsume, Yobiko tries to use another approach. He takes out some premium sake he brought for Natsume and humbly asks to be loaned the Book of Friends. Natsume refuses all his requests to borrow the book, to summon a yukai called Karikami. Apparently, 
He has a very old and wrinkled letter with him and wants to summon Karikami, a yukai known for restoring old paper just so he can read the contents of the paper. When asked what the contents of the paper contained, Yobiko tells Natsumi it's a letter from a very old friend of his. Natsumi asks for more context to his story, but then again, Yobiko didn't have to narrate an hour-long story. Natsume lets him know that he has all the time in the world so he can go ahead with his story. Yobiko sighs, sits down, and begins the story from the beginning. Yobiko's great story began several years ago. That day was just as random as any other day. Being a yukai who lives very deep in the dangerous parts of the forest, Yobiko rarely saw any humans come by. However, on that day, a beautiful woman passed his region near the Kariyama forest and caught his attention. Curious by the audacity, Yobiko decided to follow the lady all the way to wherever she was going. He figured out she was out that deep in the forest to meet a handsome man by a shrine. Upon meeting the man by the shrine, she was so happy and got to spend a lot of time with the man. They would talk for hours and hours on end till the day passed them by. When the time came for the man to get back home, the lady would stare at the path he took and wait till he was out of sight before going back home. Then she would turn her back and get back home. Since this was an everyday thing, Yobiko made it his life's mission to ensure the girl got home safely and free from any beast attacks. At this point in the story, Natsume has to chuckle a little bit as he's impressed by how kind Yobiko is. Yobiko pauses his story and asks for the Book of Friends again. This time, he advises Natsume to summon Karikama's name from the book, as he'll be obliged to answer to his name. Natsume bursts his bubble and tells him that's not possible. As long as he hasn't seen or touched the yukai before, there's no way he's summoning him just like that. This makes Yobiko get a little disheartened, but he then intrudes on Natsume's privacy and tells him he'll be sleeping there that night. Being the kind person he is, Natsume allows him to sleep over there. That night, Natsume dreams about the poor girl who missed her man. He wakes up very late the next morning and has a wonderful breakfast with his family while Yobiko seeks refuge in his room upstairs. When he's done with breakfast, he heads to the forest with Yobiko, who is hell-bent on finding Karakami on his own. Soon after, a large yukai attacks Natsume from behind and Madara saves him. Yobiko takes advantage of Madara distracted self, abducts Natsumi and takes to the trees. He jumps several trees until he gets noticeably far away from Madara. Then he places Natsumi on a tree branch and tells him more about the Karakami Yukai. When things settled down for a bit, Yobiko decided to tell him the other part of the story. After having their little tryst going on for years, the man suddenly stopped coming to see the girl. This made her become very sad, but she still didn't give up. Most times, she would come over to the shrine and wait for hours for her man to come meet her. Yobiko decided to check up with the man and found out that he got married to a very wealthy woman from the south. Back then, he felt very angry with the man and sorry for the woman. To prevent the woman from getting heartbroken, Yobiko, who's been witnessing this sad event, decides to impersonate her man for a while before telling her the truth. Since he had the power to imitate any voice, the woman would rarely notice the difference. As for physical presence, Yobiko would often tell her he was suffering from an incurable disease. This scam went on and on until Yobiko's guilty conscience made him tell her the truth one day. That day, the lady opened the door forcefully after longing to see his face again, but then she couldn't find the owner of the voice talking to her. At this point, Yobiko tells her about her man marrying off to another family and runs away from the shrine for a long while. Up until that very day, Yobiko still feels sad for what he did. After spending a long time away from the shrine, he returned only to find the rusty old letter he now has in his hands. Yobiko suspects the letter may be the lady's last message to him, so he needs to make sure he reads the letter before it's too late. Natsume also shares the same sentiment, so he asks Yobiko to get him close to Karakami so he can return his name. At that point, Madara, who was nearby, hears Natsume calling for Karikami's presence at some part of the forest. Karikami shows up moments later, and Natsume converses with him. Yobiko takes out the old letter and asks Karikami to restore it to its former state so he can read it. Karikami then makes a deal to help them restore the letter in exchange for getting his name back. Natsume returns his name to him and experiences a few wonderful memories Karikami had with Reiko back then before handing him the letter. Karikami takes a look at the letter and restores it back to its former state. After restoring the letter, Karikami tells Yobiko about the person who wrote the letter as he senses she's no longer in this world. Nonetheless, Yobiko still tries to read the letter, but then again, he never learnt to read. So he waits for Karikami and Natsume to finish talking so he can ask for Natsume's help. Karikami discusses a few more things about Reiko with Natsume and bids him farewell. On his way back home, Yobiko asks Natsume to read the letter to him. Natsume holds the letter, smiles, and reads the entire contents to Yubiko. The following day, a former classmate from Natsume's middle school named Yuriko 
visits the shrine near her locale to show the deities there her failed test score. Apparently, it's become somewhat of a tradition for her to show her flunked test scores to the shrine's deity. This time, she got a 24 and was there to pray for a better test score the next time she took a test. After offering her prayers, Yuriko heads up the stairs to get back to ground level. Suddenly, she misplaced her steps and trips over the stairs. She struggles to maintain her steps but ends up falling to the highway in front of an oncoming truck. Seconds before she's hit by the truck, an invisible force presumably a yukai, saves her life by pulling her out of the highway. Yuriko survives the experience with nothing but a sprain on her leg. After the incident, Yuriko is taken home and treated there. After getting her sprain treated, her two friends show up to check up on her. After hearing where she went, they all made fun of her for going over to the shrine just like always to show off her bad scores to the deities. While mocking her, they remind her of her eerie meeting with the weird kid back in middle school. Yuriko immediately knows her girl is talking about Natsume. She laughs sheepishly and remembers the experience itself. It all began when Yuriko met Natsume for the first time at the shrine she was so used to going to. That day, she flunked her test as usual and was there at the shrine to pray for good luck next time. Unfortunately for her, she finds the weird kid nobody wants to talk to sleeping at the entrance to the shrine and tries to wake him up. To her surprise, Natsume kicks her and runs away frantically. Yuriko gets a little scared of the poor guy Guy, but she didn't know that Natsume saw a scary yukai behind her. He kicked her to save her life. Yuriko ignores him for the rest of the day and finally gets home in one piece. The next day, while she prepares herself for school, her mother asks her about Natsume, the weird kid who just moved close to their area. Yuriko remembers him as the cool and silent type. However, her mother tells her about Natsume's dark past and tells her to try and stay away from him. Yuriko does the exact opposite and approaches him the next day in school. She asks him why he kicked her the previous day and Natsume tells her he was having a nightmare and woke up at the wrong time to see her there with him. He kicked her because she looked like the monster he was dreaming about. He ends up apologizing to her for his bad behavior and Yuriko makes some funny comment about his hair, which Natsume takes offense to. To avoid losing his temper, Natsume excuses himself. Yuriko gets a little sad for making a jest of his hair and decides to meet him one day and apologize. Over the next few days, Yuriko kept on spying on Natsume. Most times, she would find him fighting nothing and tripping over the littlest of things. This makes her wonder why Natsume's always like that. Initially, she thinks she has a monster on her back. But then again, she deads the issue and continues her normal day. One day after school, there's a heavy downpour, and Yuriko stays outside till the rain is over. Just then, Natsume walks up to her and offers her a spot under his umbrella. Yuriko takes the spot and follows Natsume to her home. Her mother finds her walking with Natsume on her way home and tries to scold her for disobeying her. However, Yuriko only thanked her mom and promised not to ever do it again. The next day in school, a glass window breaks with Natsume as the only culprit. Everyone gathers around him as the teacher scolds him and drags him to the office. Only Yuriko stepped up to defend Natsume, as the evidence is pretty clear that Natsume didn't break the window. Nonetheless, Natsume's guardian is called, and his drunken foster mother shows up to take him back home. After another day in school, Yuriko walks home with Natsume and asks him why he's so okay with people treating him like shit. Natsume gives her several reasons that only make her sorry for her, and escorts her back to her house. In the end, he tells her he's been transferred again to another school. Sadly, Yuriko is forced to say her goodbyes even though she just met him. Coming over to the present day, one of Yuriko's friends tells her about one of their other colleagues citing Natsume somewhere around their town recently. Yuriko gets a little surprised and asks her girls why Natsume didn't even bother to say hi to them. Her friends give her weird eyes and start teasing her closeness to Natsume. In the meantime, Natsume and Madara check out the new yukai they brought home. These yukai, who are usually called Suneko, are so weak that they cling to humans when attacked to protect themselves. Madara does a demonstration in front of Natsume and the yukai jumps on Natsume for protection. Natsume remembers the names he used to give such yukai, the Klingbug. Seeing this one brought a very unpleasant memory to Natsume. It was around the time he met Yuriko as well. That day, the Klingbug Yukai attached itself to Natsume and caused him to run away from his friend group. Natsume took the Yukai to the roadside near the canal and threw it away. Later on, he came back to check up on the seemingly harmless Yukai to confirm that it was okay. After checking its health, he walks away. Before he gets too far, he finds a large Yukai with a scythe trying to hack up the Klingbug. Natsume distracts the Yukai and helps the Klingbug escape. This annoys the Yukai so much that he places a curse on Natsume and challenges him to hide away from him for 30 days. If he can avoid the scythe guy for a whole 30 days, then he gets to live. Otherwise, he will die by his scythe. 
Natsume takes him up on his challenge and begins running helter-skelter for days on end. The day he decided to rest up by the shrine was the day he woke up to see Yuriko for the first time. Apparently the yukai was at her back and was getting ready to take him out. Natsume kicked her and ran away from the yukai. His story with Yurika began at that moment as Natsume kept on avoiding the large yukai. For a few weeks, the scythe will come after Natsume and chase him all around the school. One day, Natsume decided to confront the yukai. He asked the scythe yukai why he is always after him, but the black scythe ignores him and keeps on attacking him. The first day the black scythe came to school, he shattered the glass and got Natsumi in trouble with the teacher. After getting himself out of trouble, Natsumi finally meets with a black scythe to hear the truth. Apparently, the black scythe could never harm Natsumi. He was just chasing Natsumi up and down to have fun while it lasted. After disappearing, it was already too late as Natsumi had been chosen for another transfer. Natsumi recognizes the good time he had with Yuriko and wishes she could relive those moments again. At that instant, Yuriko's friend tells her that the colleague who saw Natsumi saw him doing quite well. Yuriko smiles and thanks the deity for finally giving Natsumi a peaceful place he can call home. Natsumi, on the other hand, continues being grateful for the kind of life he's living now. After a few days, Natsumi visits Tanuma in his temple house and plays a little bit of Japanese chess with him. While receiving some lessons from Tanuma the king himself, Natsume looks beside him and finds the yukai pondfish floating in the air. The next day, Natsume challenges Kitamoto, who's a self-proclaimed chess champion, to a game of Japanese chess. Natsume wins the game and ends up enraging Kitamoto whose ego has just been hurt. Shortly after the game ends, Tanuma shows up, and Natsumi thanks him for teaching him the ropes around Shogi. As punishment for losing the game, Nishimura tells Kitamoto to treat them to some lunch afterwards. After school, the students head out to a part of town only to realize that they are celebrating a small festival in honor of the deity, Omibashira. Natsumi and his friends get some corn to eat while spectating the other stalls. As they walk through the stalls, Natsume hears something eerie from the bushes near him. He gets a little closer to the bushes and finds two masked yukai trying to invite him to a festival. When they find out he's a human, and they try to abduct him. They'd have been successful if not for Natsume's friends who came in the nick of time to rescue them. They see Natsume feeling uneasy and ask him what the heck is going on. Natsume quickly switches expressions and convinces all his friends that he's fine. After their outing, Natsume returns home, pondering about what the two yukai earlier could have wanted with him. He greets Tuko and walks up to his room to find it empty. Madara must be out drinking again. Natsume walks over to his window to get it open. Just then, someone throws a weird bottle into his room and Natsume touches it. He finds himself getting sucked into the bottle, and before he knows it, he's trapped within the bottle all day. Madara returns from his party with the yukai people and finds his student, Natsume, trapped within a small bottle. Natsume begs him to try opening the bottle, but nothing works. In the end, Madara tells Natsume to get used to being trapped in the bottle since there's no way to break him out. Natsume tells Madara they have to find the owner of the bottle or else he may be trapped there for eternity. At that moment, Tuko calls Natsume down for dinner. Natsume tells her he'll be down soon, but knows that he possibly can't show up in a bottle or his parents will be suspicious. So, what does he do? Well, Madara stepped in to help for once in his life and transformed into a life-size doppelganger of Natsume. Natsume is stupefied to see that his master had such a hidden power. Madara, on the other hand, started checking himself out and ran downstairs when Tuko called him the second time. At the dinner table, Natsume came off as a little strange to his parents as he started eating like a pig on steroids. Thankfully, Natsume's parents buy Madara's scam, and the fat cat gets to have a wonderful human dinner for once in his cat's life. After dinner, Madara takes Natsume and the bottle back upstairs to the room, there, they discuss a few more things about Natsumi's bottle. As it turns out, the bottle is a yukai bottle and Natsume, being the one trapped inside, is forced to be a yukai till he's out of there. This means he can't get hungry unless he feels the need to and also can't go to the toilet or bathroom either. Madara eventually gets tired and switches off the light to go to sleep. Later that night, one of the yukai who harassed Natsumi earlier shows up for the bottle. Madara, who's been hiding in the closet, comes out and transforms into his kitsune form. He threatens to end the yukai's existence if he doesn't open the bottle and let his prey out. The yukai got scared and told Madara not to interfere in their ritual, as Natsume was to be present for their master, Omibashira, during his festival. Madara stands his ground and makes a bold face to kill the yukai if he isn't ready to let Natsume go. The yukai backed down and made a run for it. After he's gone, Natsume tells Madara the little he knows about Omibashira. Madara asks if he has more information about the deity and his festival. Sadly, he didn't, and Madara gets super pissed. The next day, Madara transforms into Natsume and gets ready for school. Before leaving, he gets his boxed lunch and acts a little sassy to Tuko, which rubs her off the wrong way. Moments after arriving at school, Natsume, aka Madara's disguise, acts rude to Nishimura and calls him to have a discussion with him. Nishimura gets a little suspicious, seeing as Natsume was being rude to him. However, he ignores most of the weird acts and tells Natsume that he doesn't know too much about the Omibashira festival. Madara gets a little pissed and goes for Kitamoto, 
the next person on the list. Kitamoto tells him the same thing as he rarely knows anything about some random festival. Next up, Madara searches for Sasada all around the school and finds her right there in class. Sasada, after seeing him, makes an awful call about his cat, calling it ugly. Seeing as Madara was the one behind the disguise, he gets understandably pissed. Thankfully, he controls his anger and drags Sasada out of her classroom to the stairwell. There, he gets awfully close to Sasada and gives her the wrong impression. Sasada's heart was already beating a hundred times a minute as she thought her crush finally noticed her. In the end, Natsume, aka Madara, realized he was hungry, and left her after getting the information he needed about Omibashira. After eating all the food Tuko packed in his lunchbox, Madara gets serious and checks around the little clump of bushes he was sitting in. Apparently, the bottle belonged to Onizaru and not Omibashira, and if they're to have any hope of getting Natsumi out of the bottle, then they have to go meet Onizaru. In a few minutes, Tanuma shows up to see his best buddy. He realizes right off the bat that the Natsumi he's seeing isn't the real Natsume he knows and loves. He asks Madara a few more questions and forces him to change back to his original form. Tanuma finds out the entire truth and tries desperately to see Natsume who was trapped in the box. After trying and failing to see Natsume, Tanuma gives up and decides to follow Madara to help save Natsumi from being trapped in the box for eternity. He follows Madara deep into the forest until Madara gets separated from Tanuma. Tanuma stands in the middle of nowhere totally confused about what to do when suddenly, one of the Onizaru hits him on the head and steals the bottle from him. Tanuma comes a few minutes later and runs a few meters forward to search for Natsumi. By chance, he stumbles upon a mansion with Yukai walking towards the entrance. To his surprise, Tanuma could see the hordes of Yukai making their way towards the mansion's entrance. That instant, Natori appears behind him disguised to be like a yukai and welcomes Tanuma to the yukai mansion. Tanuma gets a little bit surprised to see such a yukai being kind towards humans. He thanks Natori for the help and lets him go. Shortly after Natori leaves, Tanuma gets out of hiding and is startled by Madara, who is also searching for Natsume. In the meantime, Natsume wakes up and finds himself surrounded by yukai. He tried desperately to open up the lid to the bottle he was placed in, but then again, the seal was just too tight. Soon some of the yukai notice him and walk over to the bottle to make fun of him. The almighty Natsume has been caught and trapped. Before they get to do anything about him, Tanuma shows up completely disguised to look like a yukai and convinces the entire crowd that the Onizaris got the wrong Natsume. He holds out a small ceiling pot and claims to have the real Natsume in the pot. There's a little bit of confusion in the crowd, but then, one of the Onizarus decided to open the bottle to show everyone that he's got the real Natsume inside. Wrong move by them as Tanuma lunges towards them and yanks the bottle out of their hands seconds after it's opened before throwing Natsume outside. Natsume falls out of the bottle and becomes a normal human. One of the yukai smelled Tanuma's scent and removed his disguise, but then again, Natsume was already free. After getting his body back, Natsume covers Tanuma and protects him from one of the yukai attacks. Natori also shows up and blows his own cover to save Tanuma and Natsume. Elsewhere, Madara is seen roaming around the mansion to find a weak spot in the mansion's barrier. He ran into two yukai and ran away as fast as his little legs could carry him. Moments after Natsume and Tanuma catch their breaths, Natsume recognizes Natori right off the bat. Since Tanuma really didn't have any memories of Natori, he asked Natsume who he was. Natsume calms him down and explains Natori's job to him. Soon, Hiragi and Urihime, Natori's yukai servants, both appear in the room to help out their master. Tanuma introduces himself to Natori and gets comfortable with the other yukai in the room. After the necessary introductions, they all hear rumbling sounds in the room beyond their door. They wait silently ready to strike whoever comes through that door. To their surprise, Madara shows up in Reiko's form and rants on and on about Reiko and Natsume. After talking, she tries breaking a hole in the mansion's wall to create an exit. Sadly, the seal placed around the wall was too strong to be broken by just a chair. They decide to do a little investigating to figure out what the Omibashira festival truly entails. Natsume and Tanuma are seen alone, and a yukai approaches them to ask after the humans invading the mansion. Thankfully, Natsume successfully protects Tanuma and the yukai leaves. After he's gone, they continue talking until they hear someone shouting in one of the rooms. Natori and the others all trace the origin of that sound and find yukai blood scattered all around the corridor. Madara and Natori rub heads together to deduce the truth from the happenings they've seen around the mansion. In the end, they conclude that the Onizaru yukai must have lured the low-level yukai to the mansion so they could be eaten by Omibashira to get stronger. At that moment, Madara mentions that the low-level yukai are all locked up in the mansion and are being fed to the Onizaru master one by one. Hearing this, Natsume has two choices. They either find a way to escape and forget about the yukai, or they stay and stop Omibashira from fully reviving himself. Natori explains his job at the mansion to Natsume and convinces him to go with him. Soon the group split up into two teams of two, and Natsume heads out with Natori to go find Omibashira. On the flip side, Madara and Tanuma walk down to the men's hall and find the room 
where the heinous act is being committed. Tanuma cannot believe his eyes, as he finds blood scattered all over the walls and floor of the dark room. It was at that point that he understood why Natsume was keeping his ability a secret from his friends and family. On their way back upstairs, Tanuma recounts his actions and wishes he'd understood Natsume better. Madara finds Omibashira's bloody footsteps and follows them. Meanwhile, Tanuma gets a bad headache and goes in the opposite direction. He finds an eye in the wall of the mansion and lets out a terrifying scream. Natori and Natsume immediately rush to the scene to find Tanuma knocked out cold on the floor. After realizing what happened, Natori decides they have to seal Omibashira to prevent him from getting much stronger than he already is. Natsumi, on the other hand, starts spacing out as he gets really worried about what's to happen to Tanuma. Natori calms him down and cooks up a plan with Natori, so they get to seal the Onizaru Master. Natsume finds Omibashira and uses himself as bait to lure Omibashira to the magic circle, which Natori uses to seal him into the small sealing pot in his hand. He does this in front of all the yukai present in the hall. With nobody defending them, the Onizaru try to make them the bad guys. Madara, who's still taking Reiko's form, speaks up and threatens the dumb yukai present there to eat him if they dare come after his prey. Every yokai there scram for dear life and Tanuma's life is saved again. Natsume has Hiragi carry Tanuma to the grass outside the mansion where he comes to. Natsume thanks him for helping him out but Tanuma gets really sad and blames himself for everything that happened to Natsume. He mouths a few more things that make Natsume get a little sad for taking him as his friend. Ultimately, the two guys kiss and make up before heading to their different places. Natsume gets back home tired and bored as his parents aren't back from their outing yet. At least he's fine now and that's what matters. In a flashback, a young lady is seen running away from a monster yukai she just encountered in the forest. The yukai begged her to wait for him so he could eat him, but then again, the girl knew what she was doing. She ran out to a patch of land within the forest and lured the large monster yukai into the seal she drew on the ground. When the monster appeared there, the young exorcist recited a chant that summoned spiritual hands to pull the large yukai into the small ceiling pot. All that's left for the young lady is for her to wait quietly till the yukai gets sucked into the pot. When all seems fine, a smaller harmless yukai is seen flying directly above the monster yukai holding a basket of fish when one of his fish falls into the magic circle. The smaller yukai flies down into the seal and gets trapped with the monster yukai. He begged for someone to save his life and the little girl heard him. She paused the ritual and weakened the seal's hold on the monster yukai. The monster yukai noticed this and broke itself out of the seal. Then he throws her further into the forest where other yukai find and flocks around her likening her to someone named Natsume Reiko. Lucky for her, her people were just around the corner, so they called out her name and scared off the yukai gathering around her. By sheer luck, the young exorcist is saved from death and lives to fight another day. Fast forward to the present day, Natsumi and his fat cat Madara are seen taking a stroll on a weekend. Madara asks Natsumi to go get him something to eat, but then Natsumi is just sick and tired of Madara always eating. Suddenly, the smaller, innocent yukai from the flashback, the one with wings, dives and abducts Natsumi and Madara. On their way to the Yukai's POI, Natsumi introduces himself as the grandson of Natsume Reiko. He then asks the smaller Yukai what he was being abducted for and the Yukai tells him about his friend who was sealed in a stone and thrown into a well. Earlier on, the small Yukai had already retrieved the stone from the well but then he lost it in the forest. Now he needs Natsume to use the Book of Friends to locate the stone and release his friend. As for Madara, his weight made him slip and fall into the forest while in flight. He tries to follow the smaller Yukai and Natsume so he won't get lost when he suddenly trips on a rope tied to a well. Madara stopped, released the rope, and let it fall to the well. Shortly afterwards, he checks the edge of the well and finds the weird water beneath it. Madara loses his grip at the edge and falls into the well only to find Nanas there. Nanasi recognizes the fat cat and scoffs at it. She gets out of hiding and shows herself to Madara. Upon seeing her, Madara makes some sassy remarks and finds a sealing stone in her hands. When asked what she was there for, Nanas tells him she's there to search for a stone her friend had sealed inside a long time ago. She admits that she's been there for hours but still hasn't found the right stone yet. She takes a look at the cat and asks if he knows about Natsume Reiko. Madara tells her he does, but then again it's none of her business. Nanas smiles and decides to tell him a story since they'd be stuck in the well for a while. Madara sits and listens to Nanasi narrate her experience with Reiko and her yukai friend. After getting back home from her failed attempt to capture the yukai, young Nanasi gets scolded by her father for having mercy on the smaller yukai and letting the evil one go. He reminds her of the clan's mantra and hopes she hasn't forgotten about it. Nanasi begs for forgiveness and promises to be better next time. Nanasi is left to continue her job and she heads to the forest next. There, she searches for and finds the yukai who disturbed her exorcism the previous day and forced him to take her to the Natsume Reiko he kept talking about the previous day. With nothing left to do, the smaller yukai led Nanasi through the human settlement 
to find Natsume Reiko. On their way there, Nanase overhears two girls gossiping about her and ignores them. She boards a bus to another part of town and alights in another part of the forest to find Natsume Reiko. Suddenly, the evil Yukai she failed to seal attacked her again and almost ate her. Thankfully, another exorcist came by and saved her from the evil Yukai. The smaller bird Yukai immediately labels the man as Natsume Reiko. However, when things settle, the man takes Nanase to a stream and introduces himself as Mikaj, not Reiko. He says a few more things and gives Nanase some herbs for her wounds. He then asks her why she was searching for Natsume Reiko. Nanasi tells him about her exorcist family and wishes they could all just agree that all Yukai were bad and just exorcise them all. After hearing all she said, Mikaj tells her he only seals the Yukai he's asked to seal. Nanasi gets a little surprised and asks him for his master. Before Mikaj could mention a name, he felt a tingling in his heart and fell to his feet. Nanasi gets worried and asks him what the matter is. Mikaj calms her down and tells her not to worry too much about his ailment. He knows his fate and he's accepted it. Nanasi gets very shocked and happy to see such a mature person. That evening, she thanks Mikaj and wishes to be an exorcist like him when she grows up. Her train arrives that instant and she leaves for her house. The following day, Nanas retraced her steps to the forest and found the smaller Yukai resting up on a tree. She asks the Yukai where Mikaj was, and he tells her he's probably somewhere resting his bones as his ailment gets the best of him. At that instant, the evil Yukai shows up again to capture Nanas. Mikaj arrived just in time to save Nanas and seal the Yukai. After sealing the Yukai, Mikaj got so weak he couldn't stand. Before he could say anything, two exorcists came searching for Mikaj. He hid himself before they could find him and asked Nanas to cover for him. The two exorcists told Nanas about Mikaj and his master. Apparently Mikaj was a Yukai serving under his master, and used to be ordered to seal Yukai into special jade stones. Now that his master is gone, Mikaj's health fails him as he seals more Yukai with his power. Just as he feared, Mikaj is believed to turn into an evil Yukai soon, if he's not sealed on time. Mikaj confirms their theories after they're gone, and begs Nanase to seal him before the evil in his body completely takes over him. He'd initially asked Reiko to seal him, but she refused. Now that he has another powerful Yukai on his side, he can finally get sealed again. Nanase's thoughts conflict throughout, but ultimately, she decides to help Mikaj with his wish and seals him inside a jade stone. After she's done, she gently drops the stone inside the well her older self and Madara are in currently, and leaves him for time and fate. Ever since then, Nanase has accepted her fate to be a fighter against evil Yokai. She came there to search for the stone after after finding out the buildings to be demolished soon. After telling her great story, she helps Madara up the well, and Madara also helps her out. At that moment, Natsume and the smaller Yukai finally find Mikaj's stone. Natsume places the stone on a rock and returns his name to him. Mikaj awakens once again and thanks Natsume Takashi for helping him out. Then he returns to his normal form, which is a jade stone, and the smaller Yukai helps carry him to a peaceful stream. Shortly afterwards, Madara catches up to Natsume and takes him home. A few days later, Natsume is seen doing some homework while Madara sleeps. He hears a little rustle on the wall of his room, but he ignores it to answer Tuko's call. Upon getting downstairs, he finds a letter he's been expecting and opens it. Just then, he looks at the wall in front of him and finds a Yukai's head crawling up the wall. Natsumi lets out a scream that wakes Madara up. A while later, he takes his usual stroll with Madara and complains about the Yukai barging into his room recently. Madara blames him for being too kind to the Yukai instead of being a little harsh on them. After saying all that nonsense, Madara gets hungry and chases a froggy leaving Natsume all alone in the meadows. Natsume soaks in all of that soft wind and sits on the grass while waiting for his cat to return. Suddenly, he hears some strange voices from the bushes nearby and tries to figure out where they are coming from. The voices kept on getting louder and louder until finally, Natsume saw them. The voices, which turned out to be a horde of yukai in white kimonos and hats, menacingly ran towards Natsume to meet him. Natsume gets a little scared and begs them to calm down. Unfortunately, the yukai weren't slowing down, and Natsumi made a run for it. Elsewhere, Natori, who was just ending one of his movie shootings, attends to his fans and takes his leave. That night, he visits one of his clients who has a job for him near the forest. The client explains the job description to him and mentions a festival known as the Moon Splitting Festival. Apparently, it's a festival that's normally held once every 10 years where the villagers pray for a good harvest and stage a mock battle between Hudzuki the deity of the harvest moon, and Fudzuki, the deity of the absent moon. These two deities are to fight for control over the mountain for the subsequent decade. Throughout history, Hudzuki has always been the winner of mock combat and has been bringing prosperity to the land. However, there's something wrong with the entire festival this time around. From the news he's been able to gather from other yukai, it turns out Hudzuki is actually missing, as he was attacked and sealed by either a monster or an exorcist. If Hudzuki isn't there to participate, then Fudzuki wins by default, and if that's the case, 
then there's a high risk the mountain will dry up and the entire town will be sent to drought for 10 years. Natori's job is to find Hadzuki in the shortest time possible and bring him back to the festival before it commences. The employer gives Natori the chance to take drastic measures if he has to. Natori meets with his yukai the following day and instructs them to gather information from the local yukai while he goes over to Mount Misumigahara where the festival is held to do a little more digging. Hiragi follows him and ends up annoying him a little bit as they approach the mountain. Suddenly they both hear a few chants in the distance and hide in one of the shrubs to keep away from the oncoming yukai. Seconds later a few yukai carrying a palanquin show up with Fuzuki. After they pass, Hadzuki arrives on his palanquin with his followers. Natori gets a little confused as he knows Hadzuki is missing. Natori squints his eyes to see who's really behind the Hadzuki mask. He gets the shock of his life when he notices Natsume's face behind the mask. Natsume also gets a weird tingling in his surroundings and checks around. When he finds Natori hiding nearby, he's considerably surprised as well. After they're gone, Natori and Hiragi wander into a bunch of Hudzuki's men. Soon enough, Fudzuki's men show up and engage Hudzuki's men in a fight. Natori and Hiragi slip out of the entire area and watch Hudzuki and Fudzuki argue over Hudzuki's identity. Apparently, they seem to think the Hudzuki the followers showed all of them wasn't the real one, and they're somehow hiding the real one somewhere. The Hudzuki followers, clearly knowing they were right, pass off their accusations as preposterous. Soon after, another fight ensues between both rival followers, but then again, Natsume arrives in his Hudzuki costume to chase the Fudzuki followers away. After they're gone, Natsume and Natori meet again to discuss the festival that's to take place in a few moments. Natsume explains to Natori that Hudzuki's followers came to him earlier and asked him to fill in as their master for the festival so the mountain doesn't fall into Fudzuki's hands. Natsume then asks Natori if he can help him save the mountain from falling into Fudzuki's hands. Before giving his answer, he goes over to one of the followers of Hudzuki to ask them for more information about Hudzuki. However, the festival was starting at about that time, so Natsume quickly joined his followers in his palanquin to get to the festival on time. On his way to the festival, Madara urges Natsume, aka Hudzuki, to be very careful so the yukai don't detect his human smell. Natsume successfully passes through the yukai and eventually faces Fudzuki for a mock battle between them. Once everyone's been accounted for, the judge appears and explains the rules of the hunting matchup to both parties. He's going to release a beast trapped in a pot he was holding and have the two parties hunt it. The first party to capture the beast wins the match and takes control of the mountain for the next 10 years. After explaining all the rules, the announcer releases the beast and starts the festival. Almost immediately, Fudzuki and his followers all follow the beast and Natsume goes later on. With no plan whatsoever, Natsume tires his followers as they carry him around the forest to search for the beast. In the meantime, Natori and his yukai search the forest to find the temple where the real Hudzuki is sealed. They find the temple standing beside a waterfall and approach it to check what's inside. Upon opening the temple, Natsumi and Madara show up and attack Natori without knowing they were the one. Natsumi apologizes for attacking them blindly and asks Natori what he plans on doing from then on. After finding out about the number count of Fudzuki's followers, Natori gets a little discouraged seeing as they were pretty outnumbered. Natsume tried to encourage him but then the beast showed up from nowhere and attacked them. He ends up pushing Natsume over the ledge, almost killing him before leaving. Luckily for him, Hiragi saved him from falling face flat on the hard stones down at the base of the temple. Hiragi helps him up and tells him to compose himself so he doesn't blow his cover. She paints a protection charm on one of his arms and follows him to go search for the beast. On their way there, Hiragi tells him the real reason why they were there. Natsume understands why Natori was so upset back then as he realizes that he may be forced to seal a deity. Hiragi gives him a surprised look and fails to see the trap in front of her. She unintentionally sets off the trap and releases a bunch of logs coming towards them. Instinctively, Natsume steps in to save Hiragi and ends up taking the hit and passing out. The Fudzuki followers come out of their hiding place shortly after to check up on the unfortunate ones, but when they get there, they get a human scent from the one they call... Hudzuki. To investigate the strange scent, the Fudzuki Yukai flock around Natsume and smell him one more time. Before they could confirm he was indeed a human, Natsume woke up and tried to keep up the act. Only this time, the Fudzuki followers really wanted to be sure Natsume was really Hudzuki Gama. Natsume gets very afraid of what may happen if they figure out his secret. Luckily for him, Madara came at the right time and took him out of their midst. Shortly after they leave, Fudzuki appears to his followers and reprimands them for going after a deity like himself. In the meantime, 
Natsume thanks Madara for helping them, and asks him to fly them back to the temple to investigate the presence he felt by the riverside. On getting there, Natsume finds Natori standing on one of the balconies. He explains his next mission to him and leaves on Madara's back to find his presence. After he's gone, Natori faces Hiragi to take care of her minor wound. Once he confirms she's out of trouble, he faces the Huzuki follower who led them to the temple and questions his intentions for Natsume. Natori seems to think the white followers are looking to replace their sealed deity with Natsume. He begins making assumptions about the state of their deity and hopes none of them are true. The Huzuki follower only keeps calm and waits for Natori to finish talking. When Natori's finally done, he laughs and tells him the truth. The reason why they never tried to save their master after he was sealed three years ago by a weak exorcist in a shrine up in the mountains was because they believed the seal was too weak to keep their master trapped in it for three good years. If their master wanted, he could have used his incredible powers to break the seal and free himself, but since he didn't do it, they assumed he must have been tired of ruling over the mountain for millennia and probably wanted to take a break from all the hard work. According to the follower, he and the others would sometimes guard the shrine all day hoping their master would break himself out before the next moon-splitting festival. But here they are, and nothing's been done about the seal. In summary, there's no telling where their master was. He may have abandoned them and left them all for dead. Hiragi stops him there and advises him to believe in his master a little more since he's not to abandon his position just like that. Natori, after hearing all the followers had to say, joined Natsume and Madara by the riverside. He engages them in some random talk about assistance, until Natsume finally spots the shining thing he saw by the riverside not too long ago. He quickly asks for Natori's help so he can get down to the shining thing. Just then, the beast they were hunting shows up and almost eats Natsume. Thanks to the charm Hiragi drew on his arm, the beast is repelled and Natsume is saved. After taking his people and hiding them near a rock, Madara cooks up a plan and asks Natsume to let him eat the beast and then vomit the head out so they can present it to the announcer and win the hunt. Natsume clearly refutes such a plan so he turns to Natori for ideas. Natori takes out the small vial he was given by his employer the previous day and tells Natsume to lure the beast into a magic circle so he can seal it in the vial. Natsume likes this plan so he immediately sets things up. In the next few minutes, Natsume manages to lure the beast to the circle and trap it there using Natori's power. After a successful exorcism, Natori hands him the vial and urges him to get going so he can win the hunt ASAP. Natsume looks over his shoulder and hears the Fuzuki followers tracking their scent. They quickly hide in a nearby bush where Natori creates a path for Natsume to get to the starting point. After he's gone, Natori gets out of his hiding place and threatens to harm anybody who tries to go after Natsume. Natori takes out a string of his talismans and exercises the Fuzuki followers. In the meantime, Natsume runs as fast as his legs can carry him just so he gets to the shrine in time to end the hunt. As he approaches the shrine, the yukai all notice his presence and wonder why he looks like an absolute mess. Natsume ignores them all and opens the vial to present the beast he and Natori previously captured. Upon seeing irrefutable evidence that he captured the beast, the announcers name Natsume the winner of the challenge. There's a loud uproar amongst the yukai which stops when Fuzuki arrives to confront his rival. He removes Natsume's disguise and exposes him to the several yukai there. Upon realizing Natsume is a human, Fuzuki confronts him and asks him if he banished Huzuki just like the other deities other humans had banished. Before he gives his answer, Natori and Madara both arrive with the stone where Huzuki is sealed. Natsume collects the stone and uses his powers to release Huzuki back into the real world. While he's at it, he takes a peep into Huzuki's memories and experiences a real combat match between Huzuki and Fuzuki. Just then, Huzuki appears to him and tells him about his dwindling powers. From the looks of things, Huzuki was actually too weak to break himself out of the seal he was placed in. Moments after he was released, Fuzuki called his dear friend, Huzuki, back to his side and forfeited the festival altogether. Natsume wakes up and realizes that it may be the last moon-splitting festival ever. Suddenly, the bright lights of Fuzuki, Huzuki, and their followers fly into the sky to meet their new destinies. Natsume thanks Natori for helping him with the problem, and then faints as the festival comes to an end. The next day, Natsume goes sick and gets teased by Madara. He gets a feel of the spring breeze and realizes spring has come. Shortly afterwards, he dresses up and heads out to a fountain to discuss a few things with Hiragi. She tells him the good news about Natori's clients like the job they did for the moon-splitting festival. Soon enough, Natori shows up with girls flocking around him, and Natsume raises his hand to say hi. After his discussion with Hiragi, Natsume heads to the convenience store to get a few snacks for Madara before coming back home. Upon getting home, he finds Shigeru holding an old camera and trying to take a picture with it. Shigeru tries to take Natsume's photo but then realizes that the camera is way too old to take any tangible photos. He urges Natsume to get into the house while he works on fixing the camera. Natsume bows and goes upstairs to his room after greeting his foster mother. As he enters his room, Natsume finds a group of yukai there to welcome him back home 
One of them asks Natsumi to return her name to her and Natsumi does the deed without any hassle. After he's done, Natsume gets exhausted and falls to the ground. Then he recalls how lonely his grandma Reiko would have been back when she was ostracized from the community she was living in back then. The next morning, Natsumi is called downstairs to have some breakfast. He happily brushes his teeth and heads down to have breakfast with his wonderful family. After breakfast, he checks through one of his boxes and finds an old picture of his parents. Just then, his friends Tanuma and Kitamoto show up for a visit. After settling down with his friends, Natsume finds out about the infamous soda water spring. As unreal as it sounds, Kitamoto claims that such a river exists, and he would be delighted to prove it to them if they go out with him the following day. Moving on, Kitamoto asks his buddies to play a prank on Nishimura who was arriving late. Natsume and the others go along with the prank, and they contemplate where to hide themselves. While they're at it, Tuko gets upstairs to invite Natsume to come and receive a call from Tachibana. On hearing the name, Natsume immediately goes downstairs to speak to her. After he's gone, Tanuma asks who Tachibana is, and Tuko tells him she's the person who takes care of the house Natsume and his real parents used to live in when he was little. While on the call, Natsume finds out that the real estate dudes are about to sell the house his parents lived in. They were calling him to inform him about the two-week visiting ultimatum before he was completely forbidden to enter the house. Natsume tells them there's absolutely nothing he'd want from that house, so they're free to sell it when they want. Tachibana thanks him for his cooperation and hangs up the call. Natsume puts on a smile and tells Tuko not to worry too much about him and that he's all good. At that instant, Nishimura shows up and Madara startles him by appearing from the back of the closet. As they all laugh and joke around, Nishimura finds something on the wall at the back of the closet and asks Natsume about it. Natsume pulled him back, begging him not to get too close, but Tanuma soon joined in to find out what the secret was. Eventually, Nishimura manages to sneak into the back of the closet and finds out Natsume had hung a photo of all four of them together to remember them by. This makes the environment in Natsume's room quite warm, as the boys get nostalgic memories and chat about their former memories till it gets late. When they're done, Natsume makes plans to go out with them to see the soda water springs at 1pm the next day. After his friends leave, Madara asks Natsume if he's sure about abandoning his parents' house. Natsume remembers some of the moments he had with his dad back when he was still alive. Apparently, his real mother died while giving birth to him, so Natsumi never had any memories about her. Madara keeps his eyes fixed on Natsumi as he realizes how mature Natsumi has become. That night, Natsumi falls asleep and dreams about one of the worst times of his life. All it takes for him to get back to normal is a simple turn and Natsume gets to sleep normally. By 1pm the next day, Natsumi's friends show up and wait for Natsumi to join them on their trip to find the soda water spring. In just a few minutes, the entire group are on their way to the springs with Nishimura leading the way. Judging by how dumb Nishimura probably was, he led them astray and made them walk in the forest, with the sun's heat beating the heck out of their bodies. Kitamoto gets a little pissed, and starts arguing with Nishimura. Meanwhile, Natsume and Tanuma are just somewhere laughing at the angry boys. Natsume, after laughing with Tanuma, suddenly remembers a memory he had with his dad. He stops walking and quickly forces himself out of the memory and wishes his brain never brought it up. As he turns back to continue moving with his boys, an evil yukai draws his legs back and drags him down the hill. He inches closer to Natsume to eat him up, but Madara shows up in the nick of time to chase the yukai away. After banishing the evil yukai, he asks Natsume to explain himself. Natsume checks his pocket and realizes that the picture he previously kept in his pocket is gone. He gets a little worried and starts searching for the photo but doesn't find it that instant. Just then, Nishimura and the others all invite Natsume to continue walking the path they just found, and Natsume abandons the search for the picture to follow his friends. Tanuma, on the other hand, could sense something wrong with his friends. When he asks Madara about it, Madara tells him the entire truth. Tanuma gets seriously worried for Natsume and speaks some sense into his head. He tells him not to act too strongly in front of everybody and just ask for help if he needs it. Natsume bows his head and humbly asks his friends to help him search for the photo. Everyone bent down and began searching the entire forest for the picture. By evening, Nishimura found the picture lying in the shrub somewhere and returned it to Natsume. Natsume retrieves his picture and takes one last look at it with tears in his eyes. Natsume lets out a soft sob to commemorate the memory of his parents. Shortly after he's done, they all head back to the town. There they run into Sasada and Taki strolling down their streets. Natsume and the others engage them in a friendly conversation and get to laugh again one more time. In a few hours, Natsume reaches his house and musters up the courage to ask Shigeru and Tuko to let him go to his parents' place to check some of the luggage he may have missed from them. Shigeru and Tuko would never pass up on a chance to finally have Natsumi move on from his past, so they wholeheartedly grant him permission to go. The next day, Natsumi boards the first express train heading to Hakota, his parents' hometown to finally see his old house before it's sold. Moments after entering the train, 
Natsume searches for his seat and finds a yukai sitting there comfortably. He politely asks for his seat and the yukai gets up and leaves. Natsume gets to enjoy the rest of his train ride without any yukai interruptions. At one point in the journey, Madara pops his head out of Natsume's handbag and startles him. He asks for a box lunch and Natsume tells him to calm down till lunchtime. After getting their lunch, the train makes a stop at Hakoda. Natsume picks up his bag and rushes onto another train to take him directly to his hometown. In the second half of his journey to his parents' hometown, Natsume discusses his former home with Madara. Upon arriving at Hakoda, his hometown, Natsume and Madara make a stop by the legendary udon shop Natsume always wanted to try. He soaks in the aroma of the delicious noodles and wishes he could at least get to buy one of them. Eventually, he ignores the scent and heads towards his friend's place. Every step in his little journey seemed to bring back nostalgic memories for him, as Natsume began to remember all those things he thought he had forgotten. When he gets close to his neighbor's house, he senses a yukai. On getting there, Natsume asks Madara to stay outside the house while he goes in to get the key to his parents' house. Madara argues with him and asks him about the yukai presence they felt earlier. Natsume tells him not to worry too much about him and that he'll be perfectly fine. However, if he's not back in a few hours, Madara should come to check up on him. Madara gets the memo so he stays on the fence outside the house. A few minutes later, Miyoko, the daughter of Natsume's neighbor, arrived with her friend. Miyoko had been complaining all day about Natsumi's visit. From the looks of things, Miyoko never liked Natsumi for anything. She always thought he was the creepy and useless liar everyone thought he was. If she could have her way, she would do away with the guy. But since it's her parents' house and they want to be nice to him, she has no choice but to go with their thoughts. Natsumi gets invited over to take some tea while the dad searches for the key to his parents' house. To avoid trouble, Natsumi insists he stays outside. But then Miyoko forces him inside to have some tea with her dad, so Natsumi has no choice. As he follows the dad to the living room, Natsumi notices the weird yukai that's been living in their house for ages but chooses to ignore it. The dad eventually finds the key before tea is ready and gives it to him. Natsumi tries to politely leave the house, but the dad keeps on asking him questions, which is kind of like a deal breaker for Natsume, who was just trying his hardest not to react to the monstrosity of a yukai that's under the living room table. When he can't take it anymore, he reacts to the yukai and makes the dad a little worried about his well-being. Natsumi excuses himself to use their bathroom and gets away from the yukai. On his way to the bathroom, however, he overhears Miyoko running her dirty mouth and talking smack about him to her mother, who was just trying to get her to be quiet. Natsume stands and listens silently to all the bad things Miyoko has to say about him. Just then, he senses the yukai from earlier and finds it hiding in the ceiling of the house. Natsume lets out a scream as the monster attacks and draws Miyoko's attention to him. Miyoko checked around to see what was making Natsume so scared. In the end, she was disappointed and left angrily. Natsume calms himself and returns to the living room to meet the dad who started asking questions about Tuko and Shigeru. Natsume listened in for just a few seconds until the yukai became more of a threat to him. The yukai got closer to him and kept on asking Natsume to let him into his heart, promising that he'd help him get rid of those people who said bad things about him. Natsume almost gives in to the monster's call, but thankfully Madara barged into the house and slapped some sense into Natsume's head. Natsume comes back to his senses and thanks Miyoko's family for the help. He then picks up the stray cat and takes him back outside the house. There, Natsume thanks Madara for coming through for him. Madara teases him again before getting serious. Apparently, the yukai that attacked him was already dying and needed a host to attach itself to before it died out. Natsume quickly gets a move on to avoid meeting the yukai ever again. However, he stopped when Miyoko comes by to scold him for taking advantage of his family. Before Natsume could say much, the yukai, who kept asking him to draw him a mouth, shows up and pursues Natsume and his cat all through town. The yukai gets more violent with them and forces Madara to change into his other form. He scares the yukai away and allows Natsume to rest on his fur. Shortly after the yukai's gone, Natsume continues his search for his house. After taking a look at the map one more time, he finds out he's lost and starts asking passers-by for directions to his house. In the meantime, Miyoko reflects on the dirty things she said to Natsume in the past and compares the poor boy to the man he is now and smiles. She recalls one of the horrible memories she had back when she was younger. That night, as they were having dinner, Miyoko had stopped eating simply because Natsume was there with her. Even still, her father still begged her to keep up with the lonely boy. The following day on their way to school, Miyoko got to know about Natsume's nice dad, but not his mom, as Natsume couldn't even remember having a mother. Natsume, after getting to an impasse, decides to stop and retrace his steps. Before he knows it, the evil yukai that's been following him all day shows up and possesses him. Natsume lies motionless on the grass and blacks out as Madara screams out his name. After losing all motion functions in his limbs, Natsume's consciousness slowly fades into nothing, 
as the evil yokai takes over his mind. In an effort to save his mind and soul, Natsumi's brain replays some of the memories Natsumi seems to have forgotten. Awful memories that Natsumi never wanted to remember. In one memory, poor Natsumi is seen running lost and confused in the forest after he just escaped a yukai. By sheer luck, he stumbled upon a shrine and immediately got acquainted with the serenity of the place. Natsume sits at the entrance to the shrine and immediately chooses that place to be his new spot to get away from the hard life he was forced to live. By nightfall, Natsume returns to his house and is made a wonderful dinner by Miyoko's mother. Miyoko refuses to eat that night and heads upstairs to get out of Natsume's sight. The following day, Natsume gets teased again by two bullies. As if that wasn't enough, the bullies went on to talk smack to Miyoko after realizing she was living with Natsume. Miyoko ran away hating everything and everyone. That same night, Miyoko refuses to eat dinner and gets her people a little worried about her. Her dad follows her out of the dining room and asks her to try to understand why they have Natsume staying over at their place. By the end of the day, Miyoko's parents allow her to sleep in their room for once, while Natsume sleeps alone. While she's away, Natsume checks some of the boxes Miyoko's dad retrieved from his former house and sees a picture of his mom and dad there. He smiles a little bit at the picture, but then drops it back in the box as he becomes very sad for his parents. Natsume cries himself to sleep that night but wakes up the next day stronger than ever. After preparing for their school, Natsume follows Miyoko to school the following morning. As usual, Miyoko asks him to walk further behind her so he doesn't affect her with his bad luck. Natsume keeps his head down and tries to be as polite as possible. However, Miyoko gets naughty and starts asking Natsume about his family, despite knowing that Natsume's parents were deceased. Nonetheless, Natsume kept a smile on his face and continued moving with his head down. That evening, Natsume went to his hiding spot, aka the shrine where he began harboring thoughts to go see his parents' house again. When it gets dark, Natsume heads home and asks Miyoko's dad if he could go see his parents' place. Miyoko's dad takes out a piece of paper and gives it to Natsume. It contained the address of the Natsume house a few miles away from there. Natsume collects the paper, thanks Miyoko's dad and heads to his room. On his way, he finds the ceiling yukai, which was way smaller back then, and forbids it from ever coming down to cause trouble for the residents ever again. What he didn't know was that Miyoko was hiding somewhere behind him and was watching him stare and shout at the ceiling. A few hours later, however, Natsume leaves the house and goes to the shrine to get a good evening's sleep. Natsume sleeps in and wakes up at the worst possible time. It was already very dark and there was a thunderstorm. As such, Natsume is trapped and unable to go home. He stays there scared and falls asleep at the entrance to the shrine. Thankfully, the Miyoko people already sent someone to help search for him. They found him at the entrance to the shrine and took him back to Miyoko's family. Miyoko's dad apologizes on Natsume's behalf and escorts them to their car. After they're gone, Miyoko gets out of her house and scolds Natsume harshly for causing her family so much trouble. Natsume, after receiving such harsh treatment from a stupid little girl, ran as fast as he could to get to his parents' residence. He stops on the way and cries like a little baby as he gets both tired and confused about what to do at the moment. He called for his dad, but then again there was no response. By that time, Natsumi's brain was already regaining a greater part of his body. The yukai realized this and tried his very best to take over Natsumi's body by force. Thankfully, Natsumi was able to snap himself out of the delusion he was in and exorcise the yukai by himself. He regains consciousness and finds the bug yukai slipping out of his body. On seeing the yukai, Madara destroys it and saves the day again. Then Natsume gets up from the grass and continues walking till he finds his parents' place. He finds the house a little old and rusty but since the key still works, he gets to open the doors and take a look. Madara follows him inside the house and finds the wonderful nostalgic drawings little Natsume had made when his dad was still alive. Shortly afterwards, Natsume and Madara take a break by the yard to talk about a few things. Natsume remembers a former memory he had with his dad on that same porch. That day, his dad told him about the flowers his mother planted in the small garden and wondered when they would start blooming. Natsume gets very sad from this memory and starts crying. In the end, he leaves the house with fond memories and says his final goodbyes to his old home. Natsume returns the key to Miyoko and boards the next train to the countryside. He arrives at the Fujiwara residence before dark and is welcomed by his new family. The next day, Natsume joins his friends to search for the soda water spring. This time around, Natsume uses the knowledge of some yukai to figure out the location. They find the bubbling soda water in a rusty iron well. Initially, they all get suspicious of how red the water is but eventually they get to drink the rusty water the way it is. After the outing with his family, Natsume finally takes a group photo with his new family, Tuko, Shigeru, and Madara. On his way to school the next Monday, Natsume is stopped on the way by a yukai who keeps calling him Reiko. Despite correcting the yukai several times that he's not Reiko, 
the yukai never lets him go. Suddenly, Natsume looks around his body and finds himself transforming into Reiko. This makes him let out a scream that wakes him up from the terrible he was having. Nishimura and another one of his colleagues are startled by the horrible scream they heard from Natsume's mouth as he wakes up. Nishimura asks Natsume what the matter is, and he keeps on talking about a woman and a ghost. Eventually, he snaps out of it and continues school like normal. When it's time to get back home, Natsume walks with his friends and gets home to continue his job of releasing yukai and acting like a normal kid. On his way back, however, Natsume senses a presence following him. He looks behind him and sees a large clay pot rolling vertically towards him. Natsume rushes back home and discusses the occurrence with Madara, who just passes it off as a normal thing. Later that day, Natsume takes a stroll with Madara, and they pass by a sweet shop. Madara begs Natsume to buy him some sweets, but then again, Natsume isn't ready to do such a thing. Instead, he is more interested in talking to an old family relative whom he just saw talking with someone. After she was done talking, Natsume approached her, and asked to know some information about his mother's family. Sadly, the woman talked like an absolute trash can, and even insulted the memory of Natsume's parents. When the heavy words became too much for him to bear, Natsume bowed down politely, and bade the woman farewell. Moments after she's gone, Tanuma branches out to see his buddy after shopping at a convenience store nearby. Natsume, scared that Tanuma had witnessed everything that just happened, asks for some time to talk. Tanuma grants him listening ears and gets to know more about Natsume's grandma and mother. He gets a little sorry for Natsume as he narrates all the tragedies that happened in his family. He stops him midway and asks him not to burden himself with the rubbish he heard from the woman. Natsume thanks his buddy and heads home with Madara before it gets too dark. Later that night, Natsume heads downstairs to get a drink. Sadly for him, he finds the large pot from earlier standing upright in front of his front porch and listens to what it has to say. Suddenly, an eye appears from the pot and accuses Reiko of stealing her joy and happiness. Confused, Natsume asks for more clarity, but the pot keeps on threatening to take away Natsume's joy if he doesn't return the object his grandma stole from her. Natsume still stood there confused about the entire thing. When the pot starts getting a little violent, Madara shows up and chases it away. By that time, Tuko called Natsume to come down for dinner, but then Natsume ignored her call and ran after the pot. He stumbles upon a shrine and knocks on the door. A beautiful girl opens the door halfway and tells Natsume about the object Reiko stole from the pot Yukai. Apparently, the joy and treasure the pot was complaining about was a beautiful doll and she wanted it back. Natsume struggles to understand what the Yukai is saying, but then the voices in the bushes around him get a little louder, so Madara advises him to leave before he's captured and eaten by the smaller Yukai. Natsume returns home and gets scolded by his foster parents for leaving the house without even telling them. He apologizes for his negligence and prepares himself for another trip to the shrine the next day. This time, however, he covers his face with a disguise and tries knocking to hear from the pot Yukai again. This time, a furball type of Yukai shows up and warns Natsume not to trust the pot Yukai as she's usually up to no good. Natsume thanks it for the help and carries it along to a safe place. On the way, the furball Yukai makes fun of Madara and gets him pissed. Madara gets a little violent with the furball, but then again, the furball explains to Natsume that the pot Yukai, Kayatsubo, is the one searching for the doll Reiko stole from her. At that point, two other Yukai spring from the bush beside them and find out about Natsume's search for the doll. They tell him about a certain doll someone threw in the bushes west of where they were and urge Natsume to try searching for the doll there. Natsume thanks them for the help, and goes to search for the doll there, with Madara. Unknown to him, a large black yukai was following every step of the way. Once they get to the bushes the two yukai described, Natsume and Madara search and finally find the doll the pot yukai was searching for. Suddenly, the pot yukai appears from behind a tree and asks to see the doll Natsume found in the bush. From the looks of things, the pot yukai appears to be the beautiful lady Natsume and Madara saw a few days earlier. Upon seeing it, she gets disappointed at how ugly the doll is, and decides to take Natsume's happiness away from him. She gets back into her pot and rides it towards Natsume's house. Almost immediately, Madara changed his form and flew towards Natsume's house to protect it. Natsume tries to follow him. Him, but then the large black yukai from earlier picks him up and tries to take over his mind. Natsume gets a peep into one of his memories with Reiko. That day was just a random day, but the large yukai was lucky enough to see and argue with Reiko. Somewhere along the line, Reiko hears a little human girl crying and goes to check up on her. The little girl tells her she lost her doll when she fell, but now she can't find it. Reiko dusts her clothes and tells the girl to go home and wait for her to bring the doll to her. Soon after the little girl's gone, the pot Yukai shows up and claims the girl's doll to be hers. Reiko tried to correct her, but then again, 
the pot yukai started getting violent. The large black yukai quickly picks Reiko up and urges her to go for the doll after the pot yukai's asleep. Reiko waits till the yukai sleeps and retrieves the doll from the pot. Then she returns the doll to the little girl's parents, but they reject it from her because they don't want anything to do with the weirdo. After getting rejected, Reiko returned to the forest to search for the pot yukai so she could have the doll back. Sadly, she didn't find Kayatsubo, so she threw the doll into the forest. Natsume snaps out of it and tells the large black yukai his predicament. The black yukai tells him to be careful and also asks for his name back. However, since Natsume was running short on time, he told the yukai to be patient and wait for him to return. During his second visit, he also promised to bring him some manju for him to snack on. The yukai lets him go and Natsume starts running towards the house. He eventually gets home before the pot and finds Madara sitting on the roof. Madara transforms back to his normal self and follows Natsume inside. There, Natsume shows his mom the doll and asks her to help restore it back to its former self. Tuko spends the entire evening restoring it and does a pretty good job doing it. By nightfall, Natsume places the doll at the entrance of the house and waits for the pot yukai to come by. When it does, the pot yukai gets her doll back and returns to the forest a happier yukai. The next day, Natsume heads out with Madara to buy some manju for the large yukai from earlier. The next day in school, Nishimura tries to invite Natsume out to eat after school. Sasada shows up and tells them to get back home as quickly as possible so they don't get drenched by the rain. The boys initially don't believe her, but then again, the rain caught them on their way home. Luckily, a random lady in one of their classes showed up with some umbrellas and gave them to the boys before rushing to the bus waiting for her. After seeing her off, Natsume and his friends continue running to their respective homes. Natsume gets separated from his friends and stumbles on a towel belonging to a yukai taking the form of a little girl. Before he could say hi, Natsume's friends came and dragged him away from the yukai. Moments after getting back home and changing his clothes, Natsume and Madara take a look at the weird towel they got from the yukai and head downstairs to check things out. Suddenly, they find a stranger's flip-flop at the entrance and notice wet little footprints scattered all over the floor. Natsume and Madara get into an argument and fight over who let the stranger in when Tuko suddenly calls Natsume to come to do something for her. Natsume leaves the entrance and heads back to his room before answering his mother. There he finds the little yukai girl hiding under his desk and places her towel gently on the desk before going to hide. Thinking they were gone, the little girl comes out of her hiding place and gets her towel back. Just then, Madara scares the little one and forces her to hide in the closet. Natsume scolds his pet for being too harsh on the little one and then tries a softer approach. He speaks gently to the girl and asks her to politely leave his house and return no more. Rather than respect his wishes, the little girl confirms Natsume's identity and tells him about her mission. Apparently, the towel in her hand was given to her by a human earlier, but now that she's done using the towel, she wants to return it to him. Natsume gets a little confused and asks her for more clarification. The girl draws him a weird sketch of the man and tells Natsume to help her find the man. Natsume tells her to find the man herself, but then, the girl begs and cajoles him into helping her. The next morning, Natsume seeks permission from his parents to go out that morning. When he gets it, he heads towards the city with the little yukai girl and Madara. After going on a long arse trip with her, they finally arrive at the bus stop where the little girl got the towel. Natsume noticed how old the bus stop was, and asked the little girl when she got the towel. After hearing that she's been holding onto the towel for 50 years, Natsume realizes she may be looking for a grandpa. To continue their search, Natsume takes the girl to the nearby town and searches for him till he gets tired. When he decides to take a break from all the walking, the little girl gets scared thinking he is about to die. Natsume assures her he's fine and is just getting some rest. After a few minutes, he should be back to normal. The little girl's mind gets settled and she asks Natsume if the man may still be alive. Natsume assures her he's going to be fine and the little girl tells him to continue their search. Natsume Natsume gets up from the bench and continues searching for the man. The little girl follows him all around town until they run into someone whose scent resembles that of the man's. Natsume stops the person, who turns out to be a high schooler, and asks about her grandfather. The lady looked at him confused, but when Natsume tried to explain himself, her friend called her back to join her. The lady bows her head in respect for Natsume and continues walking. Natsume and the little girl call it a day and postpone their search to the next day. The next day in school, Natsume finds Nishimura looking blue and gloomy. He asks what the matter is, and Nishimura painfully tells him about his encounter with the random girl who gave him the umbrella. He went to that same spot to return the umbrella, and probably talked to her, but he only got heartbroken when he saw her with her boyfriend. Natsume feels for him and promises to take him out to eat sometime later. After school, Natsume waits for the high schooler from earlier and finds her returning home from school. He approaches her to talk to her, but the high schooler gets angry at Natsume for lying about knowing her grandfather. Natsume, who's just happy to discover that her grandpa is alive, smiles back and tries to explain himself to her. Just then, the lady becomes very rude and walks out on Natsume before he gets to say anything. Natsume tries to follow her, but then, the little girl Yukai from earlier stops him and apologizes for making him get insulted on her behalf. 
She decides to tell Natsume her story with that grandpa, and she does this with tears in her eyes. It all began on a rainy night when the little yukai girl was outside enjoying the bliss the rain brought her body. After dancing all around the forest, she finds herself in front of a human hiding from the rain under a tree canopy. Upon seeing the little girl dancing in the rain, the man scolded her for trying to catch a cold, and asked her to come with him. Initially, the little girl Yukai was a little surprised a human could see her, but before she knew it, the man pulled her to the stand and gave her the towel. Shortly after helping her clean her body, the man's bus arrived and he left her there at the stand. That night, the little girl admired the towel so much that she cuddled with it all night long. When morning came, she decided to return the towel to him. She walked to the bus stop but found someone else there. Thinking he would one day come back, she waited for him at the bus stop for days, weeks, and years and would sometimes play in the rain just so the man would see her and scold her again. Sadly, nothing happened, and the girl gave up hope until now. The little girl thanks Natsume for help, and tells him to get back to his normal life. Natsume, however, leaves her in Madara's hands, and catches up to the high schooler who left him earlier. After catching up to her, he properly introduces himself and tells her the real truth. This time, the high schooler relates with him, and tells him that her grandpa is currently undergoing treatment for the flu. Natsume thanks her, and lets the little yukai girl know about it before going back home. That night, he allows the little girl to sleep in his closet while they both wait for D-Day. The next day, the little girl gives Natsume the towel to give the man when he sees him. Natsume collects the towel and heads into the hospital to see the elderly man. On getting to his room, he presents the towel to him and asks him if he remembers the person he gave the towel. Sadly, the grandpa told him he doesn't remember shit. Natsume looks around and finds the little girl near the man. By sheer luck, the little girl calls the man's name and bids him farewell for being a good person to him. After they meet with the grandpa, the little girl Yukai follows Natsume to the bus stop and separates herself from him. The next day, Natsume got to the hospital to see the man one more time, and asked for a souvenir he could give the poor little yukai girl. Thankfully, the grandpa gave him a new towel, and Natsume ran towards the bus stop to give the little girl the towel. After receiving the towel, the little girl's face brightens up in happiness as she realizes how lucky she is to get such a nice gift from a human. A few days later, while Natsume strolls back to his house after a stressful day in school, he finds his cat, Madara, running through the neighborhood and asks what his deal is. Madara tells Natsume he's off to do some research about a certain anomaly puzzling him. Natsume tries to know more about about it, but then Madara runs away to continue his search. Moments after he's gone, Nishimura shows up and joins Natsumi in his trek to cram school. On their way there, Nishimura complains about the stress cram school is making him pass through and wishes there was a better alternative to school. Natsumi tells him to stop thinking of alternatives and just continue trying to make things work. Besides, he's paying tuition to go to school, and nobody would want such a huge sum to go to waste. Nishimura changes the topic after realizing it wasn't paying him, and talks about a girl he saw earlier that week. Natsumi keeps quiet and chuckles as listens to Nishimura pour his heartbroken heart out again. In the end, the two friends part ways and Natsume finally arrives home. Tuko welcomes him back home and asks him to help her pick up the mail from their mailbox. Natsume picks up the mail and finds a letter from the Matoba clan leader, Seiji Matoba. Tuko shows up a little while later and finds Natsume in a frisky mood. She asked him what the matter was, but then Natsume reassured her that things were fine before running out of the house and into the forest to check and read the letter. On his way, Natsume hears something in the distance and approaches it. As he hides in a shrub, he finds someone getting attacked by a yukai and considers helping him. To his surprise, the person actually turns out to be an exorcist as he seals the monster in a clay pot and causes a wild wind to blow away Matoba's letter from Natsume's hand. Upon realizing the letter is gone, Natsume bends down to search for it and this alerts the exorcist. He gets close to check up who's behind the shrub, but Madara comes in and saves Natsume from getting caught. After the exorcist's gone, Madara talks down on the letter and tells Natsume not to worry too much about looking for it. Shortly afterwards, Madara senses some struggle within the pot, the young exorcist sealed the yukai in, and realizes that the yukai was imperfectly sealed. In a few days, the pot should break, and the yukai would be let out of the pot angrier and stronger than ever. This made Natsume so worried that he picked the pot up and decided to do something about it. In the meantime, the young exorcist ran towards his master to tell him about his most recent exorcism. The master, who seems to be a suspicious yukai hiding under a human guise, commends him for a job well done and encourages him to do more exorcisms. After a few hours of traveling, Natsume and Madara finally arrive at Natori's condo. So Natsume plans on consulting Natori's expertise in exorcism to reseal the yukai before it escapes the pot. He tries pressing the doorbell system to Natori's room, but there's no response. Soon, Hiragi shows up and questions his reason for being there. Natsume explains his plight to her and she tells him to press the buttons a few more times 
time so Natori can get up from his sleep. Natsume obeys her orders and finally gets a response from Natori, who is actually sleeping at the moment. Natori gets dressed and invites him up to his room. On getting there, Natsume gets a little surprised at how empty the room is, and asks Natori why that is so. Natori laughs and tells him he rarely lives in the room, so that's the major reason why. Madara snoops around the entire place and finds a closet with a few sealed, powerful yukai pots there. Natori quickly stopped him from going too far and sealed the doors to the closet, before going to make tea for both of them. When he finally gets time to settle down, Natori looks at the seal and says a thing or two about it. He explains to Natsume that the seal was done by a greenhorn exorcist with no experience whatsoever sealing yukais. Natsume gets a little worried and asks Natori if he can help him seal the yukai this time around. Natori happily agrees to help Natsume seal the yukai, so he gets up and heads to the other room to prepare the magic circle for the exorcism. Natsume remains in the living room to check up on the yukai when suddenly, the phone rings. Since there was no one to pick up, the call went straight to voicemail and the person on the other end began speaking curse words to aggravate the yukai in the pot. The yukai gets so violent that it breaks itself out of the pot and follows Natsume to the other room where the ritual commenced. In a matter of seconds, Natori successfully reseals the yukai in another sealing pot. After that, Natsume gets curious and asks Natori about the phone call from earlier. Natori smiles and tells him it was a prank call from one of his haters, and he's pretty used to them by now. Natsume asks why the prank callers were targeted, and Natori tells him about the painful past of the Natori Exorcist clan. Back when they still had dozens of members who could see Yukai, the Natori clan was a notorious clan, known for their immense power and strength in sealing Yukai. This made the rival clans hate them so much that they would try to prank them into making mistakes. However, the Natori clan's power came to a standstill when new babies born into the clan couldn't see Yukai anymore. As they say, Natori is the last of his kind in his clan, and a lot of people don't like how good he is in the business. Natori then moves on to talk about forbidden techniques like the Book of Friends and how dangerous it was. Hearing this, Natsume spaces out and gets a little worried about his connection to the Book of Friends. Eventually, he snaps out of it when Natori thanks him for his help and sees him off. After his visit, Natsume boards the next train heading to his town and gets home in one piece. Meanwhile, Natori finds Matoba's letter in his living room and opens it to find out its contents. Natori, on the other hand, runs into Matoba himself on the way home. Matoba introduces himself as a friend this time and asks Natsume to follow him to a secure location for their discussion. Even though Madara initially is against it, Natsume decides to follow Matoba to hear what he has to say. On getting to the meeting location, Matoba settles down and tells Natsume about the yukai pretending to be a human and cajoling their young exorcists into attacking their own clan. He wanted Natsume to attend a party he hosted and help him figure out who the imposter Yukai was. Natsume refuses to help him and rushes towards his house after Matoba threatens to off his family. That night, Natsume weighs out his options and considers helping the Matoba clan with their imposter problem. That night, Natsume gets to have a nice dinner with his family and on the next day he heads to the secure location to offer his help to Matoba. After hearing all Natsume had to say, Matoba takes him back to one of their villas for the event. On the way, they get to discuss exorcist clans and Matoba's letter. Eventually, they get there and Matoba heads inside with Natsume. Upon getting inside the villa, Natsume is amazed by its sheer size and spaciousness. He also notices several servants of the Matoba clan bowing down to show their respects, but then sees a few of the Yukai servants laughing at him. Natsumi ignores them and asks Matoba about the other villa the Matoba clans may have. Matoba tells Natsumi about the original owners of the villa and explains that the Matoba clan took it from them when their clan could no longer birth children that could see Yukai. Moving on, Matoba talks about the Natori clan and mentions just how bad and unfortunate their predicament was. Everyone initially thought of them to be a dead clan with no name whatsoever that relies on old glories to thrive. However, with someone like Natori Shuichi leading the clan currently, they've been forced to eat their own words. He also mentions just how bothersome it was for Natori to run the clan on his own, so he abandoned his clan and decided to work alone. By that time, Matoba shows Natsume his changing room and tells him to be ready for the event in an hour. Before leaving, however, he tries asking Natsume to join the Matoba clan again. Natsume refuses him, and Matoba decides to threaten him. Before he could do that, he heard a loud scream from the other room and excused himself to go check it out. After he's gone, Natsume rests his head on the table to catch his breath and discuss a little with Madara. He tries calling his sensei's name but then finds him tired from the barrier surrounding the villa. Natsume picks his cat up and pets it a little before a weird woman shows up to say hi. Initially, she comes off as just a normal person, but then Natsume begins to notice something eerie about her when he hears the crunching sound in her mouth while she chews her gum. Natsume decides to keep quiet and think of more evidence before concluding. Matoba enters in a few seconds and comes face to face with 
with the woman. Natsumi gets a clearer view of the woman's face and realizes that she is wearing a yukai mask. He immediately sounds a warning to Matoba, pushes the woman away, and orders her to expose herself. The yukai knows it's been made, so it tries to go for Matoba. Sadly, it was already too late as Matoba's yukai servants were already there to destroy the yukai. From the looks of things, the Magatsuman yukai is on a rampage again and this time, it's seeking to steal the face of every weak exorcist it can possess by creating little masks to cover their faces and then controlling such yukai to attack Matoba Seiji, the leader of the clan. Matoba appreciates Natsume's deductive thinking and invites him to come help them that day. Natsume gives this a long hard thought and decides to go along with Matoba for that day alone. Matoba gets him dressed to look like one of his shiki and takes him to the event. After giving a wonderful speech to the people, the event begins and everyone starts mingling with one another. A bunch of goody two-shoe exorcists who know nothing about exorcism come by to bully Natsume. Matoba's new Shiki, but Madara quickly stops them and creates an escape route for Natsume. Natsume picks him up and runs to a much quieter part of the villa. There he stops in the corridor and asks Madara how he got over his stomach ache. Madara tells him that he got someone to put a seal on his head to stop the incessant headaches from frying his brain. At that point, Natsume hears something moving outside the windows and opens it up to check it out. He finds another exorcist smoking on the other floor and asks if he saw the thing making the weird sound. The man only laughs and talks down on him, seeing as Natsume is dressed like Shiki, aka the lowest rank yukai in the entire villa. Matoba shows up seconds later and asks Natsume what he is doing in the corridor alone. Natsume tells him about the weird sound he heard earlier, and Matoba checks outside only to see nothing. As a precaution, he sketches some form of protection talisman on Natsume's hand and tells him to touch anybody he deems suspicious enough so their real identity will be exposed. Natsume looks at the talisman and remembers Natori's newt yukai. He asks Matoba about it, and Matoba tells him how dangerous such yukai can be on Natori's body. He tells Natsume a few more derogatory things about yukai and tries to get him into the clan once again. Natsume refuses and rushes towards the screen he heard not too long ago. Upon getting to the source of the scream, he finds a greenhorn exorcist knocked out on the floor and touches his face with the talisman. Thankfully, nothing happens, and the exorcist tells him about the weird face that attacked him. Before he could make sense of the entire thing, two other exorcists came by and blamed Natsume for knocking out one of their exorcists. Madara bites one of their legs and escapes the room with Natsume. Natsume heads back to the hall and starts touching random people, hoping to reveal one of them as the faced monster. When he gets tired of touching people's faces, he goes upstairs and overhears three exorcists hatching a plan to overthrow Sage. Matoba as the clan leader, as his crimes against humanity and yukai are both preposterous and uncalled for. Tired of hearing such, Natsume leaves the place quietly and heads towards the same corridor again. He suddenly finds the same yukai face creeping upstairs and rushes to the next floor to find the same man who is still smoking. He sees a small crack on his face and touches it. The yukai reacts to the talisman and leaves the man's face. Then he tries to attack Natsume but Madara transforms into his kitsune form and chases the yukai to the hall downstairs. Madara and Natsume head downstairs and barge into the hall to search for the yukai. On seeing them, the Matoba exorcists there attacked Natsume for bringing such a beast inside their villa. Natsume tries to explain things to them, but the dumb people don't listen. The faced yukai frees itself from Madara's mouth and tries to possess one of the people there. Thankfully, Matoba shows up in the nick of time and stops the yukai from escaping the villa. After the event, Matoba escorts Natsume outside the villa and discusses a few more things about the Magatsume. He mentions a few more things about his position in the clan, and also expresses his disappointment in the fact that Natsume never got to read his letter. Natsume gets super pissed at Matoba's manipulative tactics and leaves the villa. In the meantime, Natori is seen standing somewhere on a cliff when he brings out Matoba's letter and rips it to shreds. After his ordeal in Matoba's villa, Natsume returns to his normal life of going to school and coming back to see the wonderful parents he lives with. One day after closing, Natsume and Nishimura stay behind to help clear off some textbooks from a classroom. Natsume checks the board and finds weird writings on it. He asked Nishimura, who was heading out of the class, if he could see the writings on the chalkboard. Nishimura looks at the board and finds nothing there. Natsume gets a little puzzled as he realizes that a yukai must have written it. He gets closer to the scribbled text and makes out a few words from it. While reading the words, save me and take it, Natsume senses someone watching him, and rushes outside to check out who the person is. To his surprise, however, there's no one there. Rather, Natsume finds Taki somewhere around the corridor and sits down with her outside to discuss something that is bugging her. Recently, Taki has been noticing Yukai moving around her house. Sometimes it may be a little tap on her ceiling, while other times, she hears something crying for attention. When the noise got too much for her, she decided to use her magic circle to invite them to her plane so she could see them. That day, she invited one of the yukai living in her house to show himself to her. To her surprise, a large hairy yukai appeared in her circle, 
and introduced himself as soft and easygoing. Taki listens to his plight and finds out that he is actually trapped within the mansion on his journey to another place. So, he appeared to her to beseech her to help him find a way out of the mansion. Out of the goodness in her heart, Taki drew him a map around the house and gave it to him. The yukai got the map and promised to put a flower branch in front of her mansion as proof if he ever made it out. The next day, Taki finds a flower branch on her front porch and realizes that she is able to help the yukai find his way out. Natsume smiles at her and encourages her to do more good deeds for such yukai. Shortly afterwards, Madara shows up with a can of cat food. Taki sees him and wraps her hand all around him. Thankfully, Madara makes it out of the cuddle and returns home with Natsume. After eating his food, Madara makes some comments about the yukai smell he perceived on Taki's body. Natsume asks him about it and Madara tells him there's a high chance Taki's house is still being haunted by yukai. Upon hearing this, Natsume puts on his clothes and heads over to Taki's mansion with Madara in his human form to warn Taki about the yukai living in her house. On getting there, Taki makes a few comments about Madara's body since she didn't know he was the one in the body and gets a little scolded for it. Taki invites Natsume inside to get some food before they search for the yukai plaguing the house. After eating a boatload of food, Madara talks to Taki bluntly, asks her about her grandpa's forbidden technique and advises her to throw it in the trash when she's done. Taki finds out the hard way that the technique she's been so accustomed to is a forbidden technique. Natsume tries to sweet talk her but then again he hears a footstep in the corridor upstairs. Natsume and Madara immediately stop eating and chase after the yukai. Madara senses one of the yukai in a separate room and traps it while in his kitsuna form. The yukai, which appears to be a rat-like creature, bites Madara's hands and frees himself. Madara gets pissed and tries to kill the rat but then Natsume steps in and punches him back to his cat form. Moments later, Natsume takes the miniature yukai to Taki's table and discusses a few things with it. From the information given, the little rat thing is actually a rabbit that was traveling on a long journey with his friend another fellow miniature rabbit. They stopped over at the mansion to rest and got confused when it was time to leave. The rabbit and his friend tried to find their way out of the mansion, but then again, the barriers put in place were so random and bizarre that they eventually got separated from each other. The sad little yukai gives Natsume some details about his other friend and scolds Natsume about his choice of friends. Being unable to hear the yukai, Taki keeps asking Natsume for interpretations. After the question and answer session, Natsume and the yukai sneak a peek at the blooming flower branch near the windowsill. Natsume Natsume checks the sill and finds the hairy yukai staring at Taki through the window. Natsume rushes inside and asks the hairy yukai to explain what he meant to convey on the chalkboard back in school. Embarrassed, the hairy yukai covers his face in shame and makes Natsume promise not to tell anybody what he's about to tell him. Natsume keeps calm and looks straight into the hairy yukai's eyes. The yukai starts his story and tells Natsume that he used to live in a tree somewhere in the mountains until the tree was cut down by the humans. No matter how hard he screamed, nobody came to help him. So, he found another tree on the other side of the mansion and passed through it, only to get trapped. It was when Taki called him to stand in her circle that he saw a human's eye for the first time. He mentions that he felt a certain sensation that made him come back to see Taki even after escaping the barriers inside the house. By that time, Taki came by to check up on him, and the hairy yukai threatened to snap his neck if he ever made mention of him being there. Natsumi keeps his mouth shut and decides to go search for the rabbit's friend. He spends the next few hours searching for the traveling rabbit only to come upon finding nothing. The hairy yukai decides to help as well. At one point during their search, Natsumi passes through a barrier with the pig rat on his shoulder. This comes as a surprise to him as he never for once thought that could be possible. Just then, they hear the hairy yukai's voice telling them to to come check the second floor where they found a heavy door. Natsumi joins him and opens the heavy door with the others. Beyond the door, they find the second rabbit who is later reunited with his comrade. Right there, the hairy yukai takes the two rabbits and puts them on his shoulder. Before leaving, however, he tells Natsumi about the things he wrote on the chalkboard. Taki arrives that instant only to find Natsumi lying on the ground unconscious. Apparently, the hairy yukai just left Taki to Natsumi to take care of. Natsume takes Taki to a bench to talk a little bit with her before heading back to school to read the writing on the board properly. From what he could see, the hairy yukai was just confessing his love for Taki. Nothing more, nothing less. Natsume ends that chapter of his life and moves on to the next. This time, he's seen running frantically through the forest as if something was chasing after him. Suddenly, he's captured by two yukai who popped up out of a tree branch. These two weirdly shaped yukai pinned Natsume to the tree trunk and placed a voice-inhibiting curse on Natsume rendering him unable to speak or say anything for the next few days. Natsume punches himself out of their hold and tries to escape. Sadly for him, the two weird yukai caught up to him again and pinned him to the ground this time. Just as they're about to take control over his body, a large owl-shaped yukai shows up and chases the two yukai away, thinking the Natsume they were harassing was Natsume Reiko. After they're gone, Reiko picks Natsume up and takes him to his nest. Natsume tried to explain himself to the bird, but unfortunately he couldn't speak. After they arrive at the nest, which is a valley filled with dead trees, 
Natsume tries his absolute best to tell the bird that he's not really Reiko, all to no avail. Natsume tried scribbling his name on the ground, but still, the bird couldn't understand him. Eventually, he gives up and decides to have some fun with the bird. The bird takes Natsume fishing and catches a few fish and some snakes for him to eat. Clearly, Natsume couldn't eat them, so he abandoned the food. Next up, the bird takes Natsume to the magic circle Reiko drew back when she came to visit, expecting him to react and play with him. Sadly, Natsume couldn't make out the drawing as it was faint and covered with sand and leaves. Soon after, Madara shows up in his kitsune form and scolds Natsume for being so reckless as to stray away. Natsume punches his head and Madara changes back to his former form. He takes a look at Natsume's curse and tells him it'll heal in a few days. Madara thanks the bird for his help, and the bird jumps up and down calling Natsume Takashi, Natsume Reiko. Madara corrects him and lets him know that the person he's with at the moment isn't Reiko but Takashi. The bird becomes a little sad, but Natsume pets it and follows Madara back home. Upon getting home, Tuko gets really scared and surprised to hear about Natsume's temporary voice loss. She immediately cooks up some home remedies to help Natsume get his voice back, and gives Natsume a notepad to write his speech on. After dinner that night, Natsume heads home with his notepad, and discusses a few things with Madara. Madara suggested acting sick so Shigeru could bring up some of those delicious egg sake he was talking about in the dining room to taste. Natsume ignores Madara and starts working on how to get back to the nest to make amends to the bird Yukai. The next morning, Natsume finds out from Tuko that his friend Nishimura asked her to tell Natsume to bring over some handouts from Tanuma and Kitamoto when coming. Afraid of infecting them with his throat infection, Natsume tells his mom he'll probably just pass by and say hi. Tuko understands and gives him some daikon radish syrup to help his throat get better. Shortly afterwards, Natsume heads back to his room to entertain Hino and the other yukai friends who came to see him. Hino tells Natsume to be patient and wait a full week before his throat heals. This comes as a shock to Natsume who originally thought he would be healed in a few days. Eventually, Natsume accepts his fate and sees his yukai friends home after their friendly visit. He gets downstairs to have some dinner with his mother and gets back up to take a look at the book of friends. While at it, he writes on his notepad and begs Madara not to leave him unprotected for his drinking trips. Madara says a few more sassy things and finds the weird bird yukai peeking at them from Natsume's window. Natsume lets it in and realizes that it wants its name back. When asked why, the bird tells Natsume it's going on a journey to find greener pastures. He's been waiting several years for Reiko to someday come back to him one day, and now that he knows she's dead, he presumes there's no need for him to stay at the lifeless nest anymore. After hearing all the things the bird Yukai had to say, Natsume opens the Book of Friends and tries to return the name without speaking the chant. Shortly before he does anything tangible, the lights go out, and there's a power outage. Natsume gets very alert and asks his master to protect Tuko while he searches for the intruders. In a split second, more annoying Yukai come for the rest of Natsume's body. Madara gets really pissed this time and threatens to eat all of them if they don't return Natsume's voice to him. The Yukai are all scared shitless, so they quickly return Natsume's voice to him before running away from the house. Immediately, they're gone. The lights come back on and Natsume has his voice back. Now that he's able to speak, Natsume wakes the bird Yukai up and finally returns his name to him. As usual, Natsume peeks into his most fond memory with Reiko and finds the two of them playing human games together. That day was the day Reiko drew the circle back at the nest. She played the jumping game with the Yukai after explaining the rules to him. Once the bird Yukai gets it, he has the best fun in his life with Reiko. After playing the game with her, Reiko takes her leave and asks after the bird Yukai's name, which later turns out to be Hidaka. He returns Hidaka's name and celebrates his returned voice with his friends. Moments before embarking on his journey, the bird discusses a few more things with Natsume. Although he's sad Reiko never came back for him, he's still glad to have his name back. Following the discussion, the bird Yukai flies to his next destination, leaving Natsume and his cat staring at him. That evening, Natsume meets up with Shigeru on his way back home and escorts him to the house. The following day, Tanama, Natsume, and the other two friends all board a bus together heading for one of Tanama's relatives' inn. Apparently, the inn is to be renovated in a few days, and Tanama asked for help from his friends to help with the cleanup. After traveling for a few hours on end, Tanama and the others all arrive at the inn. They're greeted warmly by the receptionist there and taken to their various rooms. After showing them to their room, the receptionist tells them about the mountain festival that's to be held the second day and advises them to have fun once they're done with the cleanup. Then, she shows them the annex accessible only to them and five other guests present who'll be staying in the inn overnight. The boys were very happy to see how comfy life was about to get for them, so they put down their bags and get into their work clothes to begin cleaning up. While Natsume and Tanuma sweep the leaves off the outdoor staircase, an elderly woman Tanuma recognizes as Ido. Ido used to be a very sweet nanny to Tanuma any time he visited the inn in his younger days. As she frolics around Natsume and Tanuma, Nishimura and Kitamoto show up with brooms in their hands. This brings joy to the happy nanny, and she offers them sweets to calm themselves. After their meeting with Ido, Natsume and Tanuma take some rest by the inside to discuss a few things with each other. Tanuma narrates 
narrates the horrible experience he had with his father back when he was younger. After their little discussion, Natsumi and his friends all serve the guests and retire to their rooms after taking a bath in the bathhouse. Moments before they sleep, Natsumi and his friends talk about seeing a photo collection. They talk, talk, and talk until they all fall asleep. Later that night, Natsumi wakes up after hearing a yukai pass by him. Madara wakes up at about the same time and finds the yukai getting into the closet. They open the closet and see the yukai getting into the ceiling. Madara follows the yukai and starts tracking it. Natsume keeps his cool till the next day. After washing themselves up the second day, Natsumi informs Tanuma about the yukai he found the previous night. Tanuma nods his head in agreement and follows Natsumi and the others back inside to have a nice breakfast. A few seconds before eating breakfast, Natsumi and his friends notice one of their breakfasts is missing. This comes off as suspicious to Natsumi as he counts the guests currently eating at the table and realizes there are six people there as opposed to the five people he knew about the previous day. He goes over to the receptionist's desk to confirm the guest count, but then the receptionist tells him the guest count is actually six. This must mean one of them is the yukai that attacked them yesterday. This makes Tanuma a little sad when he finds out some yukai could disguise themselves as people. Nevertheless, Natsume still returns to his normal duties and cleans the inn's lobby. While at it, a guest comes by and asks for him for the time the festival would be beginning. After giving him a nice answer, Natsume turns to see the wonderful girl running and playing outside the yard. She suddenly falls to the ground and wounds herself. Natsume leaves his work and heads to the store to grab the first aid kit. Suddenly, he hears some words from the room down the corridor and walks over to check it out. Lo and behold, there was a yukai there in the dark room that was just about to get back into the roof. Before Natsume could say a thing, the yukai covers his mouth and tells him about the mask she's been wearing to help preserve the festival. When Natsume calms himself down, the yukai morphs back into its human form, and Natsume finds out Ito has been the yukai all along. Ito smiles and tells him the ugly truth about her life. Apparently, she's been a yukai for who knows when, and has been given the responsibility to protect the mountain festival for as long as she lived. This year, however, her mask, which is a white woman's face, got stolen this time and she was up to find it. Now that Natsumi's shown his face, she orders him to help her find her mask and keep it a secret from anybody till she's gone. Then she heads outside the room, and Natsume follows her only to bump into Tanuma on the way outside. He tries telling Tanuma everything, but then Madara spills his mouth and tells him everything. In a split second, Tanuma's in on the rescue mission, and he goes down to help Natsume search for the one who stole the yukai. Initially, the two plan to sneak past the guests and notice their behaviors, hoping they will find something that works. Sadly, this doesn't work. At one point in the search, Natsumi decides to ask one of the guests about the mask. He asks the first guest he finds, but then almost gets no answer. Just when he's about to give up hope, the man calls him again and tells him about a mask he saw a couple wearing. Natsume suddenly hears a child laughing in the distance and rushes to go check up on her. He finds her laughing with the mask and tells her to stop it. Just then, the mother Utaka shows up and slips the mask off the girl's face before running frantically to the roof laughing like a maniac. Madara and Natsume catch up to the woman and manage to pin her down. Before before they know it, Ito shows up from nowhere and retrieves the mask from the woman. The release of spiritual energy causes Natsume to break down with a fever. Tanama takes care of him by staying close to him and abandoning the festival. While at it, he expresses just how disappointed he is to not be able to attend the festival. But then again, he's glad to help his friend recuperate from saving the world. Shortly afterwards, Nishimura and Kitamoto show up to continue taking care of their dear friend. By nightfall, while everybody sleeps, Grandma Ito appears to Natsume and reminds him to keep her identity hidden till the festival the following day. Natsume asks her why, and she says she plans on leaving the inn now that she's been found by Natsume. Natsume holds onto her clothes and begs her not to leave the inn all alone. The woman smiles and pets Natsume's head, before promising to attend the festival held the next evening. The next day, Natsume and his friends attend the festival in earnest, as they get to witness the rich culture the festival has to bring. In the end, Tanuma is very grateful to finally achieve his lifelong wish, which is to bring one of his best friends to the festival and introduce him to Grandma Ito. In the next scene, a little insight is shown into Natori Shuichi's young life. Back in high school, Natori used to be scolded by his parents and friends for being the only member of the clan who could see and connect with Yukai. All this hatred towards poor Natori stemmed from the clan losing their ability to see or connect with Yukai, and since they live in fear of the Yukai, they exercised coming back to get revenge on them, they became very weird and paranoid even to their own kind. So Natori lived his young life quietly, and would mostly do everything in his power to avoid trouble with his parents and clan. Even when his mother died, he was blamed for bringing such bad luck to the family. One day in the yard, Natori got to see the first real exorcist in his life after a failed meeting with his dad. As the exorcist walks out of the house, his shiki tells Natori about a meeting spot at the Ishizuki Valley in three days, that is, 
if Natori could see the meeting spot. Natori is a bit confused at first, but then he heads there in the next three days and finds a new eerie yukai trying to eat him up. Seiji appears like a shadow and orders the yukai to stop harassing Natori. Then he takes Natori on a short walk towards the meeting place. On the way, they exchange pleasantries and talk about business. After getting to know each other, Seiji asks Natori if he would allow himself to be used by someone like him. Natori gives him an odd look and tells him he's not ready to be used by anybody. Seiji laughs and points to a particular robe hanging on a tree, then asks Natori to tell him the color of the robe. Natori tells him the robe has a dark red hue to it and Seiji scoffs. Just then, one of the meeting's hosts comes by and asks for an introduction to the person Seiji brought. Seiji teases Natori, making him a little pissed, and leaves Natori in the host's hands before heading inside. Natori lets out a few derogatory words about Seiji, but the host warns him to watch his mouth as Seiji is currently the most powerful exorcist there is in the Matoba clan family. On hearing this, Natori knows his place and follows the host inside to witness the meeting. While inside, he has a little discussion with the host about the weird exorcist his dad chased out of his house a few days ago. Around that time, several yukai and exorcists recognized Natori's face as someone from the Natori clan, and they immediately began to murmur hurtful things about the clan. Natori ignores them and listens to what the host has to say. The host moves on to ask Natori to tell him the color of the robe just outside the window, the one hanging on a tree. Natori gives him the answer he gave Seiji, and the man interprets his answer for him. For him to see such a color, it must mean Natori has fairly strong spiritual powers. However, Someone as unique as Matoba Seiji would see the full color of the robe, which is a large peony color and design. Natori finally figured it out back then that Seiji was testing him all along. The host, Takuma, cuts his thinking short and tells him about his aim and objectives as an exorcist. Just then, an old woman comes searching for Natori and Takuma gets a little alerted. Natori holds his hand and accidentally shows him the newt on his body. Then he retracts his hand and tells him not to touch him so he doesn't get burned or cursed like him. Impressed by his kindness, Takuma personally escorts Natori outside and tells him to come back if he ever needs a safe haven. Natori thanks him and heads back home only to come back in the next few days and continue his research. At a point, Natori began having dreams and aspirations to use the knowledge learned in the academy to remove the newt yukai roaming all around his body. His dream was quickly crushed when he found out his favorite person, Takuma, was attacked by a three-horned yukai that's notorious for attacking exorcists. This angers him a little bit, but then Natori uses this situation as motivation to get better with his work and exercise the yukai. That night, he studies spells and exorcism in the storehouse of his father's place, leaving his dad to complain on and on about his absence. Even so, Natori still didn't feel at ease. The next day, while he walks through the forest home from school, he gets attacked by the three-horned yukai and nearly gets eaten by it. Thankfully, Matoba Seiji came at the right time and chased it away. After the monster's gone, he turns and asks Natori to come be his apprentice. Natori, however, politely rejects his offer and gets teased by the annoying Seiji. Natori gets to go home a little pissed at the sassy Seiji, but then his emotions quickly go up the wind when he finds the weird exorcist from the other day lurking around his house again. He asks the man what he was there to do, and the man tells him he was actually looking to merge with the paranoid Natori clan so they can stand up and fight the Yukai again. Natori knows his father's too much of a coward to do anything about it, so Natori made it his life's mission to become an exorcist by all means. The next day in school, he ignores a girl's confession to him and excuses himself to the yard to think about his next move. In the end, he promises himself not to hurt the people next to him, so he would take to the woods to train himself. That same day, Natori packs all his material into his bag and takes to the woods to train. There, he stumbles upon Seiji, who again tries to ask him to join him. Natori stands his ground and refuses to fall for his manipulative tricks. Even in the end, Natori finds out about the burden Seiji was carrying on his head, even if he tries not to show it. Seiji comes up with an idea to go meet Natori's dad, for a brief discussion about the three-horned yukai. Matoba sweet-talks the man and ends up getting every last bit of information about the yukai. When he's done, he heads into the woods with Natori and keeps on pissing him the most. Natori pauses and refuses to go a single step with him. Matoba stops and makes fun of Natori's resolve and gets a reaction out of the already angry Natori. Seiji keeps his cool and advises Natori to become much stronger if he wishes to protect anything. Natori thanks him for the help and heads further into the woods to get himself ready. Suddenly, he finds the three-horned yukai attack two exorcists from the road and steps in to save them. Sadly enough, his talismans don't work and the monster nearly ate him a second time. Thankfully, Seiji already had his bow and arrow set at the monster, 
so when he lets go, he makes sure to land a kill. After the ordeal, Natori becomes very sad and loses faith in himself. Matoba gloats about his kill and makes fun of Natori's weakness before leaving. In the next scene, Natori finds himself in the same villa they used for the meeting place. There, they began praising Matoba for killing the three-horned Yukai. Natori left the place in the evening for his house. At the entrance, he finds the Shiki Yukai of the weird exorcist from earlier and asks him where his master is. After finding out that the master just died, Natori leaves his house and heads towards the river near his place. There he finds Matoba Seiji there and promises to be better than him one day. The next day, he decides to exclude himself from any clan and learn his thing himself to become self-sufficient and self-employed. One time, Matoba came near him and found him sleeping. He took his glasses and peeped inside just to see how weird the world looked inside them. Back at the present, Natsumi is seen running away from a particular yukai. He gets on a bridge and hides underneath it so the yukai lose track of him. Luckily for him, this works as the yukai goes the other way. After he's gone, Natsumi hears strange muffled sounds under his butt and checks under only to find a miniature yukai struggling to get himself off his butt. Natsumi gets up and asks the necessary questions to the miniature yukai. The yukai, upon realizing that Natsume could actually see him, decides to make him a servant and holds him by his hair strand. Unfortunately for both of them, the yukai finds them and gets down the bridge to eat them up. Natsume punches the yukai, picks up the miniature yukai, and escapes to a safer place. When he's sure they're safe, he places the miniature yukai on a bench and asks if he's okay. The yukai, who seems to be more impressed at Natsume's strength, freaks out when he finds a scratch on his cap. He blames Natsume for creating such a dent in his cap and deeming him unworthy to see Shuan in a few days. Natsume is a little confused at all this, but then, the miniature yukai decides to force Natsume into helping him revive his dented cap. Madara shows up at that time to argue with the smallie over who gets to pick on Natsume. The miniature yukai surely isn't going to allow a big holy fat cat to tell it what to do, so he fights with Madara physically. After fighting and settling their fight, Natsume calms the miniature yukai and asks him to tell him about Shuan and his history with him. Proud of his origin, the little yukai clears his throat and begins his story. So it all began the moment the miniature yukai, who's known to be a noble, busy, and lonely yukai, met Shuan for the first time. Apparently, the noble miniature yukai spent most of his time hunting, fishing, eating, and sleeping. One day while he was doing his thing, a wild beast caught him and almost ate him alive. At the last minute, Shuan passed by in his eminence and commanded the beast to let the miniature yukai go. To his surprise, the beast drops the miniature yukai and runs back to the bushes. After he's gone, the miniature yukai removes his cap and shows his face to Shuan to thank him for the help. Ever since then, the miniature yukai would show Shuan the beautiful forest and sometimes engage him in some small talk. Shuan got used to the yukai's company and would sometimes fish and play around with him. One night, after fishing, the yukai and Shuan both got to see the shooting stars. The yukai asked Shuan to make a wish that night, but then again, the yukai wasn't ready to do such a thing as he believed it would be disrespectful to burden such beautiful stars. The miniature yukai stops wishing for the shooting star and respects Shuan's warning. A night later, Shuan wakes the yukai up and bids him farewell, as he and his companions are already leaving the land on a spiritual journey. The miniature yukai tried his very best to make sure Shuan took him with him, but then again, it was already too late. Ever since then, the miniature yukai has always been on the move to catch up to the procession and finally join Shuan and his followers again. When asked how he plans on doing such a thing, the yukai tells him he will try as much as possible not to stand out too much so he can join the line without them noticing. Now that he has the dent in his cap, though, he doubts he'll be unnoticeable. So before Shuan and his procession pass them by, Natsume and Madara will have to do something about the dent in his cap and help him fix it. Natsume keeps quiet as Madara gets pissed again and argues with the miniature yukai. In the next scene, Natsume crushes some rocks to get the fine powder that comes from them. His reason, the miniature yukai wanted him to rub them on his hat, hoping the powder would remove the dent from his cap. This plan goes down the drain as the dust makes everyone sneeze. The miniature yukai abandons such a plan and goes on to find more ridiculous items, thinking they would make him appear beautiful to Shuan. As expected, none of the plans work, and Natsume gets a little tired of the miniature yukai's party tricks. Nevertheless, the yukai still tries to do weird things to his body. Natsume gets fed up and gets some tree sap, which he uses to remove the dent on his cap. After that, he takes a nap on the grass and has a nightmare about a hairy yukai taking over his mind. Natsume opens his eyes and finds Madara looking at him. Madara complains that Natsume always exerts too much pressure on himself. The miniature yukai sees this and brings him a sweet fruit to munch on while he's awake. Natsume receives the gift and thanks him for it. This makes the miniature yukai almost cringe, so he runs off into the forest to find more red flowers to dye his clothes with. While at it, 
He overhears two yukai talking about the Shuan's procession that's to pass by their forest in a few hours. According to them, a person seeking to join the procession should bring offerings to the great Shuan. When asked what the offerings should look like, one of them tells the other that a human will be fine. On hearing this, the miniature yukai gets a really bad idea and decides to go with it. Eventually, he picks up one of the flowers and beautifies his cap with it. Then he returns to the field where Natsume is and begs him to stay there with him so they all watch the procession pass by. Madara, who initially eavesdropped on the little yukai, waits for him to say something, but before he's able to say a thing, the procession passes by. Madara and the others all try to hide and observe the followers from a distance, but then again, the miniature yukai wasn't ready to let this opportunity pass him by, so he opts out of the bush they were hiding in and stops the procession to introduce himself as Mitsuzara of the Shihara Woods. One of the followers passes him off as small and unfit to join the procession. However, Mitsuzara wasn't about to give up. Just then, one of the followers asks Mitsuzara what he has to offer them. Mitsuzara takes one last look at Natsume and decides not to use him as an offering to them. Instead, he bows his head and begs the followers to let him join them. Before he knows it, Shuan himself exposes himself and tells him politely to forget about joining the procession and go home. After that, the procession continues and the Shuan group is gone. Mitsuzara cries his little heart out and apologizes to Natsume for almost sacrificing him for his own wishes. Madara cuts him there and asks him what he plans on doing now. Mitsuzara tells Natsume he's going to become stronger and ensure he's worthy enough to join the procession in due time. At that instant, one of the followers of Shuan appears to him and gives him a book of spiritual things he's to learn if he's to ever become a follower of Shuan. As the follower ascends to the heavens, Mitsuzara carries the book like his own home and swears to train himself to become the best of the best. On his way back from school one day, Madara stops Natsume and asks him to turn back to get some more snacks for him. Natsume tells him they can't turn back now, as it's a little too late to do that. Just then, Natsume hears some crows flying away desperately. Seconds later, the rain begins and Natsume picks Madara up and rushes back home. Upon getting home, he helps his mom get their clothes inside the house and settles down to eat a wonderful dinner with the family. During dinner, Natsume and his foster parents talk about random things. Tuko suddenly chuckles and gets the attention of her husband who asks her what the funny thing is. She tells him she just remembered one of their memories from when they were newly wed, and it made her laugh. Back when their marriage was still in its early stages, Tuko and Shigeru used to have wonderful times together. Tuko is your typical stay-at-home woman who loves cleaning and taking care of the house. One day while she was spreading some of the clothes she washed outside, Tuko saw an injured crow pinned under a clump of garden tools. Scared of what might happen to it, she removes the garden tools and lets the crow go. Then she heads to the supermarket to get supplies and finds a toddler admiring some fish in the freezer. Tuko smiled at the boy and walked up to him to pet him. Suddenly his mother comes by and calls him back to her. The little boy walks up to his mother and gets scolded for wandering too far away from her. Tuko, on the other hand, gets a little sad that she couldn't have children of her own with Shigeru. She even begins to imagine a trip to an aquarium with a kid of their own and tells Shigeru about it over dinner that night. After hearing his wife's wishes, which she thought was a little absurd at first, Shigeru actually likes the idea of them visiting the aquarium. The next day is his day off, so he takes his wife to see the wonderful fish in the aquarium. After their outing, Shigeru asks his wife to prepare his morning clothes so he can make it in time to observe the funeral of one of his relatives. Tuko gets his clothes ready, and the very next day, Shigeru attends the funeral. Once he's done paying his respects, he overhears a few guys gossiping about a certain troubled fella that they wish they could dispose of. Apparently the fella had similar qualities to Natsume, and they just wished he would disappear and stop lying to people. Shigeru, after hearing all the nonsense those people blabbed out of his mouth, looks around and finally finds the boy they were talking about, the blonde spacing out and looking thin as hell. By that time, Tuko, who is seen walking home from her workplace, sees the same crow she saved earlier and tries to wave to it. Some high school girls pass by and laugh at her, but then Tuko doesn't mind being young again. That night, when her husband came back from work, Tuko served him some tea and noticed the bugged look on his face. She tries to ask him about it, but Shigeru tells her not to worry about him at all. After drinking his tea, Tuko notices her husband cleaning a spare room they seldom use. At first, she thought they were leaving, but then again, she quickly deads the idea. Rain falls the next day, but Tuko gets her laundry inside before it's too late, as the crow she helped called her out before it got heavy. After that, she sits at the table with her husband and tells him about the crow. Shigeru laughs a little and tells her about Natsumi and his idea to adopt him to live with them. After hearing all her husband had to say, Tuko began worrying about the crow who's always alone, even until she went to sleep. The next morning, Tuko gets a call from one of her old friends, Sana, who invites her to an all-expense paid trip to chill out. Tuko explains this to Shigeru, and he gives her permission to go on the trip. Tuko heads back outside and does the laundry again before leaving. There, she saw the crow and greeted it before getting back inside to get ready. 
In a few hours, Tuco meets up with her friend at the train station. The duo board a train and visit different places, including the sea, to chill out. By nightfall, the duo get to have a wonderful dinner and Sana complains about her people always eating excessive dinners. Tuco laughs at her and gets to make some jokes with her old-time friend. That night, Tuco remains awake and thinks about her life with Shigeru. Despite being separated from him for just a day, Tuko still misses Shigeru so much that she feels lonely and depressed to not be by his side. Tuko eventually gets home the next morning and finds her husband sleeping on the side patio. She wakes him up and sits near him till he fully boots back up. When it's almost breakfast, Shigeru musters the courage to walk up to his wife and tell him about his decision to adopt Natsume. He hopes she's good with it and will treat Natsume with good intentions. Tuko gets emotional and even cries over how kind and perfect her man actually is. She fully supports his decision and will do anything to have such a poor boy be with them that instant. One night she visits Natsumi's current house in the city to see him. Just as she was about to knock, Natsume opened the door and ran away from the house in frustration. Tuko stopped him from running too much and asked him to go back home. Natsumi reluctantly obliges, and Tuko heads back home with a smile on her face after seeing the boy's face for the first time. So the proceedings began and Shigeru fought for custody of Natsume alongside his wife. When they finally won, they brought Natsume to the house and tried their best to love, protect, and feed him as much nutrients as he needed. Even still, they still felt Natsume was too distant as they found him spacing out a lot of times. The first day Natsume brought Madara to the house, Tuko was so happy to see him making a friend, so she urges him to keep his friend and make sure nothing happens to it. After coming back from school one day, Natsumi finds his foster mother staring at the single crow perching on a tree. He gets a little closer and sees the other albino crow next to it, and since his mother couldn't see it, it must be a yukai crow. Anyways, Tuko seizes the opportunity to play with her new son and have a good time with him. Shigeru also arrives at that instant and is more than happy to see smiles on the faces of his new family. In the meantime, the two troublesome yukai are seen making their way through the forest bored and wanting something lively to happen to them. Suddenly, the more lively one amongst them talks about the Shirakiri flowers and the Mitsubataki mountain blooming at that time of the year. Since they were bored out of their minds, he suggested both of them go look for such flowers for entertainment. At that instant, they see Natsume and his friends going to school. The lively one gets a weird idea and decides to use it on Natsume one of these days. After his demeaning test session in school, Natsume joins his friends some of whom also performed badly on the test and walks home with them. The two yukai wait for Natsumi to get separated from his friends and intercept him to ask to accompany them to the mountain to check out the Shirakiri flowers. Natsumi initially refuses to go on such a journey, but the two yukai aren't taking no for an answer as they pick Natsumi up and take him up to the mountain. After getting to the summit, Natsumi feels a certain cold and gets to spectate the most wonderful set of flowers he could ever lay his eyes on. He smiles and thanks the yukai for taking him on such a wonderful flight and ends his trip there abruptly. That night, Natsumi gets home and collapses from a fever. Apparently, the cold he endured at the summit of the mountain was too much for his body cells to fight against. Now that he's bedridden with a fever, Natsume can't go to school for the next few days. The next day in school, his friends get a little worried about dear Natsume as he turned out to be just fine the day before. While the others think it's the chill, Tanima begins to get other ideas. Meanwhile, the two troublesome yukai were seen bragging about their awesome outing with Natsume the previous day to Hino, Misuzu, and the other yukai. Benio makes her comments about the beautiful flowers, but before she's able to finish speaking, Madara shows up and breaks the bad news about Natsume's cold to them. The two yukai immediately head towards Natsume's home to confirm if he was really having a fever. Sadly, they were disappointed at how wimpy Natsume was to catch a cold from climbing the mountains. To help him, the two yukai head towards a snake's cave in search of his famous fever-reducing drug. On getting there, they call the snake, Utsuno, and he answers their call. After hearing their request, Utsuno agrees to give them the drug on the condition that they help him rearrange the stone lanterns the rain scattered back then. The two yukai grumble a little bit as they never thought they'd be doing someone's dirty work. However, Utsuno gave them his word and sent them to the fields to help him with the stone lanterns. By that time, Natsumi wakes up from a nap after having a nightmare about his younger years back when he used to be harassed by sealing yukai. Before he gets too far in his thoughts, Tuko arrives with some of her famous eggnogs and presents them to her foster son. Natsume drinks the nog and thanks Tuko for always taking care of him, even if he's being a bother. Tuko tells him not to worry too much about things and just focus on healing himself. Shigeru arrives home in a few minutes and gives his wife some strawberries to prepare for Natsume and his fat cat Madara. After eating, Natsume gets ready for school and surprisingly finds his yukai friends in the classroom sitting near his friends. Natsume calms down and takes his seat but then things start getting out of hand when suddenly, Benio and Hinoi pop up near him and Madara becomes their teacher. Natsume runs out of the class to run after Reiko. On getting outside, he finds a black yukai pulling his clothes and calling the Reiko inside him to come out. As it walks into the darkness, Natsume asks for some guidance from Reiko, 
and she gives it to him. Just then, he wakes up and finds himself face to face with a threatening yukai. Natsume ignores the yukai and goes back to sleep. The next day in school, Nishimura gets a little bit more worried about his friend as he skips school for the third day in a row. He just collected his test scores, so he wasn't in a good mood either. Anyways, the two troublesome yukai keep on struggling to get all the stone lanterns in place. The following day, Natsumi still skips school and his buddies get a little worried. They all make a plan to go visit him if still skips school the day after that. That evening, the two troublesome yukai finally get the fever-reducing drug and present it to their master, Natsume. Natsume thanks them for the hard work they had to go through and drinks the stuff they brought. Later on, Natsume gets a little better and eats some porridge his mother made. Suddenly, Tanuma visits Natsume and gives him a gift from Taki. After receiving the gift, Tanuma asks if his illness has anything to do with Yukai. Natsume lies and tells him his sickness is normal. Tanuma smiles and thanks his stars that that's the case. Moving on, Natsume continues telling Tanuma wonderful and inspirational things about his grandmother. Elsewhere, Hino bursts the bubbles of the troublesome Yukai after telling them the drug they brought Natsume isn't the right drug at all. The troublesome Yukai blame themselves for trying to help and promise not to help humans ever again. Now what or who healed Natsumi's cold? Turns out when he was deep in sleep, an old Yukai came from his ceiling and laid his healing hands on him. The following day, Natsumi goes to school normally and stops by the mountain to visit the two troublesome Yukai to thank them for the drugs they gave him, as it seemed to have worked wonders. Initially, the yukai are a little skeptical about his claim, but in the end, they go with the flow and even spread flower petals on the floor all around Natsumi. Life goes on for Natsumi as he returns to his normal daily life with his annoying cat, Madara. One morning, Tuko prepared some snacks for Tanuma and Taki who were on their way to Natsumi's house. However, Madara snuck around and ate all the food for himself. When Natsume finds out, he's devastated and immediately runs to the store to buy some snacks for his friends before they arrive. On his way to the convenience store, Natsume stops midway after hearing strange sounds under the bridge he was about to cross. He immediately gets off the bridge to peep at the source of the sound with his fat cat. When they get close enough, they notice a yukai hitting his head, which was covered with a large pot on the wall. Natsume and Madara tried to avoid talking to the yukai, but then again, the yukai had already noticed them, so he crept behind them and startled them when they least expected it. After getting Natsume and Madara's full attention, the yukai with a pot over its head asked Natsume to help him remove the pot over his head. Natsume gets a little skeptical initially as he suspects the pot could be a seal or some sort of exorcism material. Madara does a little digging around the pot, but isn't able to find any seal in it. Natsume gets the all clear and immediately helps the yukai get the pot off his head. What lies underneath the pot is a wood knot with a large hole in the middle to make up the head of the yukai. The yukai introduced himself as the Days Eater, and he was on a journey when he suddenly came into contact with the pot and got stuck inside it. To thank Natsume for helping him out, the Days Eater cast a silent spell that returned Natsume to his youthful days. Initially, Natsume and his cat are confused, but then moments after the Days Eater is gone, Natsume gets young again. Madara sees this and expresses his shock at how efficient the youth spell was. He screams out loud and tries to speak some sense into young Natsume, but then, Natsume's memories appear to be jumbled from all the de-aging process. Since he couldn't recognize who Madara was, he ordered the cat to stay back and avoid him. Madara realizes his memories have been jumbled around his head and decides to reintroduce himself to Natsume. He tells him his name and reminds him of his foster family. Even still, young Natsume couldn't remember them. Madara thinks of taking him back to Tuko and explaining everything to them, but then again he realizes they didn't even know about Natsume's hidden ability. He thinks of a few more places he could put Natsume while doing his investigation, but none of them seemed appropriate enough. Young Natsume speaks up and tells Madara he's pretty fine on his own. Madara throws a fit and finally sees Tanuma and Taki coming towards them. At first, they fail to recognize who the young guy sitting on the grass is, but then Madara calms them down and explains the entire scenario to them. He then places Natsume in their hands while he goes out to do some investigations on the Days Eater. At that point, Natsume was already wandering out of sight. Tanuma and Taki quickly stop him, and try to talk to him. Since Natsume couldn't remember them either, they reintroduced themselves and assured Natsume that he could trust them with anything. After gaining Natsume's trust, Tanuma and Taki take Natsume to Tanuma's house in the temple. On the way, young Natsume sees the plains beyond and recalls some wonderful memories he had there. He's a little confused over his own understanding of the place and wonders why his body doesn't feel normal when he thinks about them. Tanuma and Taki notice this and calm Natsume's worrisome mind down. Moments later, they all arrive at Tanuma's house and serve Natsume some tea. After settling down, Natsume recounts the things Madara told him about his older self earlier and asks his friends if they were really true. Hearing this, Taki turns to Madara and asks him about the yukai that did this to Natsume. 
Madara starts off by telling them about the Days Eater, a yukai that had the power to return the youth of living and non-living things. Most times he would seek refuge in old houses or storehouses for a while, and when he's leaving he returns anything old in that house back to their younger state. Madara mentions that the yukai was just thanking Natsume for removing the pot off his head back then. This means if they can find the Days Eater in time, then he can return Natsume to his former state. Natsume gets up to go search for the yukai, but then Madara tells him to sit down with Tanima and Taki while he goes forward to search for the yukai in question. After he's gone, Tanima and Taki decide to cook some curry for young Natsume. In the meantime, Madara travels all around the forest asking several yukai for the location of the day's eater. After asking for several hours and finding nothing, Madara returns to the point where they found the yukai. He sees the large pot there and takes a little sniff of it before flying off to trace the smell. Back at Tanima's place, Taki and Tanima have fun in the kitchen with their buddy, when suddenly Taki gets a little clumsy and spills some water on Tanuma. Natsume stops what he is doing and rushes towards the closet to get a towel. When he gets there, he gets a little weirded out as he wonders how he knew where the towel would be. Before before he can answer his own question, a yukai, which later splits itself in three, appears outside the window, and tries to trick young Natsume into opening the window for them, by telling him Tanuma and Taki were trying to trick him into eating him. Natsume forbids them and runs as fast as he can to another room, just trying to escape Taki and Tanuma. Just as he's about to reach outside the house, Tanuma and Taki catch up to him and stop him from opening the door. When things settle, Natsume tells the duo about the things the yukai said outside the window. However, things become clear to Natsume when his stomach grumbles, and Taki offers him a box of cupcakes to eat while the curry cooks. Natsume trusts them a little more and checks to confirm if they're truly friends. Tanuma and Taki assure him that they're friends. Natsume thanks them for being so nice to him and wishes he could get back to his normal self so they can continue being friends again. Elsewhere, Madara finally catches up to the Days Eater and asks him to return Natsume to his former self. The Days Eater gets a little confused at Madara's words, but after much discussion, he realizes Natsumi's actually better in his adult form. The Days Eater agrees to help him. Once he's done lifting the spell, he sends Madara back home. That night, young Natsume sleeps beside his fat cat and returns to his original form by nightfall. Tanuma and Taki walk in on him and are glad to see their friend finally back to normal. Several days later, Natsumi helps his mother on a grocery run. On their way back, Natsumi and his foster mom stop to check out the big rainy clouds forming over them. Tuko makes a few comments about them, but Natsumi directs her attention to a nice flowery pattern he's seeing on the large rock in front of them. He asks his mother if she can see the pattern, but then she says no, and Natsume realizes the pattern must have been made by a yukai. Nonetheless, he quickly lies to his mother and continues escorting her to the house as the rain is already falling. The next day, Natsume goes fishing with his dudes and ends up catching nothing as there wasn't any fish in the river by that time. So they get bored and decide to go do other activities. Nishimura and Kitamoto suggest they all go mountain climbing or exploring. But then again, Natsume finds another flowery pattern on one of the sedimentary rocks on the riverbed. He gets the feeling he got the previous day about the rock and would rather not have anything to do with it at the moment. So he convinces his boys to follow him back to the city to get some hamburgers. Fortunately for him, Natsume and his friends have a good time at the burger shop. That evening, Natsume returns home to find Madara and his other yukai friends waiting upstairs in his room. Upon seeing them, Natsume scolds Madara for letting them in before settling down to listen to what they have to say. One of the mid-level yukai tells Natsume about the Stonewasher, which is a yukai well known for traveling far distances to wash off spiritual impurities like curses and seals from large stones and rocks. After doing a good stone wash, a beautiful flowery pattern can be seen on such rocks, and this is a sign that they've been purified from any curses and seals. On hearing this, Natsumi asks what the special about the yukai is, but the yukai in his room were too busy partying and jumping all around the house. On his way home the next day, Natsumi finds a stone with a flowery pattern on it again. This time he explains the significance of such stones to his friends, Taki and Tanuma, and wishes they could see it. Natsumi tries showing some of the stones to them, but unfortunately they can't see them. Somewhere along the way, Natsumi walked past that same bridge but couldn't find the pattern on the large rock anymore. Natsume sighs and continues his journey back home. Still, on the way, he gets startled by a yukai and punches him in the face. Upon close inspection, however, Natsume finds out that the yukai he just punched is actually the stone washer Hino was telling him about. Soon after, the mid-level yukai show up and frolic around the stone washer. They introduce Natsume as their master, and the stone washer introduces himself humbly to Natsume as Nanamaki and asks him for a favor. Natsume initially refuses to do a thing for the man, but after much persuasion from the man and his people, 
He settles down to listen to what he has to say. Nanamaki tells him about the fable of the stonewasher, who apparently can return to the Fujima village after washing 80,000 stones. Nanamaki mentions that he had already washed 80,000 stones and had already returned to the village. However, one day, a yukai with a shroud over his head appeared in the village and asked to be Nanamaki's student. Nanamaki reluctantly takes him in and teaches him how to be a stonewasher. The yukai seemed very interested in the job, and the two of them had a wonderful relationship over the years. Years after learning under Nanamaki, Nanamaki, the yukai, whose name is Azuma, leaves the village to begin his journey to wash 80,000 stones. Every month or so, he would send a letter to his master assuring him that he was okay. Sadly, the letter stopped coming six months ago and Nanamaki got worried. So, he left the village to search for Azuma and found himself with Natsume. Madara and Hinoe suggest Nanamaki stop his search, as it appears Azuma has already abandoned him. However, Natsume, who was initially against helping him, decides to help him. He assigns the search to his yukai friends and promises to be in their debt if they can find the servant before he does. This makes the yukai friends jump in to help Natsume. After returning home that evening, Madara asks Natsume why he's so interested in searching for Azuma. Natsume becomes a little gloomy and recalls the horrible times he endured before meeting the Fujiwaras. This is the sole motivation behind why he's eager to help Azuma and his master. He dreams about Nanamaki and his servant and only gets to sleep for a little bit when the Yukai friends show up and drag him into the woods to see Azuma. Upon getting to the woods, Natsume asks for the student, but then the mustache guy points to a yokai who claims to have seen Azuma somewhere around. According to his story, the Azuma was doing his usual job as a stonewasher when suddenly a weak exorcist came by and sealed him inside a stone. Upon hearing that he was sealed, Natsume immediately asks Madara to take him to the stone where he was sealed. Madara refuses initially, so Natsume backs Nanamaki and takes him to the forest where the sealed stone is. On the way, Nanamaki remembers the way Azuma carried him back when he hurt his foot by the river. He thanks Natsume for his help and hopes to repay him soon. Eventually, they all get to the sealed stone. Natsume stops to ask Madara why he is so glum. Madara Madara tells him about the seal weakening Azuma's stonewashing powers. There's a high chance that he may not be able to wash stones anymore once they catch up to him. Nevertheless, Natsumi and the others continue searching until they find the stone seal. They try pushing it away physically, but then allow the stonewasher to wash away the impurity before trying again. Nanamaki does his magic and works with Madara's light to release the seal on the stone before letting Natsume and the others try moving the stone again. This time, they remove the stone and find nothing in the cave beyond it. Disappointed, Hinoi and Natsume condemn the yukai for lying to them. However, Nanamaki stops them and tells them he can sense Azuma. But from the scent he's able to sense, it seems he can't wash his stones anymore. At that point, Nanamaki gives up on his search and says his final goodbyes to Natsume. While at it, Natsume thanks him for making the stones near the river beautiful again, but then again, Nanamaki tells him he didn't make those patterns. Natsume realizes Azuma must be near the river, so he takes Nanamaki there and lets him search for Azuma. Upon reaching the riverside, Nanamaki calls out his name and finally reunites with him. Azume goes on his knees and apologizes to his master for losing his ability to wash stones. Nanamaki hugs him and assures him to keep his cool and that they'd somehow find their way around it. Natsume sees the two yukai disappear into thin air and return home. The next morning, Natsume gets gloomy again and decides to draw a flower on his paper. Tuko finds the flower and makes him blush as she makes somewhat feminine comments about his drawing. Moments later, Natsume receives a call from Shibata in his residence. Initially, he couldn't recognize the voice, but then Shibata reminds him, and Natsume immediately remembers him. He asks Shibata what the issue is, but Shibata refuses to tell him. Instead, he rudely tells Natsume to come meet him at the train station the following day. Natsume tries to boycott the meeting, but then Shibata gets a little bit too persistent. Even after finding out Natsume would be going out with with his friend, Shibata still told him to bring his friend to the station by noon the next day. At this point, Shibata hangs up and Natsume is left with no choice but to go with Shibata. The next day, Natsume and Tanama head out to the train station to meet Shibata. While they wait for him, Natsume checks his backpack and warns Madara not to appear too suspicious to a bully like Shibata. Seconds later, Shibata shows up and makes sassy remarks at Natsume and his friend Tanima, which ends up getting both boys pissed. Eventually, Shibata treats them to an amazing burger lunch while they all settle down on an outdoor bench to discuss a few things. After eating their food, Shibata finds out about Tanima's dad and asks him if he can see Yukai like Natsume. Tanima tells him he can't, but he can sense them. Shibata gives him a weird look and asks if he knows about the doll mansion of Sotogi. Both Tanima and Natsume exchange puzzled looks as they've never heard of such a thing before. Natsume gets up and asks Shibata to tell them about the doll mansion. Shibata being Shibata beats around the bush a little bit before getting right to the details, so there was a girl in elementary school who lived in a mansion nearby. Shibata had always known to be an interesting 
interesting brat, and sometimes he would make sure to check up on her. After a heavy thunderstorm one night, the girl started having trouble sleeping as she would hear strange rolling sounds in her ceiling. Upon hearing this, Natsume and Tanuma get a hint of what is happening to the house and tell Shibata to take them there. On their way there, Natsume and Tanuma ask Shibata for more information about the mansion. Shibata tells them the last owner of the house used to collect dolls and stuff. At that time, they approach the mansion and Natsume starts scanning through the windows, hoping to find signs of the yukai troubling the girl. Just then, two yukai heads pop out of one of the windows and scare the shit out of Natsume who reacts to the yukai. Shibata and Tanama asked what happened, but then Natsume lied to them and continued moving. Up next, Shibata takes the boys to an outdoor restaurant to get some lunch. Shibata gets into a small fight with Natsume and ends up taking a bathroom break. After he's gone, Natsume tells Tanuma he'll be staying over Shibata's place as he fears such a yukai may follow him back home and haunt his foster parents. On the other hand, Madara advises Natsume to stay with Tanuma if he really hopes to stand a chance against the two yukai monsters. By that time, Shibata returns from his bathroom break and overhears Natsume and Tanuma talking about yukai. He asks them to fill him in, but Natsume chooses not to. Nevertheless, Shibata accompanies Tanuma and Natsume on their next trip to Tanuma's temple house. Initially, Natsume advises him not to come, but Shibata and his hard-headedness wouldn't let him miss out on a good time with the boys. In a few hours, Natsume and his friends arrive at Tanuma's place. They settle inside and close all openings to the outside world before making some omeris for dinner. At dinner, Shibata gets serious for the first time that day and tells the other two about the twin dolls. Judging by what Shibata had heard from others, the former owner of the house would sometimes perform scary rituals on dolls by enchanting them to be half alive and placing them in a room to fight and kill each other for a few days. Once the time elapses, the house owner would go into the room and find the last two remaining survivors so he could curse them. Well, his plan worked out perfectly fine, and the dolls were created and cursed. In the end, the former owner became too scared of his creations and ran away. Natsumi remembers the two doll faces he saw a few days ago and realizes they must have been the dolls Shibata was talking about. This gets Shibata scared a little and he warns the boys not to get too loose around the house. Natsume and Tanuma, who weren't afraid of the yukai, urged him to calm down and just go through the night like a normal person. Shibata calms down eventually and finally gets the courage to take his bath alone. While he's away, Natsumi and Tanuma talk about their lives before the yukai sightings. Just then, Madara comes by with a huge melon and offers to help them on the condition that they give him certain foods at certain periods. Natsume tries to protest this, but then again, he hears some sounds in the corridor and goes out to check it out. He bends down and peeps at the pigeonhole on the lower section of the wall. There he finds doll legs coming towards them. The legs hit the glass and walk away shortly. Natsume and Tanuma notice this and immediately report the sighting to Madara. After hearing all they had to say, Madara cooks up a plan and tells Natsume and his friend to lure the spirit inside the dolls with a protective talisman so they can leave the exorcism to him. Natsume and Tanuma get the gist, so they split up to search for the talisman and Shibata. Natsume finds Shibata in the bathroom. Shibata throws a fit and offers his help to Natsume. Natsume takes him back to the rooms and collects one of the two talismans Tanuma found after searching through all the rooms. Natsume collects the talisman and tells Tanuma to get back to searching for the other one, while he and Madara work on exercising the first one. Minutes after Shibata leaves with Tanuma, the first yukai shows up, and Natsume uses the talisman and Madara's help to destroy the spirit. All that's left is the second one, and Natsume hears it further down the corridor. In the meantime, Shibata and Tanuma find the other talisman in the attic. As Shibata struggles to remove the talisman, he makes a few comments about the things Natsume had to endure and thanks Tanama for being there for him through thick and thin. After getting the talisman off the attic wall, they return downstairs and find Natsumi pinned down to the floor by the second yukai. They throw the talisman to Natsumi, and he uses it to exercise the yukai just like the first one. Natsume faints for a little while and wakes up moments later to find Shibata apologizing for all he did to him back then. In the end, Natsumi tells him it's okay, and continues his life as usual. Several days later, Natsumi and Shibata meet up to talk about the aftermath of the exorcism. Apparently, the brat is back to her home and is able to sleep normally. Before bidding his buddy farewell, Shibata appreciates Natsumi's tenaciousness and wishes him the very best in life. As a token of his appreciation, he gives him a box of rice cakes for himself and Tanima. However, Madara collected the box and asked Shibata what other snacks were inside. This scares Shibata a little as he never knew Natsumi's cat could speak. Nevertheless, Natsumi and his cat get back home safe and sound and continue their lives before their next big adventure starts. One day, Natsume sees a movie starring Natori Shuechi and a few other guest star actors. While everybody in the cinema kept on talking about Natori and his handsomeness, all Natsume could focus on 
was the newt yukai running all over his face. Once the movie's over, Natsumi and his cat head outside to get a taxi home. In a few seconds, the clouds turn dark and Natsumi gets the feeling he should have brought an umbrella. However, he quickly stops thinking about his lost umbrella when he feels a presence around him. Madara asks him about it, but Natsumi gets even more confused. When the traffic lights turn green, Natsumi gets on the road and finds one of Natori's talismans shaking on the ground with blurry writings all over it. He squints his eyes to read the writings on the talisman and makes out a location and a time. Natsume realizes it's almost 2 p.m., so he runs through the heavy rain and gets himself to the location in no time. Upon getting there, Natsume spaces out and starts thinking of how to get an umbrella. Fortunately for him, a girl passes by with an umbrella and invites Natsume to her house. Natsume tries to oppose her help, but then it is too late, as the girl gives him the umbrella and takes him to her house. On getting there, Madara immediately senses something off with the house. The girl rushes into the house and brings some towels for Natsume and his cat to wipe the water off their bodies. While he's at it, the girl asks him a weird question, but Natsume couldn't make it out. Before he gets to speak, they both hear a loud thud on the roof. The girl gives Natsume a concerned look and tells him about the sound she's been hearing on the roof recently. Natsume decides to go check it out for her, but the girl only asks him to hold the ladder for her while she does it herself. Unable to to argue with the house owner, Natsumi holds the ladder and waits for the girl to climb up the ladder. Sadly, she gets cold feet and Natsume climbs the ladder for her. When he gets to the roof, he finds a few rocks on one side of the roof. He picks up one of them and finds a moving face on it. Natsume then senses a strange yukai lurking around and tries to figure it out. Before he could though, a gust of wind sent him flying straight to the ground. Thankfully, Natori came at the right time to save Natsume from hitting his head on the ground. After saving him, Madara and Natori's servants get into a heated argument that causes them to fight. While they're at it, the little girl asks Natsume if he could really see the yukai. Natsume tells her yes, and then asks if she could see them too. Sadly, the girl who's later identified as Tsukiko says no, but then again her father, who used to be an exorcist, could see them before he lost his ability and quit his job. Natsume then understands the real reason why Natori had to visit the place. Apparently, he wanted to check up on Takuma, his old friend and the lady's dad, to confirm he was doing okay. Natsume continues making a few comments about Tsukiko and her dad as Natori explains his plight to him. When it comes to Tsukiko's turn to speak, she mentions just how sad and disappointed it feels not to be able to see or hear Yukai. After demeaning herself, she asks Natsume to tell her what he saw on the roof. Natori tells her about the rocks, and the yukai that are after her property. The lady thanks them for the help and asks Natori to help her investigate the said yukai. Natori nods in agreement and follows her back inside. Natsume follows behind, deeply worried about how Natori would react if he found out about the Book of Friends. After getting back inside, Natori tells Natsume not to stress himself to help him and that he'll be perfectly fine if he doesn't want to help. Natsume lets him know he's doing this out of concern for him, and nothing less. He then gets a little more worried about how Natori would take it when he tells him about the Book of Friends. Suddenly, they hear something break on the floor in the kitchen and rush over to find out what it is. They find Tsukiko sitting over a pot of broken tea and ask her what the matter is. Apparently she felt a presence in front of her and was very scared of what it wanted to do. Shortly afterwards, Tsukiko's maid shows up and takes Natsume to a separate room to get some towels to clean Tsukiko up. When it seemed like they were taking too much time, Natori asked Tsukiko about the maid. To his surprise, however, Tsukiko tells him she doesn't know anything about a maid and that she's been living alone with her father all this time. Upon hearing this, Natori and Madara immediately get up to search for the maid. Meanwhile, the maid shows her true colors and pins Natsume to the ground with her immense strength. She searches all over his body and senses something powerful coming from his duffel bag. Before she can check it out, however, Natori shows up and condemns her. The Yukai hints to Natori about the Book of Friends, but then refuses to tell him about it, so as to grow a seed of distrust between Natori and Natsume. After she disappears, Natsume asks Natori not to get too weird after hearing all the woman said about him hiding something powerful from him. Natori smiles and retains his gentle nature. Then he tells Natsume not to beat himself over it. Whenever he feels ready to tell him about whatever he's hiding, he's always there to hear about it. Natsume thanks him and follows him out of the dark room. He contemplates telling Natori about the Book of Friends, but then again, something doesn't add up about Natori's gentle attitude towards him, and he feels like he would be betraying the yukai in the Book of Friends if he spills out their names to just anybody. Once they get back to the living room, Natori tells Tsukiko about the rock yukai on the roof of her house and makes them sound like a pretty big deal. Natsume stops him from talking and takes over to hear what Tsukiko has to say. Tsukiko tells Natsume about the weird sounds she's been hearing in her father's room ever since he quit being a yukai. Although it's nowhere near the moaning sounds, it seemed to her like her father was begging for some invisible power not to harm him and his family. After catching her father begging for his life, she became very worried for his well-being. Meanwhile, Hiragi and her other yukai sense the ill presence traveling around the house. They relay the information to their boss and Natori figures it out. As it turns out, Takuma's familiars were still hanging around the house, 
as they were still under contract with their former master. Natsumi asks for a little explanation of what those contracts mean, and Natori tells him about it. Then, they hear another noise in the ceiling and go up there to check it out. Shortly afterwards, Natsumi and Madara check out a few talismans Tsukiko and Takuma laid around in the house. Natsumi stops midway and tells Madara about how odd the yukai maid was. Despite not being seen by her former master, the woman still behaved like she was at a party in the house. This could only mean she had some form of attachment to the house and Natsumi needed to find out what that was. He walks a few more steps forward and gets abducted by a hairy yukai from the windows. N Natsume struggles to get himself out of the yukai's grasp, but it doesn't take him long to notice that he's been trapped for real this time. Luckily for him, Madara shows up just in time to distract the yukai. Natsume punches the yukai and frees himself from its grasp. The grandma maid also came by to help Natsume, and together they manage to oust the yukai away from the house. After he's gone, Natsumi thanks the old lady for helping him with his yukai problem. The woman tells him not to think about thanking her as she didn't save him out of the goodness of her heart. She's scared something bad may happen to her master if Natsumi dies and gets fatally injured in his house. Natsumi calms her nerves and lets her know he's not there to exercise her or anything. He asks for more information, but then a bell rings and the yukai leaves. Madara transforms back to his cat form, and tells Natsumi about the talismans Takuma put up earlier. Natsumi thanks him for the help, and continues searching for weird spots in the house. He comes across a hole in the wall, and finds a yukai there trying to enter. Natori shows up that instant and finds out about the hole in the wall. To investigate further, Natori and Natsumi stroll outside to the other side of the hole. There, they find Urahime, one of the yukai there, and find out Hiragi's location. Natsumi looks at Natori and asks him about the first time he met Takuma. Natori narrates the same story from his high school and continues discussing more random things with Natsumi. By the end of their discussion, Natori urges Natsume to live a normal life, as he'll make sure to fight anyone who tries to stop him from living the good life. Following their discussion, Natori tells Natsume to get back inside and watch over Tsukiko. Natsume obeys him and goes back inside with Madara to safeguard Tsukiko. Natsume, however, couldn't get something off his mind as he wondered why the yukai would turn against their masters. Something really didn't add up at all. Just then, he hears a click on the front door and realizes Takuma is home early. He sees a weird shadow near the poor man and quickly draws him inside the house before it gets too late. Takuma gets alert and confronts Natsumi. Tsukiko came at the right time and explained the entire thing to her dad. Still, Takuma wasn't buying her ideas. Natori also joins the discussion and explains the entire situation to Takuma. From the looks of things, while Takuma may have quit being an exorcist, his contracts with his familiars were still pretty much active. Currently, they're jobless and are going on a rampage. Takuma asks Natori what could be done about the matter, and Natori advises they exercise them before it's too late. Natsume also speaks up and tells Takuma his perspective on the matter, which is to try a more diplomatic approach. Takuma, who's just surprised a young boy could see Yukai, considers his advice. Before he could give his response, Natsume sees the maid pass by the room and runs after her. He catches her just before she flies out of the house and asks her to tell him how he can protect the family from the Yukai outside. At this rate, the only option available to them is exorcism, and he wouldn't want that for any yukai. The maid grumbles a little bit and explains her plight to Natsumi. Apparently, she was going to handle the yukai herself if nothing was done about them, but now that Natsumi's shown his face, there's nothing she can do but to tell him. If the yukai outside want freedom, then she's up for it. Natori shows up that instant and Natsume asks him if a spell could make Takuma see his familiars again. Natori tells him such a spell is forbidden and would put him at risk. Natsume spaces out for a few seconds but then snaps out of it when they hear another thud on the roof tiles. The roof continued creaking so loudly that Takuma had to apologize to his daughter for causing her pain even after quitting his job. Eventually, the maid decides to tell Natori and Natsume the entire truth. Years before their master lost the ability to see them, the maid and the other two familiars had promised to protect their master till the end. However, when he lost his sight, the mistress, aka Tsukiko, put up talismans that made it nearly impossible for any yukai to find its way inside. Sadly for the other two yukai, they were trapped outside as they could pass through the barrier set up by the talismans. Since they weren't that smart, they blamed their master for abandoning them, so it's safe to say that their causing all this ruckus as a means of revenge against their master for abandoning them. Natori tells Takuma and his daughter point blank and urges them to know all they can about it. The maid hushes Natori and Natsume not to speak to her master and mistress as they couldn't see her despite her being in the same room with them. Natsume makes a diplomatic speech to make the yukai outside appear noble and hurt to Takuma and Tsukiko. He pitches the idea of releasing them from their contract and Takuma buys the idea. He gets the wooden talismans he made when they form the contract and begins the ritual. 
Firstly, Natsumi draws the magic circle on the floor and gets himself ready to cast the spell. After drawing the circle, Natsumi calls the yukai clamming the roof tiles and invites him downstairs. Upon seeing his master Takuma, the yukai roams around him and promises to be a good yukai once again if he can prove himself to be useful. Takuma, who couldn't see the yukai, keeps quiet and doesn't say anything. After witnessing the emotional moment between master and servant, Natsume begins the ritual. He calls the other yukai hiding nearby and finally breaks their contract. After doing that, Natsume gets a peek into their memories and finds Takuma having fun with them. He wakes up to see himself sleeping on a bed laid out for him. Natsume jolts back up and asks after the two yukai he just released. Takuma, who is near him, tells him they left him. Soon after, Natori shows up to continue catching up with Takuma. By evening time, Natsume and his cat head home with Natori. In the meantime, Takuma hangs his glasses forever and decides to try to forget his former familiars. Natori and Natsume also split up and go their separate ways. Moments after leaving, however, Natori instructs Hiragi to follow Natsume and find out what he's keeping from him. Natori gives Natsume a very menacing smile, almost as if he is planning something senile against him. Sadly, Natsume was none the wiser. Thankfully, Natori decides not to do anything harsh or harmful to Natsume and his cat. Before diving right into his next yukai adventure, a little insight is shown into Natsume's former life. The very first day Natsume got admitted into his high school, Kitamoto and Nishimura always had their eyes on him. That day, they completely ignored him, and went upstairs during the break to have their lunch together. There, Kitamoto and Nishimura argue over who has the better lunch, and wish their parents would be more generous towards them. Amidst their discussion, they find the transfer student staying alone and sitting on the grass outside. Nishimura gets a little puzzled by his act, but soon ignores him to finish his lunch. After school that day, Nishimura heads back to class to pick up his pencil box as he forgot it while going out earlier. On getting there, he finds the same transfer student sleeping alone in the classroom. Confused, he walks over to Natsume and tries to wake him up. He touches him and Natsume shouts at him. Rather than get offended or scared, Nishimura smiles and laughs at him. Natsume looks a little surprised, but he too smiles genuinely and thanks Nishimura for not thinking of him as weird. Seconds later, two seniors come by to check up on the classrooms and send them home. Nishimura gets home to meet his weird mother who asks him to keep it down as his brother is studying. Nishimura returns to school to spend time with Kitamoto before coming back home. However, He's told Kitamoto isn't around. He gets outside to the yard and finds Natsume asleep on the ground. Scared, he picks Natsume up and takes him back to his house. He calls out for someone but then is glad when he finds nobody at home. By that time, Natsume was already wide awake. He checks outside and compliments Nishimura's room. Nishimura, who couldn't understand a thing about Natsume, smiles and tells him to keep calm. Just then, Nishimura's elder brother shows up and tells him to quiet down so he doesn't disturb his study session. Natsume gets the memo and runs outside to get back home. After he's gone, Nishimura's elder brother chastises him for being weird and tells him not to disturb him again. The next day, Natsume skips school and this makes Nishimura afraid as well. He asks around the school and finds out about Natsume's dark past from Sasada. This makes him feel very sad for making fun of Natsume's weirdness earlier. In a few days, Natsume returns to school. One time, Nishimura catches him discussing his new cat with Tanima and ignores him. By lunchtime, Kitamoto asks him about his beef with Natsume, but Nishimura denies ever having any beef with him. After lunch, Nishimura gets his test scores and realizes just how badly he performed, so he decided to get to the library to get a study guide. On getting there, he finds Natsume reading a guide on how to make origami. This rubs Nishimura the wrong way, and he loses it. Natsume tried to calm him down, but then Nishimura asked him why he never for once asked for help from him or any other person. Before he could give his answer, Nishimura came back to his senses and ran into the woods to cool off. Sadly for him, however, he gets lost and becomes very scared of what might happen to him. A dark shroud was about to engulf him totally, but then again, Natsume and Madara came at the right time to dispel the yukai troubling him. Nishimura passes out but then comes to hear Natsume speaking fondly about him to Madara. He gets a little worried and wishes Natsume would talk to him more. Eventually, Nishimura is taken to the hospital where he's treated and nursed back to health. Natsume shows up at the hospital to check up on his new friend. Nishimura is refreshed to see Natsume check up on him. After Nishimura's release, he helps Natsume with his origami art. The two of them get to talk and gist about random things until Nishimura's brother comes by to help them with complex designs. Natsume compliments Nishimura's brother, but then Nishimura isn't happy, and he seems kind of jealous of his elder brother. The next day, Kitamoto finds Natsume alone in a dark room frowning at himself. He calls out to him and discovers the weird look in his eyes. Eventually, he gets back home on his own and finds his dad sleeping on the floor. Apparently, his dad got sick a few years back and has been bedridden intermittently. His sister, Mana, shows up moments later to check up on her dad. She gives him some snacks she brought for him and urges Kitamoto to take a bite when he can. Kitamoto gets a little embarrassed initially, but then again, he sucks it up and continues his thing. The next day in school, Kitamoto runs into Natsume and asks him about the previous day. Natsume tells him a white lie and assures him that he's perfectly fine. 
Natsume smiles at Kitamoto and instantly becomes friends with him. After that, Natsume and his two new buddies would go out and play with each other. They pretty much had lots of fun along the way. Some days later, Natsume and his friends are all seen walking home one evening as they all talk about life after graduation. While Nishimura was hell-bent on going to college and leaving that community, Kitamoto and Natsume weren't so sure. In the end, Kitamoto visits the counselor's office to hear his advice on his decision to join the civil service. The counselor advises him to get back home and think it over again. This time, Kitamoto returns to his classroom and puts his head on the table. When it was time for him to leave, he got up and heard Natsume shouting at something in a class. He rushes over to the class and finds Natsume struggling with nothing. He then asks him about it and Natsume tells him a lie. Kitamoto believes the lie and asks Natsume to go home with him. Surprisingly, they find the door locked. Kitamoto tries to force it open, but it's all to no avail. Natsume leaves the door and rushes back inside to find a teacher. Kitamoto follows him but soon gets lost in the entire school. He searches through the entire school, hoping to find Natsume but he doesn't find him. He finds a bell and takes it with him as he runs through school to find Natsume. Just as he's about to give up, Kitamoto opens the right door and finds Natsume Natsume wrapped around a red cloth with wind gushing around him. Natsume hears the bell from Kitamoto and tells him to ring it. Kitamoto ends up ringing it and banishing the yukai. Shortly afterwards, Kitamoto walks Natsume back home and ends up making him want to stay in the countryside. Soon, Nishimura joins them and they all get to have a wonderful evening before heading to their various houses. Fast forward to the present, Natsume wakes up late in the middle of the night after hearing a weird sound coming from the roof of his house. The voice, which turned out to be that of a large yukai, was calling Reiko to show herself, thinking she was still alive. Natsume goes outside the house to check out the annoying yukai. When he finds how large the yukai is, he uses himself as bait and lures the yukai away from his house. Natsume runs into the forest and manages to lose the yukai before returning to the house. After a few minutes, Madara returns home after getting himself drunk with his drinking buddies. Natsume narrates his experience with the weird yukai earlier and prepares himself to go back to sleep. Just as he's about to sleep, he and Madara both hear another sound coming from the roof of his house. This time, the voice resembled that of a peaceful, smaller yukai. Natsume asks the yukai to state its intentions before letting him in. To their surprise, however, the yukai tells Natsume that he's there to thank Reiko for helping him with a matter several years ago. Natsume and his cat get shocked as they never for once thought the troublesome Reiko actually helped anybody. Moments later, Natsume meets the yukai who introduces himself as Gomochi. Natsume asks him what his business is with Reiko, and Gomochi explains his predicament. Apparently, Gomochi used to live in the Nanafusa forest, which is miles away from Natsumi's place, but one day, a weird human girl wandered into the forest by chance and met the creatures, aka Gomochi and his friends living there. The first day she set her feet in the forest, Reiko could immediately tell how rich the forest was in yukai and other supernatural creatures. Even still, she didn't care about them and would often take naps on the grass there and return home when it became late. After repeating these actions for days on end, the yukai, who knew she could see them, decided to play pranks on her. One day, three yukai threw rocks at her, hoping she'd be scared of them, but Reiko retaliated by threatening to throw a huge rock at them. From this event, the yukai around started spreading rumors about Reiko's bravado, and while some admired her for not fearing yukai, others were pretty angry and found her intrusive to their privacy. One time like that, Reiko finds Gomochi and two other yukai complaining about her presence in the forest and decides to join them. As they complain to her, they hear a rumbling sound nearby and walk over to check it out. Upon getting there, they find a whole ass tree uprooted from its roots. Reiko gets a little concerned and asks the yukai what could cause such an accident. Gomochi tells her about their two forest masters, Senki and Hiyako, and mentions that they've been fighting for ages now over something they didn't know about. The smaller yukai didn't like the destruction they meted out in their wake, but then again, they're too scared to do something about it. Now that someone as strong as Reiko is around, they hope and wish she could do something about it. Reiko initially refuses to help them, but then again, Gomochi isn't about to let her go. He takes her to the cave where Hiyako and Senki are fighting and realizes they are both fighting over a beautiful lady yukai imprisoned in the same cave they were in. Apparently the two arrogant dummies wanted to prove their strength to the lady yukai so she could pick someone she liked amongst the two of them. While they fight, Reiko sneaks into the cave and talks to the lady yukai. The two masters find her there and confront her. Reiko stands her ground and calls them fools for fighting over a lady. She gives them a warning to back down while they still can. However, since the two air heads were more worried about their egos, they didn't back off. So Reiko challenges each of them to a one versus one with them. If she wins the fight, then they scram. However, if they win, then they can have the woman. It was already getting dark by this time, so Reiko ran back home to rest and continue another day. Gomochi pauses his story and makes a few comments with Madara to justify just how crazy Reiko was back then. Seconds later, he continues his story. On the second day, 
Reiko comes by as promised and faces Senki first. Reiko gathers the entire Yukai in the forest to spectate the fight between her and the almighty Senki, and then chooses a game they could both play fair and square. She points to the fruit on top of a dead tree and challenges Senki to compete with her to get the fruit. Whoever gets the fruit first wins the challenge. Senki seemed pretty fine with this, so... He got himself ready for the challenge. When it all began, Reiko took a stick and threw it at the fruit to pluck it from the tree. While Senki climbs the tree, Reiko uses her brain and gets the fruit first. Senki admits defeat and becomes more humble. Rather than rub it in his face, Reiko gives him the fruit and tells him to learn his valuable lesson from it. After beating Senki in her own game, Reiko goes after Hayako. She finds him by the riverside and calls him out to the challenge. Hayako gloats about his strength and boasts about beating Reiko if he can win the challenge he is about to give the both of them. Reiko asks him what the challenge will be, and Hayako tells her it'll be a battle against time. By dawn the next day, they're to gather as many chestnuts as they can around the forest and bring them to a certain tree. Whoever gets the most chestnuts wins the game. Reiko gets a little confused at first, but then again she had no choice but to accept the challenge. Some of the yukai who witnessed the discussion begin to badmouth Reiko. She shuts them up and urges them to help her win the challenge if they ever want to beat Hyako and get the forest back to normal. When all the yukai get quiet, Reiko cooks up a plan with the various yukai there and sends them into the forest to gather the chestnuts. In the meantime, she follows Gamochi further inside the forest to gather all the chestnuts she can. While at it, she overhears a few more yukai talking trash about her and her abilities. Instead of correcting them, Reiko lets them be and continues doing her thing. Gamochi snuck back to Lady Kaboon's prison and told her everything Reiko told him. That night, Reiko has a pretty mature discussion with Gamochi. That night, he realized how much Reiko wanted to win and decided to spend all night searching for chestnuts. A few hours before dawn, Reiko walked towards the tree and found only a small bunch of chestnuts waiting there for her. She admits defeat and sleeps under the tree for a few minutes. Minutes later, all the yukai in the entire forest bring their own batch of chestnuts for her. By dawn, Hayako comes with his own bag and realizes that Reiko has won the challenge. By the time Reiko wakes up, Kibune is freed and sent to go on her own way. She bids the yukai farewell, and returns to her own land. After hearing Gomochi's story, Natsume gets a little gloomy and reflects a little more on his grandma. Gomochi continues his story and tells Natsume that he was actually there to invite Reiko to his wedding with Kibuni as they fell in love while she was gone. Natsume and Madara go in Reiko's stead to witness two yukai get bound by the strings of love till the end of time. Several days later, Natsume branches to town to get some books before getting home from school. He stops by the train station and finds a weird envelope on the floor at the entrance. He picks it up and finds a red pill guy sitting carefreely on the bench near him. He calls the guy there and asks if he has anything to do with the letter. The guy gasps and thanks Natsume for finding the letter for him. After confirming that Natsume is a high school student, he asks Natsume to take him to his school so he can find the friend he wants to give the letter to. Natsume asks if he's sure the person is in his school, but then again the guy tells him he doesn't know yet but is going to find out when he gets there. Out of the kindness of his heart, Natsume boards a train with the guy and takes him to his school. On their way there, Natsume gets a little more curious and asks the guy what his relationship with his friend is. The guy tells him the childhood friend was a very stubborn person that he had to abandon at some point in his life. Natsume keeps quiet and keeps AoE, the red pill guy, under close watch. Eventually, they get to his school and Natsume begins searching for AoE's friend. He asks a few more questions and threatens to harm AoE if he tries anything funny on his classmates. Aoi laughs a little and then loses it as he thinks about his friend. Puzzled, Natsume asks him if the friend is a girl. Sadly, it was. At one point, he runs into Nishimura and tries to introduce Aoi to him, but to his surprise, Nishimura couldn't see him. Natsume gets a little concerned, and realizes that he's been talking to a yukai all this while. Upon realizing the sad truth, Natsume takes the yukai Aoi to the fountain to talk more about his friend. Aoi tells him the name of his friend Sonokawa Kaoru and imagines she must be a junior student or something. Natsume gets more confused and realizes he's never heard of such a name before. Aoi tells him not to worry too much as he can now see that Kaoru never really attended the same school as Natsume. Natsume could see the worried look on Aoi's face and decided to ask him about it. Aoi gets a little embarrassed and tells Natsumi not to worry too much about him. He thanks Natsumi for his help and turns his back to get away. Just then, Madara pops out of the bush behind them and asks for some jam fillings. Aoi gets a little shocked at the sight of such a creature, but when he notices that Natsume knows him, he calms down and formally introduces himself to Madara. Madara takes a liking to Aoi and invites him to come have tea in their place later on. Aoi bows his head and accepts the invite. Seconds later, some weird crow-looking yukai appear in front of Aoi to take him down. However, 
Madara transforms himself into his Kitsuna form and scares them away. This makes Aoi even more impressed by Madara. So, he decides to go home with Natsumi. That evening, Aoi sits with Natsumi and discusses a few things with him. From the looks of things, Aoi is a bird-like yukai that used to live in the forest with his flock around Mount Kakewa. One day, he hurt his wings and was unable to leave with his flock. Aoi condemned himself to a life of loneliness as he never thought he would amount to anything. Then one day, Kaoru met him on a tree and talked to him. Initially, she didn't realize that he was a yukai, but even when she knew about his true nature, she liked him the most. Aoi also got to know more things about her and the land of man. Aoi described Kaoru as a strange girl who was just like Reiko, but then again, he grew fond of her and abandoned her when he found out she was also in love with him. According to Aoi, he didn't think it was reasonable for a human with a short lifespan to fall in love with a yukai like him. So he broke things off with him and buried himself in training to forget about her. Madara checks the envelope from the train tracks and opens it without care. Upon close inspection, they found a wedding invitation letter and were flabbergasted. They ask Aoi again about Kaoru's real age, but then again, Aoi couldn't put his finger on it. From the looks of things, it sounded like Kaoru may be way older than Aoi thinks as she was getting married. Natsumi asks for Aoi's permission to read the letter. When he gets it, he reads it aloud and makes sure Aoi understands every bit of it. Kaoru was thanking him for helping find love at such a young age, but now that she's found someone she really cares about, she wanted him to come to her wedding and congratulate her before saying goodbye forever. By this time, Aoi embarrassingly chickens out on finding the love of his life. Natsume encourages him to search for her and see her before it gets too late. So the next day in school, Natsume asked Nishimura about Kaoru. Nishimura tells him about a certain Kaoru in his cram school, and mentions that she was a year older than him. When Natsume mentions that she may be getting married, Nishimura tells him it can't be possible. After school that day, Natsume tags along with Nishimura to find this Kaoru girl. On getting there, he finds Kaoru looking like a normal teenager, and not someone who's about to get married. Natsume thanks Nishimura for his help, and finds Kaoru reading a book. He approaches her and asks her about Aoi. Kaoru, upon hearing about Aoi, gets feisty and asks Natsume to tell him about his location. Natsume gets a little surprised, and asks her about the invitation letter she put in the mailbox back then. Kaoru smiles, and tells Natsume the letter is nothing but a trap to catch Kaoru, and force him to come see her. Now that's energy for you. Kaoru begins her own version of her story with Aoi. One day, while on her way to visit him, she finds him about to take off with his wings and calls him back. Initially, she thought they were toy wings, but then Aoi only told her to leave him alone. She makes him fight her and accidentally injures his wing. Realizing that they were his actual wings, Kaoru quickly apologizes for hurting Aoi. Aoi gets up and tells her not to worry too much about him, but little did he know that that wasn't going to help. Kaoru kept coming over to see him for many more years to come. Then, one day, Aoi harshly breaks up with her and disappears. Ever since then, she would return to the same spot on the tree and wait for Aoi to come to see her. When she got tired of waiting, she sent him a fake wedding invitation. Natsume gets back home and relays everything to Aoi. Aoi, on the other hand, tells Natsume he has to leave the house later that night. He asks for some company from Natsume and burns all the letters Kaoru sent him while he was training. Natsume can see the blue look on his face and realizes he's still madly in love with Kaoru. The next morning, Natsume takes Aoi to see somebody, but he keeps the person's identity a secret from him. A few crow yukai came by to attack him, but Madara and Natsume held them off and bought Aoi enough time to go see the love of his life. Aoi runs a little bit forward and finds Kaoru there. Kaoru hugged him as tight as she could and never let him go, despite him begging her to let him go. According to her, she loved Aoi too much to let him go. Aoi breaks down and eventually decides to give their forbidden love a chance. In the end, he thanks Natsume and gives him a box of jam filling, just like Madara wanted and takes his leave to go live with his girlfriend, Kaoru. Moments after leaving, Natsume gets up and wonders if he'll ever see someone who'll love him the way Kaoru Kaoru loves Aoi. Unable to find an answer to that at the moment, Natsume returns to his normal life. One day, Natsume and his friends leave their school for a study session by a mountainside. One time, Nishimura complains about the boredom he feels on this trip, and wishes the school could allow them to do some fireworks to brighten up the mood. This makes Tanuma, Kitamoto, and Natsume laugh at the poor boy, as they are all looking forward to the study trip. Every year, Natsumi's school usually hosts a three-day long study camp out with teachers and students. The school's atmosphere during this time of the year is usually fun and lively, as the students get a chance to mingle outside the school premises. This year, the school had chosen to host their study camp out on a small shrine called the Four Masks Shrine, opposite a riverside. That day, Natsume and his friends were cleaning the area around the shrine. They find the small building erected for the mountain deity, and talk a little about it. Nishimura explains the history behind the shrine and pushes his friends, Natsume and Tanuma, to take a look inside it. Natsume finds four weird masks inside the shrine 
and assumes they're probably just yukai. However, when he asks Tanuma and Nishimura, they testify to seeing just three masks there. This can only mean one of them is a yukai mask. Natsume keeps quiet about his discovery and continues listening to Nishimura's story. From what he could point out, the masks belong to three out of the four protectors of the mountain deity, and they were set in the shrine when the deity decided to go up the mountain to rest there. Natsume and his boys relax after hearing the story and finish cleaning up the area. Natsume realizes that things will probably be normal if he leaves the shrine the way it is. After cleaning, Natsume and his other colleagues return to their classrooms for a brief meeting with their teacher. The teacher, Namio Sensei, briefs them about the bathrooms that have been allocated to the boys and girls and causes a ruckus amongst them as there is a clear difference between them. Moments later, there's a heavy downpour, and Natsumi has fun with his colleagues before going to sleep. That night, the rain gets so heavy that it covers the river and overflows to land. Thankfully, the water levels go back to normal by the next morning, and class continues as usual. After gathering his students in their classrooms, Namio puts them out to self-study while he chills out in the night room. Natsume settles in with his friends, but then gets shocked when he finds Madara waiting for him outside. He excuses himself and rushes outside to see Madara standing under a large tree. He begs Madara to conceal himself so his friends don't laugh at him for bringing a cat with him to study camp. Madara, on the other hand, was more concerned about finding the sake spring than helping his student. He asks Natsume for some help finding such a spring, but then stops when he notices something weird nearby. Natsume also catches the weird sighting by the river and finds a boat floating by with a woman on it, whose head is suspended in the water below the boat. It was clear that she wasn't human, but then again, there was nothing they could do about things. At that point, Natsume's friends, Nishimura and Kitamoto, show up to check up on Natsume. Madara quickly transforms himself into a boar piglet, so Natsume's friends won't find out about his presence. Thankfully, his plan worked as Kitamoto, and Nishimura couldn't tell the difference. Later on, they return to their class and get punished for leaving morning study. Tanuma, however, realizes can see through Madara's disguise. He makes fun of Madara a little bit, but then stops before Nishimura and the others figure out the boar piglet is actually Madara. While Natsume's busy focusing on his classwork, Namio walks up close to him to get his worksheet. Natsume takes a look at his teacher's face and finds the yokai mask from the shrine on his face. He shouts at his teacher and alerts the entire class, but when he realizes they can't see the mask, Natsume keeps calm and analyzes the situation well before speaking. He calmly asks Namio if he's been feeling weird or sick lately, but Namio tells him he's never been better. On his next meeting with Madara outside the school, Natsume tells him about the mask, but then Madara tells him not to worry too much about the mask since it's not controlling him. He may just be tagging along and innocently searching for something. Natsume still looks worried, so Madara decides to go check things out with him. Natsume thanks him and takes him further into the teacher's quarters in the corridor. While they're there, they hear water sounds from the other end of the corridor and get a little worried about what's coming. In a matter of seconds, water flows down the corridor and comes towards Natsume like a river. Tanuma stops by to check up on Natsume and asks him what the matter is. Natsume tells him about the river flowing down the corridor. Since Tanuma couldn't see the river, he couldn't be affected by it. However, Madara warns Natsume to stay away from the river as his case is different and he could be swept away by the river. Tanuma gets the memo and pushes Natsume to keep moving. Natsume bumps into another student and finds the mask on his face. He keeps his cool and observes class normally. A few minutes after class, Natsume walks the corridor with Nishimura and finds the mask on his face. At this point, Natsume couldn't take it anymore. He holds Nishimura and forbids the mask from ever sticking to his friend's face. The mask quietly gets itself off Nishimura's face and apologizes to Natsume before disappearing. Natsume, on the other hand, runs after the mask, but later ends up losing it. So he joins Madara and rushes towards the shrine only to find a priest worshipping there. He asks the priest about the masks and the priest narrates the history of the masks to him. A long time ago, the mountain goddess lived down the mountains and was protected by four bodyguards. However, Along the line, she fell in love with a man and decided to be with him. Their love lasted for years until the man tragically lost his life. The female deity lost herself from the heartbreak and ran up the mountain with the hair ornament the man gave her to seclude herself from the outside world. The four followers decided to guard the mountain till their goddess came down again to resume her duty. However, time soon caught up to most of them and they also began losing their powers and disappearing. Thankfully, they also saw this coming. So, to prevent the goddess from getting heartbroken again, the four servants hid their masks in the four mask shrine and waited so the deity could see them and feel happy. Over the years, only three out of the four followers have disappeared. As for the last one, it's said that he's still roaming the forests hoping to find his goddess one day. Things start to connect and make sense to Natsumi. He returns to his classroom and finds his friends worried about him. After calming them down, Natsumi gets back to living his life normally until the next yukai appears. In the middle of the night, the yukai mask appears to Natsume and with tears in his eyes, 
tells Natsumi about the precious ornament his master lost while traveling up the mountains. Natsumi wakes up before dawn and takes Madara along with him to search for the missing ornament. For almost an hour, they search through the class and find the ornament sitting somewhere in the rubble. Natsumi finds the weird woman on the boat again, dipping her head inside the water. This time, he calls her attention and presents the ornament to her. The woman collects the ornament and transforms it into a bright light before disappearing into thin air. The fourth yokai mask, who oversaw the entire thing, bows his head in respect and also disappears. After they're both gone, Natsume returns to his classroom. There he finds Taki waiting for Madara and goes after him. Moments later, Natsume and his friends pack their stuff to get back to town, as their three-day camping trip has come to an end. Before leaving, however, Natsume asks Tanuma to tell him if he can still see three masks in the shrine. Despite there being four, Tanuma still tells him he can find three. Natsume smiles and joins his colleagues to journey back to their city lives. Sometime later, a yukai is seen walking slowly through the forest as he searches for the exorcist who came to exorcise him. Just when he thinks he's escaped, Natori and his yukai show up from behind and seal him inside his ceiling pot. After doing the deed, Natori instructs his yukai to check up on other parts of the forest. Just then, two small yukai pop up from the bushes beside Natori and beg him not to seal them like he did the larger yukai. Natori calms them down and tells them he has no intentions of doing such a thing. Before letting their yeah them go, however, he asks them if they know about the Book of Friends. Sadly, they didn't. Somewhere around the town, Natsume boards a train heading towards Natori's place. Apparently, Natori had called him for a job earlier, and since Natsume couldn't reject it, he decided to go along to meet him. Madara asks him why they have to do his odd jobs again, and Natsumi recalls the moment he had with his parents, when he was telling them about his visit to Natori's place. Tuko asks him about the living state of Natori, and Natsumi describes his luxury condo to him. Judging by the way Natori lives, Tuko could tell that he switched places a lot. Natsumi snaps back to reality and begins to ponder about the weird, tingling feeling he always gets when he's around Natori. It's almost as if Natori's hiding something. Eventually, Natsumi reaches Natori's side of the state after traveling for hours. Natori catches up to him as he treks towards his condo and tries to charm him and the girls near them into falling in love with him. Tired of his gimmicks, Natsumi pushes Natori away from them and gets him back to his condo. On getting there, they find someone called Aimea standing in front of it. Natori asks Aimea what he is doing there, and Aimea hurriedly tells him about the Hakazaki residence. Natori's face changes and he asks the guy if he's for real or not. Aimea tells him about the countless exorcists currently present in front of the great exorcist's house ready to rummage through the entire mansion for Hakazaki's research. At this point, Natsume gets a little confused and asks Aimea and Natori for some information about this Hakazaki guy. Natori describes Hakazaki as the most powerful exorcist in all of Japan Japan, who's always sealed himself in his mansion. Now that he's dead, dozens of yukai are flocking around his mansion to get their hands on some of his research so they can be stronger. Upon hearing this, Natsume gets interested in searching for the texts. Natori tries to prevent Natsume from entering the contest, but then again Natsume tells him he's in for the fun of it. So it's settled. Natsume heads out with Aimea and Natori to get to the mansion before it's too late. On getting there, the trio find dozens of exorcists gathered at the front of the house. Natsume asks about them and Aimea tells him a thing or two about them. He spots Hakozaki's granddaughter, Beniko, and walks up to her. After exchanging greetings, Beniko starts talking about her grandfather's study, hidden deep inside the mansion. She's been searching the entire mansion to find such a study, but unfortunately she couldn't get to it. Seeing as she'll be selling the mansion soon, she decided to have powerful exorcists come to the mansion and search for the texts. As for her, she didn't care much about magic texts, so the exorcists can run free as they like. Natori smiles at her comments and urges Natsume to help him out. Natsume agrees to help him and waits for the speech from Beniko. When the time comes for the search to begin, Beniko leaves the entrance and allows the exorcists inside. Natsume gets a little sentimental about Beniko's negligence to her father's art, but then again, that's not his fish to fry. Natori gives him a disguise to cover his face so the yukai and exorcists don't recognize him inside. He assigns Hiragi to keep watch over him, and splits up with him to start the search. After spending just a few minutes inside, Hiragi could already tell which yukai were useful to them and the ones that weren't. She relays the information to Natsume and wishes they have a good peaceful search through the mansion. While they talk, one of the yukai wobbles his way to Natsume and recognizes his scent to be Reiko's. Sadly, Natsume tells him he's not Reiko and he walks away. After he's gone, Hiragi asks Natsume if there's anything he's hiding from Natori and would like to tell her instead. Natsume gets a little flustered, and tells Hiragi not to bother too much about little details like that. He also mentions the reason why he didn't tell Natori about the Book of Friends is because he didn't want him to worry too much. Hiragi reasons with him but then tells him that Natori's pretty worried about the secret he's been keeping from him. Natsumi tries to explain himself further but then again, 
they hear something falling nearby and rush over to tend to it. Right outside the mansion, Natori gets a little worried about Natsumi's search inside the mansion. He's interrupted shortly by Nanasi who came by to ask him to work together. Judging by the nature of the Matoba clan, Natori politely refuses to help them with the stuff. Nanasi tries to convince him, but when he doesn't budge, she tells him about the Matoba's plan to buy the entire house and search for the contents later. Natori chuckles and mentions a few more sassy things about Nanase and the Matoba clan. Nanase pauses and asks about Natsume, but then Natori tells her he hasn't seen him in a while. Nanase thanks him for his audience and walks away. Meanwhile, Natsume finds a room with trashed furniture and complains about it. Beniko shows up by that time and tells him to just take whatever he can, and end the search as quickly as he can. Natsumi gets a little worried and asks her why she wants the mansion gone so much. Beniko cries and tells her about her annoying grandpa. She shows him a maple tree her grandpa planted when they were younger, and tells him about the time she started hating her grandpa. During that time, her grandpa would only talk about Yukai all day long and this made her feel left out. So when she got tired of his yapping, she decided to leave him alone in the mansion to continue doing his weird research. She angrily leaves Natsume and begs him to get rid of the study as quickly as he can. After she's gone, Natsume smiles and asks Hiragi if she ever heard anything about Hakazaki's familiars. Since she said she didn't know anything about such, Natsume decided to go search for them. He splits up with Hiragi and goes around to check for any diaries Hakazaki could have left hanging around. Natsume gets a little bit nostalgic about things, and remembers the time he searched for Reiko's things back in his house. On his way to another room, while in the corridor, an evil yukai grabs and pulls him into a dark room where he clumps his hands around Natsumi's neck and asks him about the Book of Friends. Natori shows up seconds later and tries to use his talisman on the yukai. However, Madara showed up that instant and sent the yukai packing. Moments after the yukai's gone, Natsume gets really worried as he knows Natori clearly heard his talk with the yukai about the Book of Friends. Although Natori tells Natsume not to worry too much about what he hears, Natsume still promises to tell him about it when they're done with the search. Natori goes along with Natsume's words and continues their search for the study room. While the others waste their time searching and stealing useless things, Natori and Natsume work together to find the study room in due time. During one of their travels through the corridors, Natsume asks Natori to tell him more about the study room. Natori tells him about the research notes that are rumored to be lurking beyond the doors of the study room. Natori chuckles a little bit and makes fun of Natsume's naivety. Suddenly, one of the exorcists shows up and asks him about his new familiar. Natori gets a little flustered and calls his new familiar, aka Natsume, Nutmeg. The exorcist, who doesn't seem to care about Natori's familiars, complains about the search being too tiresome for him. Despite having searched through the mansion for ages, he still found nothing. He gives up on his search and wishes Natori some good luck finding the study with his familiars. After the exorcist leaves, Natsume and Natori rub heads together to discuss the possible location of the maple study room and decide it must be in a room where Hakozaki could see the maple tree. So, they both split up and start checking the areas that have a view of the maple tree, hoping to find something that could help them there. However, their search lasts for hours on end, until they almost lose interest in their search. Just then, Natsume finds a weird box with a maple design on it and bends down to open it. Inside, he finds a photo of Hakozaki and his family there. Initially, they marvel at how sheepish the great Hakozaki looked in the photo, but when they take a closer look, they find two dragons in the background. They immediately decide on his familiars, and Natori gets an idea. Almost immediately, they both rush towards their next POI and nothing is there at the moment. Natsume wanders off, leaving Natori and his familiar alone to discuss. While he's away, Natori asks Hiragi for some advice on what to do about the secret Natsume is keeping from him. Hiragi tells him to keep calm and wait for Natsume to tell him the secret when they're done with the search. Natori gets a little sad and wishes he was stronger. At that point, Natsume is seen scolding Madara for touching something when two guys suddenly run across the room complaining about Nanase and the Matoba clan. Natsume hides out of sight and gets out once the exorcists are gone. Then he continues walking along the corridor until he touches the wall and feels a presence. Madara senses the same thing and stops to check it out. Just then, a door materializes in the wall, and Natsume sees a dragon inscribed on it. After staring at the door for a few seconds, Natsume notices something moving on the dragon's head. Natori and his familiar show up at that time, to witness the dragon Yukai show himself. He confronts Natsumi and asks him for the photo in his hand. When Natsumi brings it out, the dragon asks what he's there for, and Natsumi tells him about the writings he's there for. The dragon, however, gets mad and accuses Natsume of trying to trick him into giving him the text after ignoring his master all his life. This comes as a surprise to Natsume, and he asks the yukai to tell him if his master was that lonely in the mansion. The dragon scoffs and tells Natsume the kind of fun Hakozaki used to have with him and the other yukai. Despite all that, Hakozaki still longed for human contact and would rush outside the door 
Whenever it rang to check who was there, only to be disappointed his granddaughter wasn't there to see him. After hearing all the dragon had to say, Natsumi pats his head and urges him to grant them access to the study. The dragon sees the innocence in Natsumi's voice and apologizes, raising his voice at him. In the end, he tells Natsume the hard truth about his master. Apparently, Hakozika never wanted his research to see the light of day. Days before his death, he ordered his familiars to seal his knowledge in the study and restrict anybody from getting it. Natsume decides to respect the dragon's wishes and pushes Natori to continue their search. Before they go far, however, the dragon calls them back and tells Natsume about the things he's seen before. He mentioned seeing someone like Natsume in the past. Before he could touch the matter further, they heard a rumbling sound from the distance. The dragon immediately realizes that the Matoba clan must be trying to force their way inside the other entrance. So he sets the entire place on fire and retracts himself back into the door. Natsume and Natori both rush outside to join the other exorcists who are busy looking at the weird blue flames coming out of the house. Natori asks Nanas what the matter is and she tells him the yukai familiars are currently burning everything in the study room and taking it with them. Shortly afterwards, Aimea shows up and gives up on the search altogether. Nanasi and many of the other yukai also leave the mansion for Natori and Natsume. After they're all gone, Natsume shows up with little pieces of paper and shows them to Natori. They somehow resemble pieces Hakozika wrote. Natori sees this, and quickly rushes around to get the remaining pieces he can find. After gathering all the pieces they could find, Natsume tells Natori about the Book of Friends. Rather than scold him for not telling him sooner, Natori reasons with him, and apologizes for having to endure so much in his short lifespan. Natsume recalls all the wonderful memories he's had with the Book of Friends and realizes he's actually lucky. By that time, their search for the entire piece had already ended. Natsume says his goodbyes and heads back home late at night with his cat. On the way, he recalls the words the dragon told him about meeting someone similar to him, and wonders if he ever had a grandfather. Madara cuts him short, and runs back home with his student to eat some of the delicious shrimp tempura Tuko just made. Eventually, they get home on time and enjoy themselves like a normal family should. 